I wonder what, what VTuber avatar you set up for yourself. I uh, should have done that, but no. I wonder what, what VTuber avatar you set up for yourself. I uh, should have done that, but no. I think it probably seems, William probably seems fine. Maybe, we'll see. <clears throat> yep. Now people will complain if, if you're too loud and people will yeah. say that I'm not loud enough. I uh, should probably do like a tweet and stuff. I don't think it's worth for me to tweet because <laughs> like all of my followers are just some of your followers. Followers. Ah, <laughs> uh, but but it's gonna be. A, it's not really about the followers or anything. I think it's just good to have someone who is in me because I tend to forget stuff to comment on and I can't focus on the stream and. Uh, Chat at the same oh, time. No, no, I will. I will comment and everything, okay, maybe, good. or reply to people. I'll try. We'll see. Yeah. Am I logged in? I'm logged in. Okay. On Twitch and Twitter. Uh, I'm gonna just make the tweet now. I don't see the chat. <laughs> I can see the stream, but I cannot see the chat. I don't know what that's about. Uh, can, do you maybe you have to open it? Oh wait, yeah, it collapsed. That's. Oh, huh. Okay. Fair enough. I... <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, uh, I'm just gonna go... With... There it is. I'll just, like, fucking QRT and go, like, starting now. I like how we had 17 viewers and then it dropped to zero and now it's back to 22. They, they as as soon as you open chat, everyone escaped. <laughs> Should I like send it somewhere on Discord, maybe? Yeah, yeah. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna post it on Twitter first. Uh, just like that. That link's fine. TPS. Yeah, there we go. And there we go. I think I think that's all we need is a uh, Twitter and then um this ultra quality discord yeah yeah i'll go ahead and fucking retweet it on my own account as well just just in case there's a couple weirdos who don't follow the game game's twitter account for some reason yeah they're in only for the music mm -hmm. i mean they're probably probably they would actually just be like uh not following uh, the game's account because of spoilers and stuff. Oh, I'll post it on New Blood, maybe. Or should I? Sure, mm. go for go for it. Oh yeah, someone did, but I'll do it again. Sure. I'll assert my dominance. <laughs> oh, why why is there no the Discord thing? Is it enabled on OBS? I, I can't see it. Uh. Let me check. There we go. Yeah, it was for some reason it was hidden. Okay. Should be popping up in the stream. Yeah, yeah. It's there. Okay. <sighs> oh. oh boy. Time to crack open a bear. Oh yeah, I, I... Hold on, let me grab something as well. <laughs> One sec.
Okay, I'm back. Okay. I have three bears, a sprite, and two monsters. We'll see how things go. <laughs> Just take cutting and over. Yeah, just mix everything and we'll see. Yeah. The, actually, um, we're streaming at 60 FPS, so I should put in the target frame rate at 60. Uh, downscaling, no. Dithering, no. Extra warping, no. Yeah. Uh, yeah dithering, I think it kills frame rates often. Yeah, that's why I have it off. Otherwise, I would have it on. And dithering and downscaling are the two things that tend to fucking murder um, bitrate. Stream at 18 FPS, lol. You got a message on chat. I think you should comply. Oh, that's that's fucking hilarious, dude. You you just said the thing I said, but you made it a low number. That's like that's like comedy genius, actually. Oh, someone said 10 FPS. You got a new oh, suggestion? Oh, okay, okay, you just okay, old guy. You just completely you're you're worn out. You're completely washed up. You're fucking nothing. This new dude. This new dude is the fucking new new frontiers of comedy. Uh, Alright, look at that. <laughs> I like <laughs> I like going with a fucking experimental build. This is fucking fucked up right now. But whatever. Oh. I have to fix that. I I hate you into UGUI. It's yeah, oh. especially especially having to do like different aspect ratios and stuff. Because just doing like sixteen by nine would be easy, but you have to do like four by three and then fucking thirty two yeah. by zero point one and fucking. I yeah, and even that aside, like the, the making anything is pain in the ass with the system. Yeah, it's so bloaty and heavy. Put it up to like fifty, and I think fifty is nicer. I think we're good to start. Um, yeah, we're at eight o'clock on the dot. We might as well. I have one hundred sixty viewers. Oh my god! So hey everyone, um, I'm. Hakita or Hakita or however you want to fucking pronounce it. Um, I'm the main developer of Ultra Kill. I do most of the things. And with me, I have Peter. Hi. Uh, he does a lot of the programming, like advanced and uh, more difficult programming that I do to uh, a much of a fucking unskilled loser to be able to do myself. But he helps out with things, and he he basically did all of the sandbox mode, including the map. So you can thank him for all of that, and he did the cyber grind arena systems and all that. And we also have Hi. a bunch of other <laughs> we also have a bunch of other people who work on the game. But uh, I think it's better to just have like two people in a stream instead of fucking six or whatever. Because we're just turning the noise, so we'll just fucking get started on a new save. Because I figured that would be the best. Oh yeah, and Peter also did the save system, so you can thank him for that. All the save slots I, and stuff. Yeah, <laughs> that's... <laughs> ah, good old boot up system. 2112, it's a rush reference, and then my birthday. Uh, but this whole like thing was just straight up fucking... Ripped off from Nier Automata because I like the whole. They have a, like a boot up, boot up system in mean, like that game after the um, prologue thing. I thought that was like the fucking coolest, coolest shit. So I wanted to fucking copy it just wholesale. And just also, also just in general, I wanted to do the audio thing first because like every everyone at this point knows how much of a fucking pain it is to have a game started like 100% volume and you can't turn it down until like way after like 15 minutes of cutscenes or something and PSX used to be the default but now I consider PC to be the default that's how I always play but I I think PSX is still fun it's a nice like different different look and for difficulties, we still haven't done Brutal and Ultra Kill Must Die. Because uh, Brutal's probably gonna either come out alongside Act 2 or a bit after Act 2, and then Ultra Kill Must Die will be after or sometime around like full release, probably. Just so I can make sure I can use all the like tools and enemies to their full potential. 
but I think um, probably I'm, yeah I'm, I've been thinking of maybe doing like a extra like modifier thing like a checkbox or something that would because I because I've been thinking about making difficulty mode uh, like I've been thinking about if I want to do hard modes uh, in a way where they like change enemy positions but then I think thought about maybe I just want to have that be like an extra modifier so you can still play like normal mode with like hard mode enemy placements and stuff so I haven't decided which way I want to go with that yet we'll see I'm just gonna play on standard because violent would make me have to actually focus on playing the video game wow Hakita bad at ultra kill yeah no way I'm terrible at ultra kill also we're playing on a we're playing on an experimental build so if you see bugs that's because yeah, there are some and because this, <laughs> this is like uh, I just finished doing stuff yesterday so this includes that and, uh, that and stuff like that Ooh, question mm, just bought the game two days ago and I am obsessed any plans for modes like cyber grind I think it's an interesting one mm. yeah the yeah the whole like mankind is dead bodies feel hell is full text uh, originally like back when I was still planning it was actually four four points because I was just thinking that would be like a nice symmetry but three points is way better because four would be overkill. But I think it was Mankind is Dead, um, Machine Rules King, and Bloody Fuel and Hell is Full. So that would be like an extra point of context, but then I realized it was probably unnecessary, so I decided to just keep it out. And the whole like the whole part where um, the screen fades out and like the Mankind is Dead and all that the text that, that's like red and that stays like red. That was originally completely an accident. Cause that's like the the color because the color is like in code it's just like changing the color of the text to make it more transparent but because that bit was overwritten to be red that made it stay on the screen like not and not go transparent so i was like oh that's such a fucking cool effect i have to keep that i did keep out and this is just like um, I think it's, these are both the same texture, but this is just like has a light on it, and uh, then I just put in the paint and put in red text to keep out. Because the idea is that this is sort of uh, um, humans built these um, facilities to, for like as a passageway into hell, which is like at the center of the earth. And the idea is like they they decide, they realized it was a really fucking bad idea, and they just blocked it off with like. I lock the doors and like put in like boards, uh, wooden boards and stuff and things like that. And uh, these these are the pipes. There's a bunch of these pipes that I just they made like default pipes, and they're just gonna be looped over and over in the prelude to add a bit of sort of um, visual interest. Since otherwise prelude is pretty simple. It's all like box corridors. These are just like four flat walls and stuff. And there's some Z fighting you can see, wonderful. Yeah. Um, oh yeah, this this little red room used to not be here. Uh, it would it used to go just directly to this point. But what would happen, especially when I was streamers and stuff, is they would they would um, do the like sliding thing, and then they would go here and they would get the dash tutorial, but they wouldn't notice that the tutorial message actually changed. So I had to add this like little uh, in between spot to make it clear that like uh, that this is a different thing because otherwise they would go like oh my god what what why can't I slide to get to thing uh. and there used to be a statue here but everyone thought it was important so I had to remove it because I just wanted it to be like a light down there so it was really dark but then I was just like fuck it it'll we can let it be dark and this is like a just like a little thing where. Uh, these actually match up these little like uh, parts because this is supposed to be like fallen off. Uh, it's supposed to be a walkway that's fallen off, so these should actually, I think, match up with the broken parts up here. Oh yeah, since at, uh, in some update we changed the wall jump height, so it's pretty easy to just wall jump up here. You didn't used to be able to, but you can do that now. But it's fine. I think most people just do the dash anyway. They understand it. It's not like back when. I think it was, I think it was Vini, like Vine Sauce, who played the fucking, uh, who did the whole stream of the prelude with, without realizing you can dash. Oh yeah. And uh, here's the good old tutorial. 
this is the, and yeah and some people are like oh my god it's not the only way to regain health it's like well yeah but i have to emphasize the fact that this is how you're supposed to get health back because otherwise people are like oh well i, I don't want to do that because that's risky and then they don't realize that they have no fucking health the entire game oh yeah and these cerberuses are the or Cerberi, they're from, a, they're from a previous game I did with my friend Tony Stiegel. Uh, we were working on a game, stealth game, like MGS1 style stealth game to go to Untraceable, and these models are just straight up reused from that, because that game ended up getting cancelled, because it wasn't very good. And for, for this tutorial bit with the wooden boards, I actually had to make a had to make a separate like um, thing in the ground slam code so that it actually checks below you for um, breakables instead of just like breaking them on contact because otherwise you would like you would um, hit the bl bl hit the planks and then it would stop and then they would break. And it, it also has like a, it actually has a splash damage, like the ground slam has a splash damage that's only available for like a breakables, like wooden planks and stuff. So that uh, you have a big like boom instead of just like suddenly slipping through a crack in one of them. It's more satisfying this way. And solar orbs used to be red, but now they're blue because red is... Because they, Dave, it's actually Dave Dave's decision to turn them. Um, cause they was like, hey, they're red, that that means I'm supposed to have health. Like, I'm supposed to get health from them, I'm like, I don't want to give health from every secret, so I'll just make some secrets just stay red, and they're the ones that gives you health, and then the other ones are just blue. And this whole falling thing is just like... I remember where I got the idea, but I just like, I always like it when uh, games sort of uh, hide the... Uh, Hide the loading screen and make it like seamless in a way that like uh, I think is more cool and immersive and stuff. Even though this game isn't very immersive in the first place, but I think that a little bit always helps. Are there any questions in the chat so far? Uh, I caught one. I what I'm doing is I'm responding to the ones that are like for me or general uh, yeah. in the chat and. The ones specifically for you, I, I'm just posting them on general, so yep. that I, you know, have them stashed. Uh, hey, Hakita, as a composer myself, I wonder what your inspirations for Ultra Kill's music are. It depends, on the, it depends on the track, but you can, um, you, if you buy the soundtrack on Bandcamp, which is, should I, I'll go link that real quick, because I have it on the mm. ready. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, well, I would say I have it on the ready. I can do it. Yeah, okay. Seven piercer .bandcamp uh, If you if you buy the soundtrack on Bandcamp, you get um, a PDF or whatever file format I ended up going with that uh, has like text commentary for every track. Uh, and that includes like me talking about the inspirations and stuff. Cause uh, like in the prelude, it was just like I was just like, oh, I'll do I'll do metal. It started off just like, oh, I'll do metal, because of course it's like a violent FPS, it needs metal, which is, at this point, is such a fucking cliche. But, you know, at, at the, when I started, it wasn't really that much of a... Everyone wasn't doing it yet. And I was just like doing metal, and I was like, oh, well, I don't want to play drums, because I'm really bad at playing drums, so I'll do... I'll do... Um, I'll have to do electronic drums or something, and then... I was like, well, if if they if if I do electronic drums, they might as well not just sound like normal drums. And then I realized, then I decided to do Amen uh, like Amen breaks, Amen breaks. How you're supposed to say it? And I had actually experimented that with that on a the he Heaven Piercer album, Flower Works, uh, oh. which had um, the second track, the light, that, the light that shines above all, that actually has Amen breaks in the second half already. So I was sort of already gotten used to the idea of using them so i i thought that that would be that would be a fun fun like dif differentiation thing and especially since that always like makes me th like aim and breaks and stuff like that always makes me think of like uh, late 90s early 2000s music so i thought that was a good fit and simis asks why is it called heaven piercer um because uh, it's a Guren Lagan um, quote, which is your drill is the drill that will pierce the heavens themselves. And then I changed that to just Heaven Piercer. 
and then I was like, that's not cool enough, and then I was Heaven Pierce her, just, it's, it's, a, it's a stupid pun, basically. <laughs> but it's every, everything always comes back to references to things I like. And here's the epic intro hallway. Oh yeah, we raised this pipe finally, so you don't have to slide under it anymore. And then we have like a... And the, this like... I forget what the um, sounds for the like credits are, when the credit names appear and stuff are. But I think it's like just a slow down something. But then like this, this sound that's like fading in as you, as you get closer to the revolver. That's actually like a little little sample I took from Mars, the bringer of war, that it's just like looping into itself and <clears throat> and like that into just like a, con a consistent single drone. Because that's that's also the classical piece that I sampled into this whole splash thing. And you have a little bit of silence here because I think that that's the impact is to just have it be like suddenly cut out and then come in like that. So this oh, like there's like a little classical sample there and that's from Mars the Bringer of War. Because early on while I was thinking like uh, while I was thinking about like the tone and the music and stuff I was the game was actually originally going to be like way darker like before I came up with the idea of like blood robots and stuff. Oh yeah, look at this door, it comes through here, <laughs> through the ceiling. But originally the game was supposed to be darker, because I was thinking like the idea would be like you would be like a dude on like a space station or something who's going uh, crazy so you wouldn't know what would be real and like all the like geometry would stop making sense eventually and it would loop into itself and go all upsy-turvy and stuff. So the, so the first music I did for the game was the Cerberus track, which is... Um, Oh, so the intro splash thing. And it's basically just like, it's supposed to be kind of uh, si very similar to what Dragon, the first Dragon Guard game did, where it's like supposed to be very dissonant and it's supposed to be very repetitive and supposed to like sort of make you feel like you're going insane alongside the player character. But then sort of as I kept making the game, it sort of kept evolving into different ideas. And I'm glad I didn't end up going with the original plan because it would be <laughs> it would be such a fucking tonal mess to have like this really dark and weird story but then also have like this super over the top action with like fucking uh, ra like style ranks and stuff because <laughs> that was always a part of the plan yeah oh yeah and here's the if you have a knuckle blaster or uh, uh, or some explosive or uh, something you can actually break through this and you can skip getting the revolver because that was something people were asking for uh, is to have like a full weaponless be able to do a full weaponless run of the game so i added this like a little thing so you can skip every weapon in the game and this little hallway basically just mirrored but i think it's really cool and i like it yeah i can do the i can do the uh, this is the uh, like recently, I think I think that's actually the latest update. We removed most clips of the game, be like being able to clip through the ground and stuff, because it started becoming an issue with ultra boosts and stuff. So we removed most of them, but I asked the speedrunners to like list a bunch of uh, like uh, out of bounds clips that uh, that they like thought were were the most important ones, and then I would like manually keep them in the game. So there's actually a hole here. You can kind of shoot shoot through it. You can see, so you can just if you slide it properly, you can just clip through it, and it shows a little pipe clip leaves message. Yeah, I'll go back to here now. So this used to be uh, in the very early versions of the demo. This used to be instead of just instead of a glass floor, it used to be a glass wall that you that you would shoot and walk through but then um people didn't realize that this room had a glass floor so i i decided maybe maybe it would help them realize that it's supposed to be like a that it, it maybe maybe it'll help them realize that this is glass as well if i make that a floor as well so they won't just think of glass walls and they'll think of glass floors as well as a possibility and this didn't used to be in the early version of the level because the first level has been like remade a fucking billion times you can go on my youtube channel there i have a playlist of like development videos and 
they're like early early versions didn't have this, but it would just go like from this like little glass tutorial would go st directly to the big room that has the fan and the uh, glass bridge, and I was like, well, that's that's a bit too much of an escalation all of a sudden. So I decided to just have a much simpler scenario first with glass floors, so that it's easier to understand and doesn't like suddenly jump at you. Uh, there you go. Uh, maybe this. Uh, oh yeah, the gore was like one of the first things I did, like little eyeballs and brain chunks and stuff. That was like I think that's like three days, two days after development, I started adding gore and stuff. Because the whole thing with the ultra kill was trying to make a game that would be as exciting as and as fun as possible. And for me, something that's always really fun is just like really dumb over the top gore. So I wanted to add that in as soon as possible to also. Have it have the sort of game feel start to get feel good as soon as possible as well. Oh yeah, and the blood, um, blood is straight up. It's just a flat plane with a sprite on it, so you can see it doesn't actually wrap around things. It just like splotches on a thing, and then it's just like a flat plane. But that's like super um, cheap on performance, so that's why there's so why we can have so much blood in the game. And the scream that enemies do when they fall, that's uh, that was just a stock sound effect that I put in as like a test thing. But <laughs> it was really like, it's actually really charming. I really, I, I sort of fell in love with how goofy it is. So I was just like, oh fuck it, I'm just gonna keep that as like the, as the death scream sound, even though it's just a placeholder originally. And there's, there's like a little, there's actually a little invisible ramp here to make, get you on top of the pipes. Because originally you didn't have climb stepping, so you need a little ramp. Or you would get stuck on that. Yeah, this whole like room is just like... All these textures and stuff I really like. Even though this is one of like the first early, earlier rooms, it's just like I really like how... How sort of... Uh, busy all the walls and stuff here because there's all these kinds of weird patterns like you can see this sort of stitch pattern going up the wall here but then it's not repeated on any other wall so all, all of them have like a different pattern to them i always really like that it sort of makes it feel like a really really, really mishap like a bust busted ass industrial complex system and there's like a it's pretty it's not very easy to see but there's like a little Sort of there's constant dust rising up in the air because of the fan. I always sort of it it adds a bit of depth to the scenes as you can see some extra motion and stuff. And this room was a fucking massive pain in the ass to make, which is why you almost never see curved anything in Ultra Kill. It's always just like dear. It's it's usually just um, orthogonal. Every every room is like orthogonal and square and stuff, but. This was like, because you can see like this, li this is a little piece here, and this is a little piece here, and this is a little piece here, and the whole like thing I had to, the texture I had to rotate manually for every piece so that it would sort of line up. Because like, other otherwise it would just like be really obvious that it's just like, uh, not looping properly and stuff, so it's just a huge time waste and a pain in the ass, which is why it's, there's very rarely anything curved in Ultra Kill. Like this as well, you can see these don't exactly line up like the little rings that go around the um, cylinder and then the cylinder itself. It's sort of, you can see it's sort of a bit flatter than the ring at some points, a bit thicker than the ring because it's just like, it's just uh, paid in the ass to have everything, like all the stuff. And then there's a little fan here and actually I'll enable cheats real quick. Because a little, little detail that I always liked that doesn't really get noticed is there's actually like a little gap in the cylinder here, so it actually makes sense so that the fan isn't just clipping through the wall. These sort of little details, I, I don't think anyone actually notices them, but I always find them sort of fun to make when I think of doing them. Or when I can think of doing them, rather. Oh yeah, fun thing about this little secret cove is that it doesn't actually exist currently. It's sort of because uh, just think about this little co, like a little cavern cove or whatever you want to call it. Is that it's actually a part of the next room instead of this room, 
because you can see it's like this thing. Uh, it's like protruding into this room, so it's actually a part of this, uh, like the next room. So instead, what it, what it does is like when you get close enough, like you can see through it here. But if you get close enough, it'll spawn in because it spawns the next room in. So it's sort of it's trying. Because because the thing what Ultra Kill does is it's just you don't you only ever really have two rooms active at the same time, which is. When I open a door, it activates this room, and it deactivates that room over there, so that you're always sort of just having like a few rooms uh, uh, active at the same time, which is which helps performance, and especially because the game doesn't actually have any baked lights, these are all dynamic, because you can't do baked uh, vertex lights, and vertex lights are like way more accurate to like the PS1 look. Which means we can't really have like big open areas with tons and tons of lights because that would really tank performance, which I think is unfortunate for like custom levels and stuff. But hopefully we can find some way around it, or people will just have to uh, find <laughs> find their own way around it. Or maybe the game's gonna become the next crisis or something. But here it's like uh, the these guys just like super simple projectile enemies. Because like the whole idea with all the like early enemies, both the filth and the strays, was just like to have the simplest, really predictable enemies that you can style on, and just like just to get you used to the idea of always being on the move. Since more, a lot of people just don't play retro FPSs, so the whole the whole thing with the filth is they're completely harmless as long as you just keep moving, and the stray as well, because their projectiles are really slow and they don't predict or anything. So it's like. As long as you keep moving, you're safe from them, really. And they don't move around to make them easy to shoot and easy to parry, and they like have a long wind up, winds up, wind up so to sort of make sure that sort of it's always easy to keep track of them and stuff like that. Did I say stalker? Because <laughs> they actually they used to be called stalkers for a short period of time. As Trace used to be called Stalkers, but then we actually made the Stalker design. I was like, oh shit, this is actually this is way way better fit for. Oh my god, look at this! Yeah, one of one of these is in tagless environment. Was this garbage? Um, yeah, they they used because then we made the Stalker designs. So like, well, that this this enemy has to be called a Stalker because it even has a gas mask and everything. So then we switched the. The, this guy's name is the Strays instead of Stalkers. I have fun thing about the jibbing. Um, at the lower, like the pelvis, is the only part of enemies that you can never jib. Because of, I forget why, but it's it's re there's reasons for it. But you can just like shoot, shoot pieces of the enemies otherwise. And some people have been like, why can't I heal by shooting the corpses? And you used to be able to, like in very early versions of the game, but that would. That became a. That would sort of encourage the wrong kind of playstyle, where instead of moving forward and getting heal, heal, heals by attacking enemies, you would just. After cleaning a room, you would just punch the corpses a bunch to get your health back, which is like. Antithetical to the whole forward momentum feel of the game. This room I like as well with all these little details and stuff. Because the, all these rooms used to be, be way simpler, but then when we did uh, Prelude 1.05, um, that was that was the first version. After I got picked up by New Blood, um, they they wanted me to go back through the Prelude levels and sort of add a bit more pizzazz um, to them to make them pop a bit more and like be a bit uh, closer to the level of quality that the later levels are. So. That's why all these levels got like, there's a lot of small neat details, because I just went through the entire levels and just added all these little little bumps and stuff into the, into the areas. But at least important to me is something I did is these actually, all these decorations, like these little protrusions and stuff, they don't actually have any collision. Which is on purpose, because I wanted it to be so that you're not like bumping into things accidentally the whole time. Because a lot of games have that issue where you have very high sort of fidelity and then the levels actually become a kind of a pain in the ass to navigate because you're always getting stuck in the little pieces of terrain and stuff so the collision is much simpler but the de details are like visual only make sure the navigation always stays very simple and consistent and this little room 
I always like this little room, uh, the little blood, um, I don't know, I guess pipes, by a blood pipeline. Because the sort of idea that we end, that I ended up sort of going with Prelude is that Prelude is supposed to sort of be a mining facility for hell, like that people, that humans built. Uh, but then, you know, obviously hell was not a very good place, so they abandoned it and it sort of ended up becoming a sort of... Uh, sort of like it hell hellified in a way where it's sort of like it be became overrun and instead instead of mining for rocks and stuff and turning minerals into energy instead of instead it's just like blood and gore like all the machines are being used to, for blood and gore stuff and this is sort of obviously they should be like after a break the glass they should technically they should like start pouring out and stuff but who fucking cares <laughs> And this is, uh, I like the, all the all this little glass. I, I even though like even though that like technically doesn't make any sense that you know they're not pouring out, and it's someone could just easily say like you know just don't make the glass just don't make the glass breakable. But I want it to be breakable because we have the parrying tutorial here, and it's like really satisfying when you parry for the first time and then all the like in all the glass breaks and the environment starts falling apart and stuff. <coughs> oh yeah, and. Uh, uh, these like new updated designs because originally um, Strays and Filth had different designs um, that were made by Tony Stigel, the guy who um, I was making un untraceable with. And basically to him, uh, to Tony I was just like, you know, just make like a zombie dude and I was like okay and then he made a zombie dude. But then eventually Aldrich started getting like big enough that we got like actual concept artists. So like just having zombie dude was boring, so that's why we um, decided to... And also just because the models were considerably lower quality, because Tony is just like a hobbyist, he's not like a professional or anything. So we wanted to just update those to make sure that they're up to uh, up to snuff with the later enemies and stuff. So I just uh, we just got um, Sam uh, to do like the new models for the strays that was based on the soldiers, and then we had... Jericho, I think, did... Yeah, Jericho did the design for the filth, and um, Imp did the design for the new schisms, which are just like... In, and in general, because the old, the old models for the... The old models for the stray and the schisms were actually just like edited versions of the original filth model, which is just like zombie or whatever, because... Um, I... Because, like, Tony was obviously... I couldn't pay him for his work or anything, he was just like working sometimes, so I was just like I needed a new enemy model, so instead of asking Tony to make one when he's busy, I just I would just like take the original uh, filth model and I would just like fuck around with it a bit to just like extrude some bits and like squeeze some bits and then it's like, yeah, it's a different model, good enough <laughs> and a funny thing about the filth especially is that Sort of uh, people in the early versions of the prelude are, the, are these guys. Oh, they fell down. Actually, I'll get you down there as well. So a funny, a funny thing about uh, the fail is that in the like the original prelude versions, people were complaining about the AI being really dumb, as you can see here. They are. But actually, uh, but the funny, th funny thing is uh, something. Uh, but because people stopped complaining about the AI being like the filth AI being really dumb after we changed the design, because that's actually like that's a part of character design you don't actually really think about. Actually, I or at least I didn't. Which is that the design of an enemy is like is like um, yeah, they're like they're like how players interpret how smart an enemy should be also is depends largely on what they look like so like after we changed these designs to be like just like piranhas with no eyes and no eyes and facial feature and stuff suddenly people stopped complaining about the filth being too dumb because they look like they should be that dumb so it's sort of like we fixed the ai by fixing the model <clears throat> Is there have there been any, any good questions since then? I haven't spotted any good ones. Oh. All garbage. So, uh, there's one from there's one from before. There's one from before okay. a while ago. Um, maybe it's a better question for later. But when and how did you all decide to pick up Gianni for Gabriel? 
Yeah, we can we can talk about that when we get to. Yeah, so get keep to. it in your memory. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll fucking talk about Gianni all day every day. <laughs> yeah, I think these yeah these these little protrusions also don't have collisions, and these little things also don't. Just just to make sure you're always like moving smooth and not getting stuck on little things. And way way in the early like builds, they actually used to be a secret over here, but we moved it to like over here. I don't remember why, but you used to have to like jump all the way up here. And the, like back when this was a diff completely different design, and um, this room it was less, instead of being like a circular room, because now it's now it's a circular room like the early like the fan room. It's basically just copied and then edited from that. This used to be like a square room, but it's sort of it was really slow in terms of pacing and it this was sort of really awkward. So we changed it to like this much faster paced version of the same. Um, a general idea of having uh, projectile enemies at a distance that you can either snipe or you can move to to kill, kill them from close range. <coughs> yeah, they also used to be up there, there used to be a secret, there was a little crevice there, but I ended up moving it over here instead, because I think this is more fun. Because this is technically under the previous room as well, so this is another one of those situations where it's sort of your... Um, having 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 to fuck around with stuff to make sure that like both rooms are active at the same time <clears throat> and then here's the like little serious sam style trap where you get a you get a secret and then a fuck ton of enemies appear and now now you can so i don't forget is that uh, a little a little detail that people don't usually notice is that they actually do they Oh yeah, no, actually that's broken now. <laughs> no wonder no one notices it, but I think that was changed, that broke at some point. But they actually feel, um, they have a texture for a closed mouth, because they actually do close their mouth when they jump at you, like they bite at you. And I guess that blo broke at some point and no one notices it, so... Can, Peter, can you add that on Trello? Uh, one second. Uh, like the feel of mouth closed thing not working. Okay. How many hours have you registered on Steam, Hakira? Ah, fucking... 60? I don't know. I don't play Ultra Kill on Steam. Why would I play Ultra Kill on Steam? I can answer that one for myself. I have 1,881 hours. Well, that's because you do, you do the... I don't have the stuff. integration disabled, so it hooks yeah. onto Unity and just keeps counting. Oh. <laughs> Interesting. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah, you mean... Okay, yeah. Yeah, because yeah, I, I always I made the switch because of you, because you wanted it, and I mean that's fair. That's probably yeah, because because I don't want to accidentally spoil future levels. So yeah, this this hallway also used to not exist in early versions, um, but I added it in because it was really awkward to go for directly from like enemies to a boss, uh, and just like have a checkpoint go directly to the boss. And also, a lot of people don't notice it, but every boss room has a like a different um, boss door texture so that you can always see when you're about to enter a boss arena. Um, that was sort of... This whole texture is um, inspired by um, Castlevania Curse of Darkness which has like really cool boss doors that's like a red flowing like weird liquid thing with a skull on it and I always really liked that so I wanted to do that. For Ultra Kill as well, but obviously it's not very flashy because uh, Ultra Kill's graphics aren't very flashy and the doors are a lot simpler and stuff like that. Yeah, and then you have. Then you, then it's dark and the malicious face actually isn't spawned in when it's dark. It, it only spawns in after, you, after the lights turn on. And fun thing about that as well is that the. Oh, I, it's enabled now. Fucking. I keep breaking stuff without noticing, but the smoke isn't supposed to be enabled yet. Like, the, you can see these ones are, are not, like, active yet, but then when the light turns on, they turn active, so that it's sort of not breaking the immersion, that you can see smoke in the darkness. Um, yeah, Malicious Face, one of the earliest enemies. Actually, well, actually, I made the Malicious Face before I made the standard field. Because um, I, I don't remember. I don't remember what I was fucking... Dude, it's been like four years, but I was just like, I just wanted to do this cool enemy, and the whole I already had the whole idea that like, it looks like it's floating, but then when you look, you actually see this like little 
half invisible spider legs. So it's not actually floating, it's actually walking on like really thin legs. Just because I always like those kinds of weird details that you never really notice, but when you notice it's like recontextualizes the whole thing. And Malicious Faces, these are modeled by FD, which is also a friend of mine who was just helping out during early development before we had like an actual team. Um, and they, they actually do have bones for like facial animations, but I ended up never actually using them because they were really buggy and then eventually I just figured I actually liked it more when they're static. But they're supposed, like the original idea was for them to open their mouth when they're shooting the beam and the projectiles and stuff. And also the, um, the eyes are actually s a separate models from this head. Because also an, an early idea I had would be that you could like use the revolver to shoot out the eyes and then you, that would like make them blind. But that would, that sort of, not only would that have been confusing for like a first boss, but also it just wouldn't be very, it would either make them too easy or we just like, because like I want to avoid weaknesses in the same way that Doom Eternal does them where it's like, it's, it, it becomes the obvious solution to everything. So I just don't really, I just decided not to go with that after all. And the whole thing is like early on people were complaining that this room is too cramped and it's like that's the whole fucking point. Because the point is you're supposed to get used to like using the movement properly. And recent update we added to like crack things to malicious faces so that when you get them to have health they show a little, they show some little cracks on the surface so you can easily tell which ones, uh, which ones you've damaged and which ones you haven't so they're easy to tell apart. And I like the thing, they were, they always fell down and did like the big boom thing and all, but um actually checkpoint again, but um but the whole like ground slam wave thing, I think that was actually Zombie's idea. He's a he's a programmer at New Blood and he like does he's doing the Dusk SDK. And that was like because originally they would just fall down and they would like screen shake it, that would be the big boom and stuff, but then it was like maybe they should like it should launch enemies in the air, and I was like, hey, that's pretty... That seems like the kind of fun that, thing that people can use in style videos and stuff. But yeah, and I, I, I went back because I was going to do a chargeback heal, but I realized I'm a new, new save, so I don't have a marksman yet. Yeah, let's just face really easy boss. He's supposed to be really easy because he's just like an introduction to the base mechanics of the game and stuff. And like, yeah... And some people have complained that he should, he should splatter in the gore because in the lower they are they are like uh, stone exteriors that are filled with gore and stuff. But I'm just like fucking dude, I don't care. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> oh, yes, the, the, um, the um yeah, I was always uh, one of the one of the things that I that like the the thing about the ending rooms always being identical is something that often bothered me in retro FPS. Uh, is that you sort of have no idea when a level is actually going to end often. Like in the original Doom it's not an issue since you always have like a clear exit switch. But sometimes you would like play a retro FPS and you would just like walk down the hallway and suddenly the level ends here like oh I, I I still wanted to search for secrets and stuff and it's like it's like you accidentally end a level and then you have to replay it if there was something you wanted to see and stuff so I wanted to have levels always have a really clear like this is where the level ends. So every level has this identical sort of end room door and end room like hallway stuff and things like that. Ah, God damn, my throat is already getting dry. It's gonna be a long fucking stream. <laughs> Either that is or it's gonna be a multi-part stream. Oh. Yeah, well I guess we'll see how how long it'll yeah, and I mean, the further we go, the less I'll have to commentate, I think. But it's just like early on, there's so much yeah. I have to talk about. Because I haven't even talked about the music or the guns or anything. It's just like... I guess, I guess I guess I don't really need to comment much on the music since I already have the... have the um, text commentary on the soundtrack and that does most of the talking for the music. But still, like... I haven't talked about the guns at all or anything like that. And... Um, <clears throat> the uh, oh yeah this uh, this end credit screen um this is based on untraceable's um end rank screen thing 
which was based on Metal Gear Rising's and 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 rank screen. So it's just like a fucking vicious cycle, <laughs> just like spaghetti from one place to another. But like, I always liked how compact and like cool looking the Metal Gear Rising like rank screen was. So I wanted to get a sort of similar style for all the kills, and these actually um. You can see it moving slightly up and down, very slowly, which is you sort of supposed to sell the supposed to sell the um, illusion that it's also like kind of moving as you're falling, like uh, kind of like how the how your um, HUD actually like uh, oh like I just fucking go to the next level like your HUD is actually moving a bit as you move like like it's, it has sort of inertia, with that which helps with the um, sort of uh, same with the view, mo view model as well, the like gun moves up and down as uh, as you move in like in like the opposite direction because it's like uh, sort of helps helps gives give the game a lot more fluidity. Since the game is the like movement is actually very sort of uh, like there, there's very little momentum to anything, but having the HUD and the weapon sort of move opposite give, helps gives it a lot more like a feeling of fluid motion and stuff. But like that, the end screen goes up and down a little bit to sort of supposed to give you the same sort of uh, sort of supposed to simulate the idea that it's sort of in in like actual three D space, and also um, uh, and also it helps make the text a lot more readable when you have downscaling on. <coughs> Uh, someone in the chat asks, what made you decide to have all the guns have infinite ammo? Uh, simple. Um, have you ever thought about how much it would suck if Dante had durability in his sword? Because that would make you not want to do cool stuff, that would make you want to play efficiently. So same reason, you just don't You don't have ammo because you would want to play efficiently instead of doing cool stuff. There we go. Oh yeah, by the way, guys, here's a little sneak peek at the next update. You can use right click to zoom when you're at the shop. Whoa. Whoa, whoa. Yeah. And again, the, the whole, like, God, now I'm gonna fucking sit here for 20 minutes talking about the fucking shop. Fun fact the shop used to be red because <laughs> the room is red, but then that became an issue because people didn't see it. So I made it yellow so that it pops out and people still don't fucking see it. So that's why I made this this specific zero two door. This zero two start room have a door that's locked here. Like that's why this looks a bit weird. Is because there's supposed to be a door here that locks the first time you play, and then it, then it forces you to use the fucking shop. Because I remember back in the fucking back in the fucking early like very early demos, uh, some people were like they were like they were like I'm trying to use the shop, but it's not doing anything. And and then they showed me, then then I was like, can you show me a screenshot? Can you show me a screenshot of how, what it looks like when you're trying to use the shop? And they would just send this screenshot. Like they were looking at this statue and like it's like it's not working. The shop's not working. <laughs> yeah, I'll just restart so I don't have to fucking break beat in the background. A break core. I I don't know electronic subgenres honestly. Electronic subgenres are a fucking mystery to me. Break core, break beat, drill and bass, drum and bass, jungle, fucking reggae, jungle, fucking happy hardcore. Who the fuck names a genre happy hardcore? Fucking IDM, intelligent dance music. Fucking come on now. No, dude, my music is smart, unlike other dance music. Yeah, the fucking shops. Like, this is something I always liked. It's just like having these, like having the little screens be like actually 3D, so you can see like the different layers are like actually uh, stacking on top of each other. But it's actually kind of tricky to design a UI in a way, um, in a in a way where you it looks good, like it, if you're looking at it from different angles. Because like other normally you would just like um, it would be easy to just like have things have equidistant spaces and stuff, but. I kind of have to design things so that they overlap with each other so that it looks good from like different angles and stuff. Yeah, tip of the day. Most people don't actually read the tip of the day, so maybe I should do something about that to make them a bit more interesting. I don't know. Because they're actually pretty fucking useful new, new players. Yeah, there's the whole... Do you have the money at the top and you buy the stuff? And the, these aren't all labeled because there's just so much... 
fucking text on the screen already, so I just figured people would fucking figure this out themselves. But this is the equipment order for the variations, so you can change that. If you want the marksman to come out first, you can put that on first and stuff. And these um, people didn't realize that this was a button originally, which is why I added the arrow things. Because it would just like have a have a big like block that says equipped or whatever, and people would just be like, oh. I just like actually, but the problem was that people would unequip a weapon without realizing, and then they would not know that they could re-equip a weapon. They would just be like, "Where's my gun?" And it's just like, "Well, now I added the arrow, so that it's more obvious that yeah, you can use the things to equip and unequip." So we're gonna say. I think I, I even once got. <laughs> yeah, it's, I think it even got me once. Yeah, it's a common issue, which is a it's a good thing that I fixed it. But that's 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 a good example of just like. As a game developer, you have to keep you have to realize just like how many things can just happen on accident. Yeah, there's under under construction. Um, a while back, I decided not to give every weapon four variations. Then I, all weapons are gonna have three variations because I decided to cut it down from four in order to avoid like having uh, a bunch of obsolescence and like variations that are either useless or too overpowered or. That would override each other or whatever. So the fourth slot is gonna be replaced. What I'm planning for is like a it's gonna be like a separate screen, it's gonna be like a more info thing, and you could um I was thinking it would be like you would have like a weapon info thing that would just be like uh, tips and tech for the weapon and then like maybe some quote unquote lore for the weapon, and you could buy that with like points and stuff. <clears throat> yeah, and also there's the cyber ground, there's the sandbox. Um, and the enemies, the this uh, this whole thing, the whole enemy bestiary thing was missing for like, I think like a full year since release, or something. No, not that long. Half a year after release, it was still like missing, and then eventually I decided to add. There's a nice fan in the background. Do you have a fan? No, that's just my PC, I think. Is it that loud? Can you hear my can you hear my fan? I mean my PC. Uh, hmm. I have the stream muted, it's fine on Discord. Uh whatever. Fucking deal with it. Um the yeah, end like the like little uh Oh yeah, and it was a pretty recent change that we that we changed like the strategy and data so that when you first encounter an enemy it only unlocks the strategy part, and then when you actually kill an enemy for the first time, it, it unlocks the data part. Because I was just like, I realized that it was really fucking stupid to have like the enemy strategy be unlocked until you beat the enemy. Because with bosses, it's like, well, I want tips on how to beat a boss when I'm stuck on it, but you don't get tips until you've got no longer stuck on the boss, and it's like, well, that's pretty fucking stupid. So we had to change the whole thing. And yeah, now, now that you can like zoom in with right click, you can actually see the enemy models better as well if you want. Which is nice. Yeah, and there's like a whole bunch of lore and stuff. And the writing here has to be like. Um, the writing in Ultra Kill is mostly it's by me. But there's a couple like there's a couple bits and pieces here that are by. I think his name was Jacob Roy. Uh, there's a guy called Jacob Roy that I was intru uh, I was introduced through by Chanuba, who's a game developer. You can check him on Twitter. He's a cool guy. J A N O O B A. And Peter, you can probably just link him. Um, uh, okay, one second. But he's a, he's he's yeah, making yeah he's making cool stuff. Um, I don't I, I don't know if he's ever gonna. Oh hey, I funks in the chat. Hey I. Um, I don't think he's I don't know if he's ever gonna finish a game. Because he keeps starting new ones, but you know, he, he does cool looking stuff and I was introduced to Jacob through him because Jacob was helping him out with like uh, his slow writing and stuff. Because what happened is we did a little trade where I I introduced him to Jericho for his splash art for Soul DK and then he introduced me to Jacob and uh, most of the text in the game is just written by me, but things like the books that you find and the intermission text is sort of a collaboration between me and Jacob where um, 
Jake, like I, I tell Jacob what I want the text to have, and then he writes like, because he's a lot better with fancy words and stuff than me, so he writes like a really cool version of that, and then we go back and forth and sort of, yeah, update and improve it to sort of get it to a good sort of pos a good place where it's sort of both concise and very poetic and stuff. But all this like shop text is it's all me. Uh, it's a lot drier, you can tell. But also I was trying to copy Jacob's style a bit when I did, because I actually wrote all the dialogue for Minas Prime myself instead of having Jacob help me out, because Jacob, uh, I think, either helped me punch up Gabriel Gabriel's uh, dialogue or he wrote it originally and then we went back and forth on that, but yeah. Yeah, this is all like written by me, all the strategy and stuff. and. Yeah, because I, I want to avoid doing like all something that a lot of games do is they go too hard on the lore and then the world no longer has any mystery or it becomes a fucking dry ass boring mess. So I want to sort of try to find a balance where you have a you have enough lore where you, things are interesting and you have in, room for imagination, but not enough that you get answers that just make the game world less interesting. Oh, did I write 2S? Yes, 2S was entirely written by me in like, I think, two days. I was just like fucking, I was like in the zone, I was just like writing the whole thing. I, I barely did any edits on it either, I was just like fucking slamming it out, all the text, just like... Uh, oh, I remember. <laughs> yeah, you went fast. <laughs> yeah, I was just like... Yeah, when, when I get in the zone, it's just like, it becomes sort of almost automatic. And that's the same with writing music as well. It's just, I don't really think about it. I just, I just mash it out and I barely do any edits. It's just one and done. Because I think that sort of gives it a kind of a natural flow in a way and, and stuff. Oh yeah, I didn't mention it. Um, Take Care, the song uh, that plays here, that's just like a looping clip from... Russ Morgan Orchestra's um, "Were You Fooling?" Some people, some someone, I, I found a comment of someone saying that it's not actually by Russ Morgan Orchestra; it's by a different guy. That just Russ Morgan was in playing trumpet or something. But I haven't been because this is like a really fucking obscure song. You you can't even find a copy of it anywhere. It's like finding any information on it is really difficult. So I don't actually know if that's true. So it's just like, I'm just gonna keep crediting it to Russ Morgan, because that's how I found it credited as. And like, if, if someone finds proof that it's not Russ Morgan, then I'll have to like just like change the text to update it to whoever is actually the real credit. The... <clears throat> Question for you, maybe? Yeah. How long have you been doing game dev and etc? Et et so I guess music maybe too. Uh, music's been like... Uh, the oldest... Actually, I'm gonna do a real quick check, because I have the very first... Because I'm, like, obsessive at collecting, like, keeping my all my old stuff still, like... Um, still safe. The oldest music I have that I made, that I still have... Like, actually, yeah, the old, uh, earliest music I wrote is from 2009. Which is... Let me think, that's 13 years ago? So at the time I was, I was 12, so I started mu making music around when I was 12. Obviously, I was just, it's kind of funny because I was just like, music was like my original like thing. I was just like, like I said, I was, when I was a kid I was still like playing around with Game Maker and I loved that a lot as well. But it was just like, I dropped that after a while and focused on music because I found music to be more interesting at the time. And I still fucking love music though. I bet you can't tell. But, <laughs> but, um. Uh, it was just like I was making music just like constantly for like fucking a full decade and no one cared and then I start making one game and suddenly it becomes like fucking talk of the town and everyone loves it and it's like, it's like <laughs> but my music though. Now don't worry, my old music is fucking garbage. I don't know, maybe I'll, maybe I'll play you guys a clip or something at some point, but it's just like, it's just garbage so bad. But it's just like, that's fine, because, you know, I was just learning stuff. It's, it's not supposed to be good when you're fucking starting off. 
it took it took like a year before I started making acceptable music and then way longer before I started making like actually good music. If you consider what I make now good, obviously, you know, it's it's to each their own. Yeah, I think I think that was actually like twenty minutes at the shop, like I said, as a joke. Ah. Uh. Uh, someone says, I looked up where you fool in on Spotify, it's created Joey Nash, Richard Hammer and his orchestra. That's probably a different version. There's multiple versions of like every song because this is back in the early 20th century where music was a completely different thing where uh, instead of artists writing their own songs, because like that was, artists didn't used to really mostly write songs. Like they were separate songwriters and then like bands and uh, musicians and stuff, they used to just uh, play other people's songs like this, but that these songwriters mostly just wrote. Like, this is obviously not, doesn't apply to everything, but this is just like a general gist. And didn't like, bands didn't really start to, like for an example, you think Frank Sinatra songs, Frank Sinatra didn't like write any of them, as far as I know. But they're all, but you know, people are used to bands writing their own music, so everyone credits like Fly Me to the Moon to Frank Sinatra, even though it was written like 20 or 30 years before Sinatra made his version of it. So Were You Fooling was written way before um, probably someone else. I don't know who wrote it, but Russ Morgan, probably just one of the multiple many recordings of it that I ended up using. <clears throat> oh my God. I keep getting uh, fucking distracted and going on tangents and stuff. No, I... Now I forget what I was supposed to talk about. Yeah. Oh yeah, and this like little room here is sort of the like I just wanted one room that's like no combat, no anything, and just like this little like opening room that just looks cool. I think it looks cool, but the idea with having the fucking statue right in the middle is to draw attention to it, so you like. It, it feels a bit out of place, kind of, because the idea is to sort of force you to notice these statues be because they eventually obviously become a boss fight, so it's supposed to be like a surprise, so now that you, you ha you're you forced to actually notice them, you're like, oh yeah, this is like a statue here, whatever, and then it, then it eventually becomes like, whoa, it's a boss. I heard Takira has like four terabytes of music, that's not true, it's two terabytes. But yeah. Actually, I think it might be a bit more than two per terabytes at this point. Oh yeah, and the, this um, when I got picked up by New Blood and we did like the new version of Prelude. This is like one of the one of the common things that they wanted me to improve was the flow of the levels, because there used to be a lot of well, there used to be a lot more waves and stuff. But they was just like thank fucking god they pointed this out because I think it's improved the levels a lot. So instead, let's just like for an example, this room in, in the original version, it was like you come in here, it locks the doors, it spawns an enemy behind you, you shoot him, and then it spawns these two strays, and then you shoot them, and then you can go onwards. So just like they was just like keep compressing stuff, just remove extra waves and stuff. So instead of just having like a pointless first wave, this is just the second wave now, and just like flows way better when you just go bam, bam, and you, then you keep moving forward and stuff. Oh yeah, and this actually, this room originally was from the end of the original Zero Two, which I think the original Zero Two has actually been lost to time, so there's still videos of it, but I don't know if there's a playable build of it anywhere anymore. But actually, like, I, I removed this from that version because it was just way too hard, but the like original layout was just like this exact thing where you go in the middle and then fill spawn on the both sides and then there was one stray on each side as well, and then at this spot, and in this spot, there were crushers. So the idea was that you would move to the center, and then you would have to fight off the filth while also not moving into the crushers. But that was obviously way too fucking tricky for a second level in a game, so... Ended up not getting used, and also it's just kind of awkward. Was that before Git, I think? Yeah, this is way before oh, okay. Git. Because this is like before I made like... This was back before Swords Machine was even a thing. Oh, so it's like very old stuff. Just I, Google Drive backup. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah. Before, yeah. before Peter actually taught me, like, cause I'm I'm a very stubborn old man, old old boy man, boy boy man old. It's okay. I can fix him. <laughs> yeah. Um. So Peter Peter made me start using Git because obviously I wouldn't wouldn't have been able to figure out how it works by myself. So before, because Git is like for those who don't know, Git is just like a program so that you can have backups online, you can have version control, so that if something goes wrong, you can easily uh, take any of the previous versions of your files to fix it. So before before that, I would just like occasionally zip up all game files and put them on Google Drive. And that was my version of backups. <laughs> and it, like, yeah. back back then it was, it was like okay, because I was still the only person working on the game. But obviously as, as like Peter, came in and started doing code and stuff that that was just unacceptable with like with source control the idea is so that like all changes are stored pretty much permanently mm. and you can just hop hop back in time and it stores the changes not like full rewrites of the whole thing so it's also mm. safe space as well it's not destructive code anymore i need to, I need to go to the bathroom I'll I'll leave you for a second. Yeah, no, no problem. So this whole like, always like this room as well. Just like a little blood, blood, blood flow fountains and stuff. And this, this is one of the most extreme examples of um, this sort of improving flow and momentum. Was this, this room used to be two, maybe even three waves. I think it was just two, but I might have even been three waves. But it was just like kind of, it became so fucking exhausting. And obviously at the time I didn't realize it. Most people kind of felt it, but couldn't um, couldn't sort of articulate what felt off about sort of these levels. But that was just like so. I'm, I'm, Dave, Dave is very good at pointing out things like these, like developers often forget. And the same thing is uh, these door lights, like these little green lights on the doors. That was also Dave. Um, because he was having kind of sometimes he was having trouble finding the door to the room, which is obviously as a, as a developer that's never been a problem because you place the doors, you know where exactly where they are. But then was like, oh yeah, obviously all the the prelude is like purposefully completely monochromatic. It's all orange or red or whatever. So I was originally worried about adding like green lights to doors so that it would break the visual too much, but it doesn't. It, I, and it helps so much in like navigation. And I think it adds, it actually adds the visuals a bit. Because like the whole thing with the prelude color scheme is that I wanted it to be completely orange. So that once you actually go to hell proper and you get like gr blue sky and green fields and stuff, it would be like a whoa, holy shit moment. So like I was worried about breaking the color scheme too much with green lights, but it's fine. It doesn't really matter. It doesn't break anything and it just helps the flow and the level design and stuff. Uh, here's the fun secret, and by fun I mean the bane of programming is having, uh, making uh, fucking infighting work for source machine and the strays and the filth. Because <coughs> um, and some people have all have been like, why doesn't this game have infighting outside of like these special moments? Is because I just think, um, and this doesn't make any sense. The blood just like starts from midair, but it doesn't really matter. But let's just like, uh, I did consider, like originally I was planning to have infighting, but then I realized that it sort of, it felt, it felt wrong in Ultra Kill to have enemies like focus on anything but you. So the focus, everyone's focus should always be on the player, even though lore wise they should be fighting each other. But it's sort of whatever, you're the biggest, you're the biggest danger in the room, everyone has to focus on you. So I wanted to sort of not break that by having enemies start focusing on each other. And that's a good idea. That was a good idea because the like as as the game goes on, the levels become so fucking chaotic with like a billion enemies that if the game had infighting, that would just be like. First of all, you would be able to beat every level without firing a fucking shot by yourself because you would just jump around the room and every enemy would kill each other. But also, just like makes it more exciting. So the game only has like a sort of halfway point where it doesn't really have infighting, but enemies can still hit each other if they're different enemy types and they can still kill each other. This is a sort of halfway halfway solution. And this this uh, secret used to be way better because 
Um, you used to not be able to get up here, like in the earlier versions you would, wouldn't be able to jo wall jump up here and you wouldn't be able to, because slam didn't used to give you more jump height. So the only way to actually get up there was by using just the shotgun. So you, in order to get to the secret level you either had to replay this level or you had to go and kill the swords machine early in order to get the shotgun early. And it was sort of uh, like that. I liked that bit a lot about the secret level, but then it sort of ended up getting lost. That's fine, I think. I mean, it's more fun. The more people end up encountering something wicked, the better. Oh yeah, and uh, there's a couple schisms here. That's like a little tease. I put I put a bunch of schisms here on purpose, so like a little. And these, uh, since they don't pop up on the next level, but it's just like, hey, what are those? And yeah, and the idea, the idea with this level, the whole like uh, gimmick with the level is that you're actually, you're supposed to be playing like a level uh, parallel to what Swords Machine is playing. So like, so like he starts here and Swords Machine drops in from here, and then he moves to here and he, he fights the dudes in this arena, and you can obviously see them from there. And then he goes here, he fights the dudes here, he fucking slaughters all of them, and then he goes there, and right now he's, like the idea is that he's in a fight, and that's why the door's locked, because you're not the only one who gets locked in doors in the arenas, okay? Like, it's, it's, it, 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 I don't want to, I don't want to spoil anything, but it does have a reason in universe why that happens. So it's sort of, this is supposed to be like a idea of like, hey, you're not, you're not you're not a special robot. This is every robot goes through the same thing. Who goes to hell? They all go through the same like enemies and all the same same kinds of like locked arenas and stuff. And like, so the idea is just like this is supposed to show that you know you're not you're not you're not the main character of the story basically, or well, you're not the main character of the universe. But well, you're also not the main character of the story. But I won't go into that either. But, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, and the, here's the classic um, video game essayist hallway. Every video game essayist jerks off about how much, how great it is to tutorialize players without using text. Like that. And, uh, like, obviously it is, it is great when it's done right, but it's just, I always found it funny when it was just like... Uh, it's sort of, it's, it's kind of an obsession in a way, and then people end up being really bad at tutorializing. <laughs> but yeah, and all, all these little like notches and stuff is just like... Um, just like fun decorations that these don't have collision either so that you don't get stuck on them. And yeah. Yeah, I do think that it, it definitely in this kind of case where it's a very self-evident thing like the crushers, it's like, yeah, this... The best way to tutorialize people on the crush is just to show them how to work because it's just very self-evident. There's no need to have like text for them. So it's just like you introduce, you have a hallway that introduces it, you have an arena that uses it, and then you have like an escalation of them into like this hallway, and then you can use and use them to kill the enemies. And then you stop here, and it's like, oh my god, what is that? And the idea with Swords Machine killing the enemies is supposed to make you like. A, Sort of wonder if, oh yeah. The, here's the arena that the Swords Machine was fighting in for like two hours while I was talking about everything else. He was like here, and you can see all the corpses and stuff, and and like stuff. And I was actually, I actually kind of placed the enemies, because um, what I did to place the corpses, I actually did just place the enemies in positions like around here, and there's some here and one here and one here, and then like I actually placed them in a way where they would be. If this was a player arena, and then I just spawned in a swords machine, and that would go and kill them. So it sort of, it kind of actually is like is it's like even though he doesn't actually like in terms of like in engine, this fight doesn't happen because these are all like pre baked now. But like it's it, this is sort of what actually is realistic to what swords machine would fight, and it's supposed to be very similar to how it would be the arena would be if if you fought them in the, as well. <clears throat> Take another drink. <sighs> Have you updated those? Like remade the thing at some point because I'm pretty sure like at a later level 
we did a similar thing where enemies, like dead enemies, are pre baked. Mm -hmm. And it's the old models and all everything. Yeah, this is one too. Um, I had to update these because um, these were like way old prefabs that had. Yeah, same with the other level. It's but it's still there, I think. No, no. I mean, they have the the one two has the old models, but it was newer versions of the prefabs that had like different hierarchy oh, setups no. and stuff. Because the problem here was the like. Oh yeah, okay. the game would just break. Like you would shoot shoot an enemy, and it would just fucking null ref all over the screen and stuff. So I had to replace these old corpses with new corpses. But the one two corpses are still the old corpses, which I went uh, st left on purpose because I think it's a fun Easter egg to still be able to see the old models and stuff. Yeah. Okay, this this level was a fucking massive, massive pain in the ass to um, do in terms of like because it was like. First, like most old skill levels are very linear because I like that kind of obstacle course level design. I think it helps a lot with pace and this kind of like non stop pacing. Because, uh, like uh, with the original Doom, it's more like a back and forth of like calm and intense and calm and intense. With old skill, it's just like intense, 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 and then occasionally a calm section. But this was just like a huge fucking pain in the ass this level, not just because of the Swords Machine like scripted encounters, but also because. And this 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 whole arena is inspired by DMC5 because it had the um, uh, cameo system. So this is supposed to kind of be like your cameo systeming with Souls Machine. <coughs> but this was just like a huge pain in the ass. This whole level, not just because of Souls Machine. Um, uh, just uh, don't mention ha don't mention this hallway to Hank because he had to. He was going back and forth with this hallway to try to fix one bug for like seven hours. I think it was. It was just something absurd. So don't don't mention this hallway to Hank. Uh, and yes, Hank is uh, by Hank I do mean the Hank also. The uh, Hank in one four is named after Hank the QA guy. But um, yeah, so level was a huge pain in the ass because not just because of the source machine cameos, but also because the checkpoints. Because this everything has to be checkpointed in a way where everything works regardless of what order you do things in and also also there has to be like there's like like for an example if um instead of coming in this arena right because right now um i can just do that actually real quick uh like for an example look at the um, just look at like most of the enemies are like in this corner right now and there's like one or two dudes like leaning up against the railing so if i go in here and I go through here, and I go to this room. Oh, never mind. They actually do change position because because like there's there's like two versions of this room. Is there's a pre-baked version, and then there's the dynamic version. So if you go through if you go through the shortcut without doing this room first, it'll use the pre-baked versions where the corpses are already there. Um, but if you do 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 this room, then it uses the dynamic version, which is where all the corpses were when Source Machine killed them in your run. And obviously, now, if, if, if you do this first, and you come in here, and all, all, they're all dead already, then if you do that side of the room, the Source Machine doesn't spawn on this side anymore. And it's just like, all these kinds of fucking... Just a huge fucking interconnected mess of all these things I have to keep track of. Oh, yeah, this... I should probably make this unlock, just because... Why not? Because that's another way is um, to get to the secret... Oh yeah, this this area used to be tall enough that you could walk in it because the game used to not even have a crouch state, only a slide state. So if it was this um, small, originally you would just stand up after you stop a slide and then it would clip into the ceiling. But then after I eventually added in a crouch state, I think that was around some point in limbo. I don't remember exactly. Maybe even last. But I added a crouch state. And that's when I decided I'll go back and lower these a bit, so that you actually do crouch to get to those. And Jesus Christ! Oh yeah. Um, so yeah, this is this goes to like the parallel arena thing. So I just fucking why don't I just need, I I just gotta use cheats, dude. Yeah. So like these these are like parallel to each other. Uh, just activate that again. There we go. 
I wonder, do we hint at how to activate cheats anywhere in the game, like in a tip or something that I don't know? Nope. Or is it just... Fair enough. It's good that maybe I we should, know. but no, no, no. I think people can figure out a fucking Konami code. <laughs> yeah, but maybe it could work as a tip of the day at some point or yeah. like somehow if you write it well, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, we could probably hide it somewhere. When when we have uh, when we have uh, another secret Easter egg boss fight, that there can be the reward for it. I don't know. Yeah, I could probably make these doors unlock, but I don't know. Just like uh, probably that's gonna be just more like QA uh, problems because of how interconnected and fucking pain in the ass this level is. Oh yeah, look at this broken texture. And I really like this sort of puzzle bit. It used to be a lot harder before we uh, up the uh, before we up the um, wall jump height and speed and stuff. Uh, God, I was supposed to talk about something. I was just like there was something on my mind. I completely forgot. Oh well. I'll just. Uh, I guess uh, yeah. Actually, I'll do the I'll do the pro proper forward. Oh yeah, now I remember. It's um, fucking. I actually went into some extra trouble with like. Um, let let me show you. Like the blood, blood fl flows in from over there. There's just like whatever over there. It's just like something. I like the idea is this is like the this is like the beltway that they used for like crushing minerals in like crushing rock in the just like minerals. But now it's just like blood and guts instead of uh, uh, minerals because it's been abandoned and taken over by hell stuff. It's just like blood flows in from here, and like these are supposed to crush the rocks, and then they go like under here. You can see there's like a little notch that that it actually passes through. So they go down there, and then they come in through here, and they flow. They flow under the whole like parallel fight, like parallel room, and they flow in from here, and then they go into this crusher, which eventually leads to like the this final super uh, crusher setup. So it's just like uh, actually putting pointless effort into making this, uh, making this like uh, factory kind of make sense in a way. It's just like stupid waste of the time, but whatever. It's fun. It's fun to have stuff like that, and I think I think in a subconscious way, it kind of yes, a lot of people like even if people don't really notice it on purpose, they might notice it subconsciously. I think, and it adds this sort of life to the levels. And there's a little gap here. I don't remember why. And here's the again. You can see the skull door because this is a boss arena. But here's the secret. Swords machine fight that I'm gonna do just to get the shotgun early. Yeah, this sort of a uh, cool breakable um, fucking amid jigs, fucking pillars. I hate that place. This is where I've been revamping the boss bars. Ah. Uh, oh yeah, because it is a boss. This is a, like a simple boss that has like two bars, so it's a good place for testing. Yeah. Yeah, you can get the shotgun early here. It doesn't really actually matter. Like it used to, it used to matter more back when, uh, back when the secret was only accessible with a shotgun. But it doesn't really matter that anymore at this point that you can get the shotgun early because you just get in the next level anyway. And at some point, I did consider making like a making like an Easter egg of like if you kill the sauce machine here, then it won't appear in the next level. But I think that would just be really confusing for players who on their first playthrough find this boss and then the next level is like really confusing to navigate because the arenas don't make sense anymore because they're supposed to have bosses in them and stuff. Oh yeah, and I think... No, I actually fixed it finally. There used to be a fucking pro builder default texture up there. Yeah. Okay, finally time to get through this level after fucking half an hour of just walking around and talking. <laughs> Somehow we still have 260 people here, even though this is just like the worst stream possible. Oh yeah, look at this. This like little knob thing is just completely vertically, like horizontally stretched because the whole pipe had to be stretched to fill out the entire room. 
like some dumb fun stuff and I think you can still get sort of stuck now I did move them a bit so it's a lot harder to get stuck behind the statues oh yeah there was a point in development oh yeah by the way I don't know if anyone noticed but the shotgun is the new um, retexture thing the remodel and retexture that we that uh, dog did a bunch of, uh, while back uh, we haven't done retextures of the revolver or the nail gun yet but those are gonna be the shotgun's gonna be in the next update, nailgun might be if it's gonna be done, but revolver definitely won't be done for that, but it'll be done for Act 2 probably. <clears throat> so, Jesus, now I just fucking lost track. Oh yeah, I was supposed to say uh, there was a point in development where the statues were actually breakable, but that became an issue, like, issue for two reasons. First is because they're a light source that would make it so people would completely like oh, people would often accidentally make the levels too dark for themselves by destroying this accidentally in a fight which would make navigation confusing and stuff and also um, the problem was also that it made it way too obvious which ones were just like level decorations and which ones were like actual enemies so you could just break the level decorations but not break the enemies <clears throat> <sighs> okay, zero three. I have a question from before. Yep. Might as well read it. Uh, when it comes to level design, do you plan a basic route out or lo lo and lock it in early? Yeah, there you go. Or lock it in early, or do you do you just play about to see what what you yeah, come I up? Just, with? Yeah, I just yeah. Often, sometimes I'll have like a general idea of what I want to do, but usually I just do like I make a room to completion like i just like start a room i block out a room i i put in the enemies i uh, tweak and detail and add textures and stuff and then once it's once a room is completely done i just move on to the next room which is like obviously that's not something you can do with like doom or quake levels or something because those are like way more interconnected but ultra kill rooms are always just like ultra kill levels are just like room after room after room so it's a lot easier to do this kind of segmented sort of uh, level design and it, I think it helps give the levels a sort of good flow when you when I play them a bunch and like know how a level like a raw room feels before I start making the next one stuff like that oh, and here's the here's the here's the fun the double down thing which is that you can see the end of the level from the start of the level um, Always, always like a fun little neat thing. But in particular, the what makes this uh, just like it's 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 a common trope in retro FPS levels. But what makes this special is you can actually just like uh, you used to you used to have to have the shotgun to be able to do this. But um, now with slam storage being a bug, you can just like skip the whole fucking level on your first playthrough if you want. And then you have to fight both of the source machine phases up there. But I'm not gonna do that. I'll do the proper run. But yeah, always. And this is. Uh, some people will like. People who find like the original. Um, either screenshots of the original results screen. Or like videos of the old levels. They like. They'll notice that each level originally had three challenges. Instead of just one. And they'll be like, one of the levels have three challenges anymore. You should add the other challenges back in. But the problem is. Every level only ever had like one actually good challenge. Like this is back when there were only like three levels. So like like the thing is like there would be tiers of challenges where there's easy challenge, medium challenge, hard challenge. And the hard challenge for this level was just like uh was the current level, current challenge, which is just like only kill one enemy. And it was just like, hey, that's a fun challenge, but then the rest of the challenges were just like boring stuff like parry axe enemies or whatever. Because there's only so much you can do. In terms of like interesting challenges so instead of having three challenges where only one of them was interesting i just decided to fucking remove the excess challenges and just keep the interesting one to streamline everything yeah this is just like and because of the whole like gimmick that you can just like skip through the whole thing and stuff i just one of my one of my favorite levels in the game because of that and here we have the introduction of the schisms uh, they're not they're not exactly a hard enemy 
but their whole point isn't really to be a hard enemy. They're just supposed to be there to like increase the amount of projectiles to like turn the place into bullet hell and to be a bit more resilient so you can't just like one shot them. <clears throat> yeah, here's a glass ceiling. It's just just because it looks nice, I think. Even though it's not very useful or anything. And this is one of my favorite. After like the uh, facelift of like the Prelude levels, this is one of my favorite because of this sort of gold light uh, um, stairwell stuff. Because this used to just be like a square, square shape. Um, Stair staircase room and it was a lot less interesting and now it looks like it's nice nice and chunky and Yeah, the idea is you come up here and then you see this and you're like what to, what to do? Oh my god, it's not break And then you uh, then you go back down here and then you notice there's actually a second door here that you didn't see before It's just like it's just like a little like it uh, it's not like enough to be like a because this is like a common trope with like metroidvanias or something <laughs> Um, it's, uh, but it's just like you see a thing and you can't do it yet, but then you can do it later and then it's like open stuff up. But this is just like a micro, super micro version of it where it's just like the unlockable thing is like the next room over. But I think it still adds a bit more... I think it still makes the level a bit more like... <coughs> um, feel a bit more dynamic and interesting. Instead of just like... Uh, like if it was instead of instead of just like being you find the crack first uh, If it was just like you go you go in here you get a shotgun and then you go to the other side of the arena and you have like and then, then if it's if it's just, just like completely linear it would make the level a bit more boring I think so having even even though it's just a small loop around I think it still uh, makes the level a bit more interesting than just it being like one direction tunnel hallway thing and with Ultra Kill, it's all about like these little, little things of how to break up monotony and stuff. Because even even small things like just like having to go back a bit uh, ends up helping a lot in terms of making the levels feel a bit more varied and less linear and stuff. Even though they're all completely linear, almost all. Yeah, good old with the shotgun. It's like. I fucking forgot to talk about the weapons again. Oh God, I think I don't know. Yeah, I don't think the revolver rotates. The, they it used to rotate the barrel one where you, you just shot the gun as well, but it doesn't anymore. It's probably broken or something. But at least it rotates when you charge. And like have that was just a complete pain in the ass to like override bone animations and stuff with code and everything. And it was just like. But anyway, so revolver was just like. As uh, like revolver and the shotgun were both like from before we had concept designers like concept artists and stuff so I was just like 2FD who was a friend of mine at the time I was just like hey can you just do like a sci-fi revolver and he's like okay and I did a sci-fi revolver and that's that he has the sci-fi revolver and the same with the shotgun he was just like hey can you make a sci-fi shotgun and he was like okay and then he made a sci-fi sci shotgun and then this is what it is and then just like uh then we find there's a, to like it, it's obviously lower quality than the future weapons ended up being, especially because um, this revolver texture you can see actually has a fuck ton of JPEG compression, because way back, uh, like in the early days of development, I didn't know how to do color compression, so I did, did it by just having it be a really low quality JPEG. Which would automatically compress the color. So this just like at this level level texture as well. You can see a bunch of JPEG compression here. It's less like yeah, this fucking JPEG ass levels and JPEG ass weapons. Because I didn't know what I didn't, I didn't know better at the time. So that's that's why it's good that we're upgrading the weapons. Just like in terms of like textures and model and stuff, so that they not only look better but also they're like properly compressed and pixelized and stuff in a good way instead of. You know, Fucking JPEG ass, lame ass way. And also, a lot of these textures, like this is a this is a this is a 32 by 32 texture used to be here. But in the files, it's actually 128 by 128 because I didn't. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I didn't know how to. I didn't know how to turn off filter like texture filtering 
in the early days, which was like I, because like when you just scale the image up, it's it's blurry, obviously, because they use like fancy algorithms. Um, so, but I don't want that. I want it to be pixelated, but I didn't know how to turn filtering off in Unity. So what I just did was I was just scaled it up in like an image editing software. So you, so this <laughs> this is just like 32 by 32 times four, and then. And then it was just like, yeah, I'm fucking good enough. Like, the thing is, a lot of people are just like, oh my god, Ultra Kill is such a fucking brilliant game, just like... Hakita is such a fucking master of game development and design and stuff, it's like, no, it's a fucking mess. It was... I had no idea what I was doing. And I think that's a testament to just how, like... To just how, like, you can... And really anyone can really get into making games, you really don't have to be like a fucking genius or anything. It's just like, you just get to it and then you get more experience as you go along and and then you get better at it uh, and then you improve the game and then people are like, oh my god, this guy's a genius, he thought of everything even though it's just like a fucking, everything's accidental or just like, because nobody really notices the flaws, like the small flaws are like these, and that's fine. Just like, it's something you keep in mind, because you always notice your own flaws, but you don't really notice other people's flaws. So it's, people get really like imposter syndrome with their own games and they think like, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm tricking people into thinking I'm good, but everyone, everyone's fucking tricking people into thinking they're good because people are fucking dumb. Yeah. Um, this is, I don't know how many people know this, but this is actually like, I'll just, and I, why don't I just keep cheat, I'll just keep cheats fucking enabled. So like this is, like, this is actually the same like, uh, this is like inside here, um, like you go around here and then you loop around, you go back here. Because this is just like supposed to be like a cool, another cool just like little loop to make things feel a bit less um, linear. And it's just like most people don't really notice it because it's not, you, there's really no reason to look to the side and recognize the level, so it's like fine, whatever. Oh yeah, the fucking the little uh, wind tunnel place here and this is this is one of those things that's just like a good old bug fixing days back before I was a part of New Blood and I had actual an actual QA team because thank fucking god Q like New Blood has QA. This was like there was a huge bug with the fans where if you had if you didn't have a frame rate limit like if you didn't have a frame rate target and you didn't have V-Sync the fans would like Having the fan spin would like fucking obliterate performance for just completely unknown reasons. Like I just, I, I just a fucking complete mystery. So just like this is good old days of let's just like watching someone play and they're like having a, having a good time and just like ah oh, la la. Ah like, oh, like oh fucking great. It's just like the the mysteries of programming. Because boy, I'm not a fucking good programmer, and that's fine, I don't need to be a good programmer, I have Peter for that. I mean... <laughs> well, you're, you're a whole lot better than I am. And just like... Uh, the, the whole thing with the, like, the light pillars here is just to um, make this room recognizable, so you can look down and see and the, uh, to see the previous room, and like, hey, I'd recognize that room. But funny thing is that... Um, this is a checkpoint, yeah. I'll just do that real quick to show how it looks before I activate it. Because there's a funny, there's another funny, like, um, uh, iteration thing. Just like, for, in old in old versions, these lights, you see these are like little yellow lights on the stairs, or whatever. They used to not um, exist. So what would happen is people would enter like first time players would enter this room they would see the lights down there because like obviously i wanted the lights to be on so that people look down there but they would they would just like come in like, come in like this like uh, uh. and they would be like uh, huh why am i at the start of the level <laughs> and then, then they would just be pissed off that i put them at the start it's like no you're not supposed to jump just jump down there it's just supposed to be like a like a cool moment and stuff but it has to be breakable because you have to be able to do the other way around. So it's like... 
that's that's why we that's why I added the like little lights to the stairs so that you can immediately see that there's actually a way up. So you see that there's a way up before you see that there's a way down. Ideally. Yeah, and yeah, <laughs> that's the thing like one of the things that most players don't realize is it is insanely difficult to foolproof a game because when when there's like a thousand people even when there's just like a thousand people who play your game that's like at least one of them is going to be the dumbest fucking like going to make the dumbest mistakes possible in every possible situation so it's like you just have to watch how people play and then just like iterate on the levels to make sure that you fucking that you can like make sure that it's it for more at least like you can never make everything perfect for everyone but at least that you can get a like fix the uh, biggest issues so yeah like adding, adding these lights was a simple solution like to like that whole problem and then we have this did i miss a secret i don't think i did no i got over them zero three and zero four are the only levels that don't have five secrets maybe i should go back and add couple because that's sort of been i don't know why but i just like having it be like a he has a set amount of secrets that every level has and then it's easy to know and easy to design ui for and also this this stairway um didn't used to exist it just again some similar to like the malicious face thing in zero one is just like going from here directly to the boss room was a bit awkward to have like the enemies in front because sometimes even the enemies would actually walk into the boss arena if you just did things poorly. So I had the staircase, which is actually just literally just a mirror of the previous staircase that, um, like, like the previous source machine arena, you started here, you went down here, and here was the boss arena, and now it's mirrored so that you start down here and go up here, and here's the source machine boss arena. There's just black walls that just like just avoid the walls, but it's a, they like they don't make any sense, but it looks cool, so it's just like whatever. And these sort of semi-Greco-Roman pillars that just like... I just thought they looked cool. Oh yeah, fucking dude. I fucking for completely forgot. I need to go back. Um, completely forgot to talk about how much we had to change... How much I had to change the first Source Machine boss arena. And yeah, this, by the way, these are actually... Breakable. These are the only statues in the game that are still breakable, because I had to keep them breakable so that the sword, so that the player couldn't just like hide up here and have the swords machine uh, not be able to do anything. So I had to make, keep these breakable, like the original stuff. But early, early on, um, like in the very first version, if you go to my YouTube channel, you can look up like the so original swords machine video. Um, this arena didn't used to have walls. It just had like a pit that would have like a fan in it. And it was just like early on people would just like... would Because uh, pe people don't really... You know, like first time players would sometimes like they would try to run away from the source machine. They would just like jump and dash and jump and then accidentally do a dash jump and end up falling in the pit and instantly dying. So I was just like maybe, maybe it's too hard to immediately put on like a tough melee enemy. And then have also the environmental danger in the same arena for so early on in the game, so that's why I ended up ending the walls. And used to be able to sort of come up here and stand on the stand on the ceiling, sort of. So I also just like removed that so that you can just cheap the boss. So now it's just like they're blocked off entirely, but it's still like a it's still sort of supposed to be like a hole so that the search machine will actually drop down from there. Because I think that's always cool, it's just like, um, I try, well not, de de usually with bosses I try to just not have them teleport in, because teleporting in is cool for like normal enemies, and again it has a it has a reason for it in the universe, why that happens, I won't spoil it, but um, it's not just because video game, but like, and obviously like, all the like uh, classic Doom and Quake fans and most rest FPS fans are like consider teleporting enemies to be cheap and lame, like Serious Sam does it. But I just in this kind of game, it makes more sense for you to not be able to just like open a door and then be able to snipe the enemies or something. 
So I think it's uh, in this kind of game it's better to just have the enemies teleport in after you're inside the arena. Yeah. Again, this is another another um, arena that that was changed a lot in redesign, and I think it is really looks really cool. I guess there's not really much to say about Swords Machine. Actually, I'll just there's probably something to say about Swords Machine. Um, yeah, Swords Machine was the first enemy to actually have a design, like in terms of visually. This was a uh, the first concept design in the whole game, and this was it was designed by um, Imp, aka Big Rock, who still is do he is still occasionally doing like enemy designs and stuff for the game, and it's inspired by the like the the original design was actually a bit grosser because it would have like a bunch of like um, like you like it was it was like a combination of metal and like human flesh and skin and stuff. But we decided to just go full robotic in order to just like make it clear that these are robots instead of cyborgs or something. But the whole whole like design is uh, inspired by the manga Blame or how it's supposed to be pronounced is Blam, I think. But um, Imp is a big fan of that manga, so this is sort of based on those kinds of designs that are in that. And I just think it's a really cool, iconic. This well, I don't know if it's iconic, but I think it's iconic design. Like the whole idea was to just have this like a really cool fight early on, so that back when this was just a demo, I still wanted to have like an enemy that would sort of be evocative of uh, sort of a virtual kind of like dual thing. So I wanted to have a really cool boss really early on, which is also why why his fight is like divided into two two like different parts. And also why you get teased in the previous level and stuff. Because it is supposed to be like a... It's supposed to be the kind of boss that actually sticks in your mind instead of like a malicious face or something. And he has um, two range attacks and two melee attacks and he picks between them randomly. And yeah. Well actually not randomly, it's one and one and one and it's like flipping between them I think. But there's some level of randomness to it. Which makes speedrunners mad, obviously. Well, it used to, but nowadays they just fucking delete Source Machine in like one second, so it doesn't really matter. <clears throat> God, I get it. I'm fucking... I'm fucking uh, creaking out here with no fucking energy drinks. Oh, you're still taking a... Br Wait, I, I forgot how you... Hmm? Have you stopped completely, or have you just... I try to stop and then I can't because I'm a fucking addict. I'm a fucking addict. Hey, you and me. It's... Yeah. Well, you have a, you have a better reason to be an addict. But anyway, it's 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 in my blood now. I can't. It's hard to get rid of it. Kids, don't do energy drinks if you have, if you have the choice. That shit's fucking addictive. I can I can suck suck it out of your bloodstream. I'll just. Don't, Peter, don't talk about sucking me. It's monster, it's okay. <laughs> it's it's not gay if it's monster. Yeah. No one has ever done anything gay with monster cans. Oh my god. <laughs> this is the last one. Oh, there he is. Uh, oh yeah, this room is just like, I really love... This used to be a really boring room, but I just really love this. Now I really love the sort of silhouettes, because this is like some fucking absurd extreme lighting, it's just like these completely like black um, silhouettes of the Cerberus and then just like the really sort of, it's actually kind of, the, I, I don't know why it, why this specifically, these two lights, but they sort of, they look like it's really hot. Like if you actually, like it looks like if I went, went nearby I would actually fucking start sweating or something. I always really like that. And there's just and in general this was about like uh, like the uh, uh, by the way I was getting to this point in sort of the uh, arena revamps for like new blood and stuff this was about the point where I actually started like getting better at arena design so there's a bunch of like different routes and like you can go down here and you can go up here and up there and stuff instead of, instead of just being a square like it originally used to be now it's just like there's a bunch of different routes and stuff so Makes it a bit more dynamic. 
And yeah, this is the first time Malicious Face comes in as a normal enemy, because I wanted that to happen in the demo, because I think it's really cool when... It's not just that it's really cool that bosses get reused as normal enemies, but also it's extremely efficient for a small indie dev like me to be able to just like reuse already functions. Because like, why waste a good enemy to just have it happen once? We can just have the fucking malicious face start happening, like appearing multiple times. And it's a good thing we started doing that because it's just like the enemy roster would be way more boring if we didn't use bo reuse bosses. Yeah, and this sort of this used to be because the whole um, thing with this level is the challenge that you have to slide like from the beginning of the level directly to the end. And the, the sort of trick to it used to be that if you killed the malicious face too early, like. So, because he spawns here, if you give it, kill him right away, then he drops in the middle, and then you can't like slide past him properly. So um, that was sort of a fun like little twist to the challenge. But now it doesn't really matter anymore since you can crush them with the ground slam. But I think I think it's much better that you can crush them than that you would be that it would be like a twist to the challenge because the challenge already has a twist with the glass floor in the last arena anyway. Yeah, this is another. This is another example of why I don't do curves uh, anymore. Just look at this fucking texture, it's just a complete mess. Because I can't fucking make textures uh, like be seamless in like a curved surface because I'm, I don't know, I'm bad at things. It's probably, probably like experienced mappers a little bit better at this but, than me, but whatever. Oh yeah, and this is the, this is the point where, because um, oh, uh, 0, 04 used to be like I don't know, 1.5 times or like twice as long as it is in the final game, just... Just cause the, like the whole point of this level was just like you finally got shotgun and now you just get to go fucking wild, so there's like huge enemy hordes that are really easy to kill with the shotgun. Because you're supposed to be like, you're supposed to feel like the fucking king of the world at this point. So then I figured that it would be, it would probably be better for this... It would probably be better for this level to just have it be short, so that it's more of like a... It doesn't... Uh, it doesn't um, outstage welcome. And also because Prelude is still the... Um, the only chapter of the game that has five levels, instead of just four. So it... We, we started a drag, which is a good... Um, that was actually Jericho's idea, because my original plan was to have like... Every layer be five levels, but then Jericho talked me out of it, which was a good thing because yeah, the flow is much better by just having each layer be like four, four levels, and then the last layer of each chapter just be two. Just gives it gives it a better flow and makes sure that each theme has like doesn't run out its welcome, doesn't get boring, and just like keeps the variety up. And this room was just like a good example of back when you used to be able to destroy the statues. Like the, the I actually really liked this room back then. Now I just think it's okay. But the really fun thing about this room was just like um, you would come in here, and obviously it's a pretty tight room with two malicious faces. And what would happen is they would, as soon as they used the beam, they would obviously break like all the statues. So the whole like room would be completely dark, and you would the only thing you would be able to see is the glow from like the projectiles and uh, from when they are charging their beams, so it was more of like a interesting challenge than it ended up being, but I think you know, it's just like, it, it ended up being confusing and just like a pain in the ass for people to have the statues be breakable and stuff oh yeah, and here's the um, when you have clash mode, there's a bouncy crate up here, so you can still get up there Yeah, and this whole like rotating, I think, uh, did I mention it even, that the whole rotating, like the whole thing was just like, um, I think it was straight up just like I copied it from Dusk, because Dusk has the really cool rotating hallway, and I just wanted to do like a similar like kind of uh, eye fucking thing, because this le otherwise this level doesn't really have anything notable in it, it's just a very standard level, so, and I, the way I design levels is, I try to... I try to have it so that every level has at least like one thing that's like, oh yeah, that's that level, you know, it makes it, it makes every memorable, every level memorable in like, even if in just a minor way. So I just, otherwise this level is pretty dull, so I just wanted to have like this hallway so that it's just like, here's, 
it's like, oh, it's this level with the rotating thing, is it like? It's, be, it's a bit it's a bit more like a memorable and recognizable. Now yeah, look at this fucking Z fighting. So yeah, so I mentioned earlier about the the fucking um the so this levels challenge is like this I actually I'm just gonna because I haven't talked about the schisms yet. Like the whole level soul challenge is the thing that you're supposed to slide from the beginning to the end. And like uh, the original twist of that was the malicious face, but then the twist that I ended up liking way more is the fact that if you break this glass floor, which obviously you would, because it's such a such a delicious opportunity for killing enemies easily and quickly and cool, and <coughs> and like, uh, but uh, but if you end up breaking the glass, then actually it becomes impossible to complete the challenge because you would fall down there with a the slide instead of getting in the end of the level. So it's just like a fun sort of twist to it. And yeah, uh, the schisms. Um, is these what these were designed by Imp, and it's just like, cause it always just like just like a little, like not only are they like buffer and they like they got fucking chunk chunky. Let me let me blind them. Just look at his fucking chunky ass. I I don't know why they have such chunky ass, but <laughs> they just like. And the, and the whole thing of like the head being on the shoulder instead of like that normal position so that it's sort of it's sort of a, it's a twist for the people who just like commit to only using the revolver because they're dumbasses. Uh, so it becomes a bit more difficult to just headshot them out of reaction. Uh, and also like oh yeah, there's a fun thing. Early on, uh, back when we were making the schism, like the redesign for the schisms, there was because Sam was modeling the schism, and he interpreted the design wrong, because like the concept art just it was just like a one angle, because we were just doing quick sketches so that we could get the redesigns done for in time for the like updated new blood demo. So, uh, so um, what Sam. Uh, I th thought the design was just that, like, instead, so that inst instead of, like, he didn't realize that the head was on the shoulder, so he thought that the head was just, like, really extruded, like, it was really just sticking out from the body, so it ended up being, like, a really goofy dude, who just had, like, a really long head sticking out from, like, his normal head position. It was like, and we were just like, hey, wait a minute, it's supposed to be in the shoulder. <clears throat> And yeah. Oh yeah, and this hallway originally was this is like another fun iteration thing is this hallway was like originally like twice as long. And what would happen is you come in here and then it would spawn a malicious face at the end of the hallway. Because it's a, I always really like I think it's a really fun scenario to have like a enemy like a malicious face that's like in a hallway and at a distance because that's such a they could because they did burst fire you actually have to consider how you approach and especially because these walls are like damaging so you can't just like wall jump and stuff so there used to be a there used to be a long hallway there was a malicious phase at the end but what happened is um a dude another game developer who i had like destiny game early was just like he would do this arena and then like this especially because this used this again this arena used to be three waves i think before it was crunched down, they just do to improve pacing. Uh, I used to do all three waves, and then it would come here, and then it would then it would have the like tricky malicious face encounter with the hallway. He would die here, he would go back, have to do this arena again, and then come back here and die to the malicious face again. I would just like because be because you spawned back there before the arena, and adding a checkpoint just for this hallway would have been just really dumb. So I was just like, ah, fuck it. I'll just, I'll just remove the malicious face encounter and just like reuse it later or something. <laughs> so, because, because what happened is he just, he, he, I think he said he did it eleven times, and after he died here on his eleventh time, he just gave up on the game. He just quit. So this, that's another one of those sort of those things where because you're the developer, you're used to, um, you're used to the mechanics. You're a lot better at the game than anyone who's actually gonna be playing the game is at the time. So there you end up doing uh, encounters and 
things that are like way more way more difficult than they should be because they feel fine for you so you have to end up you you have to get you just have to get you just have to get people to play the level you just have to watch them play it and then you'll notice things that you didn't notice yourself because you're much better at the game and you're used to it already and then you can just like iterate on it and make it flow better make it make it have a better difficulty curve and stuff oh yeah locked um ask wasn't it for schisms that was after i removed the face and then to further improve the pacing after we were picked up by new blood um, we also removed the four schism so it's just an empty hallway now because it's kind of an awkward encounter to just have four schisms that because schisms are pretty slow to fight for most people this is kind of an awkward encounter so we just decided to decided to just remove that in entirely ah <sighs> Oh yeah, um, I didn't mention it before, but fan favorite um, projectile boost thing obviously started off as a bug, which was be uh, back in the like Prelude 1.02 or 1.03. It was I was just like because um, I was just like at, at one point I was just testing zero uh, three for whatever reason, and I was just like. I just came to the realization, hey, I can, oh yeah, I can actually parry the Swords Machine shotgun, even though it's like like, like a burst of projectiles. There is each of those is still an individual projectile, which means you can parry one of them. And I was like, oh yeah, you know, I never thought of that. And then I did it, and it worked. And I was like, yeah, but wait a minute, don't. But the players, the players' projectiles use the same code and the whole same system as the Swords Machine's projectiles with the shotgun. So maybe, and then he just do like, oh, oh my god, is cool tech. The game has the coolest video game tech of all time. And it's just like, yeah, that, that's that's how the completely accidentally um, ended up ended up discovering the coolest tech in the game, and it's just like, um. Just like, you know, just the things happening on accident, like if this was like a fucking AAA studio or something, they would be like, oh, that's a bug, we have to fix that. But, you know, because we're an, we're an indie group, we can just do like, oh, that's a cool bug, we'll keep it. So I ended up just uh, doing it so that you don't get parry points from doing this and you don't get full health from doing this, because it was obviously way too fucking OP to just be able to do this and immediately get maximum HP. Uh... But yeah, there's a, there's a sort of, I don't know if it's a common misconception, but some people think that it's it's a bug that was discovered by other people. No, it was actually discovered by me, but it was when the demo was already out. And also, um, just to dispel some things about tech, shotgun switching was always intended. Um, it was, it's not a bug, it's never been a bug. It was intended there from the start back when I was programming the gun. Um, the same doesn't apply to other weapons really because the fire rate is nearly as slow so I always like I always like that every weapon has its own tech instead of because like people are like why can't I punch the nails then it's because if you could punch the nails then it would make the shotgun less interesting so it's it's much better if it's just like unique to the shotgun to have projectile boosting yeah um, shotgun switching uh intentional. Being able to iframe the explosion also intentional because iframes are cool and I really like that. Yeah. And there used to be... Um, some people have wondered about... Because there's a thing where in Ultra Kill if you... When you take damage from an explosion you actually it actually disables your healing for like half a second or something. And the reason for that is that because otherwise you could just do this and run into a group of enemies and then fucking blow them up and you would instantly get back to full health from the blood of them getting damaged. So, that, so I had to stop the kind of situation by having it so that explosions disable your healing. So you can't just like bum rush and explode uh, er enemies with your face and uh, just be completely fine. So there has to be a risk and reward to it. <clears throat> Oh boy, 
and the music here I'll turn up the volume a bit so you can hear the music just because I like the whole sound of this section so this this is actually just Cerberus, the Cerberus music slowed down like a third, like 33% or something, maybe even half speed. No, I think it was on the soundtrack it's 33%, but in game it's half speed. Because in the game it sounds better at half speed, but on the soundtrack in like separation it sounds really weird. At half speed, so in in the soundtrack I just did it like at one third speed or something. And I should probably do the, like the secret levels and stuff, cause cause in the secret level in uh, like the uh, like the ambient noise you hear, like the really 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 quiet ambient music you hear in um, in uh, Zero S in something wicked is uh, it's actually also Cerberus, but at like one percent speed or something like absurdly slow. Just cause, you know, I was just like a fucking I why, why make why make a new piece of music when you can just reuse an old one in a different way? As I was uh, asking, minus 33%, it's minus 33%, yeah. Because minus 66 is just like way too slow. And that's that's the ratio of like glory, um glo like glory is the original version and then I slowed that down to make guts, which is at the first half of 3-1. And that's a uh, 66.6% uh, 66 reduction in speed. It's the 66, it's the fucking Satan number. Yeah, whole, uh, like uh, like the whole thing was just like you have... You have like four levels of just like non-stop action. And then you get to this level and it's just like this really ominous like dark music and there's no enemies around. It's like, oh, what's going on? And look at, the, look at this fucking lava that's moving sideways, don't worry about it. Um, <clears throat> so this like it's supposed to be like the first like sort of big open room. It's supposed to be like like a lava foundry thing. So, again, this is just like a, uh, what's the word for it? Just like a Jesus. No, I'm forgetting. Oh yeah, look at that. Look at this. I just noticed that uh, the pillars are not symmetrically distanced from the wall. That's like a bit further into the wall than this. Whatever. Um, fucking like this is supposed to be remnants. That's the word. This is supposed to be again supposed to be remnants of like the when this used to be a mineral mining and processing facility. But this is just like where they get melted and stuff into like actually useful uh, like ore that can be transferred to the surface or whatever. And again, this this used this is another place where. This used to be taller, but I was able to. It was always supposed to be like you're squishing yourself through a vent, and when I added the scrouch state, I was able to make this smaller so you actually have to scrouge through it. And this is the this is the fun bit where everyone always always just goes in like ah da 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 da, and then they slide in and they immediately cr get crushed because they don't notice these are crushers. And this as well, this is kind of a trap where you don't notice that the the floor just ends and there's a crusher so everyone just slides in there but I just added this yeah, but I just added this sort of like the whole reason for the boss build ups is actually very function fun uh, like completely based on function originally because like the reason I wanted the, like because the thing about boss levels is uh, there's a problem in DMC three in the last level mission twenty, when you fight virtual three, is uh, there is zero reason to not always pick restart mission instead of just restarting the checkpoint because the checkpoint is started just the start of the level. So what would end up happening? You yes, you would always have like you would always just restart the mission, which means even if you died fifty fucking times, you would still get like a good rank because you technically didn't die because you restarted the mission. So I wanted to avoid that kind of issue and having like. And deaths not get counted so every boss level has to have some first half that that's enough something to necessitate having a checkpoint before the boss fight so that players don't just always restart mission instead of restarting the checkpoint but then also that ended up having a really good side effect of having the bosses get really well built up instead of just 
having like your start level is a boss fight. And obviously some people complain about it, they say this fucking sucks. Uh, when I when I try, try to get P ranks, I have to do this boring section every time. And my answer to that, my answer to that is obviously just cope, seeth, mold, get good. Uh, yeah, we used to, used to have the shops here, uh, but we added them. I think it was Dave's idea again, was to have the shops here so that people can change their loadout and... And, re and it was a really good idea because now players can actually look up like the uh, strategy to the process. Because for an example, I've I've seen um, Cerberus now. So now now I have the strategy for Cerberus, but I don't have the enemy data for Cerberus. So I don't get the lore, but I do get the strategy. So it's like if you're having trouble with Cerberus, I'm probably gonna do like a pop-up thing where if you die five times. Um, there's a little pop-up thing that says, "Hey, there's check out uh, tips for this boss fight in the in the shop terminal," and then you can just come in here and like check this out and be like, "Oh, I didn't realize I could blah blah blah," and stuff like that. So yeah, and just in general, it's nice to have these. Like some people have complained. That you know it it spoils it 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 spoils that there's gonna be boss coming up. But there's already boss doors. Every boss already has boss door. It's always it's already got, gotten spoiled, so it doesn't really matter. Yeah, and then the good old uh, quote from Dante's Inferno: "Abandon hope, all ye who enter here." And hopefully, it's like you stop here to read the text for just enough time that you you that that like the server starts waking up. Hey, actually, before I do that, I just want to mention about the music again, is... Um, fucking... Um, oh yeah, is that this is... Like, when you walk close to the uh, boss arena, this is the same... Um, this is the same sort of drone that's at the start of, like, zero one when you get close to the revolver, but it's just, like, at double speed, I think. So it's higher, higher pitched. And again, it's, it's basically the exact same situation where it builds up tension and then you walk in the room and it goes suddenly silent and then after a moment the actual music starts. And it's kind of a funny mirror because it's actually the same song in both situations because they both start with the... Um, like the opening, like, um, like I don't know if you can call it a jingle, but they both start with the opening like dissonant chords that are, that are like sampled from Mars the Bringer of War. It gets silent and the boss music starts. And this was another one of those. Um, this was another one of those situations where people were complaining that the arena is too small. And it's like, oh, if the arena was bigger, then this boss would be way too easy because the whole thing is like you're supposed to be. Um, like the whole every 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 ultra kill boss's arena is pretty small because it's sort of you're always supposed to be in the danger zone. Yeah, I should probably lower the volume now that I've done the point with the music. But like you, you're always supposed to be in the danger zone in terms of like enemy attack, so that you're never actually safe from bosses. Because that's such a like FPS bosses are very easy to fuck up. Because oh, like you can just do it like DMC2 style where you can just hang back and keep shooting the enemy. So with ultra kill bosses an important part is that the boss arenas are almost always very cramped and small so you can, ne you can never really escape from the boss. And just in general, you know, ultra kill bosses are designed more like character action bosses than FPS bosses. Because FPS bosses are usually pretty fucking bad. <clears throat> Why are there only two statues if it's called Cerberus? Because they, you, there was supposed to be three, but two was already too hard. And that's the reason. And yeah, the whole, like, the, this, like, this little staircase at the end is supposed to be, it's supposed to be like a little joke almost. Where it's like, you fi you just fi I fucking finish fighting two of them and then you look down and there's like four of them and you're like, Oh, please don't wake up! And then, you, then the door opens, like, oh, safety. Oh. 
Oh yeah, this this challenge used to be better in the old versions back when, um, because in the early versions of the Prelude, enemies killing other enemies didn't count for your kills. So if you, if you got if you got the Zebra to kill each other, you would have at the end of the uh, end of the level you would have zero kills. So you would technically be like a pacifist run, and the challenge was don't kill any enemy. But now I switched that because the like already as soon as like one dash one, the encounters start become so fucking chaotic that it becomes impossible to kill every enemy yourself. So. I was just like, well, it doesn't make any sense to penalize the player for not killing every enemy themselves. Because that would, that would make players play in a wrong way of like being really careful while trying to get P rank. So I ended up changing that so that even, even when enemies kill other enemies, it still counts as kills for you. Which means I had to change the challenge and now it's kind of... It's, kind of, it's, a, it's a very clunky wording because now people are like, well, what what's fatal damage? And it's like, ah, fucking... Well, there isn't really a better way to put it that's like not obvious. Yeah. <coughs> Don't mind me. Um, so yeah, oh, oh yeah, I forgot to mention um, Prelude um, from Limbo onwards. There's the hell map, which is basically the thing that's like between levels you have to like the little thing that shows how deep you're going into hell. That was actually a really late addition before early access. Uh, that was, I think it was Robert's idea. Robert is the programmer for a game called White Hell, which I'm also doing music for. You should check that out on Steam. Um, it's in early access as well, and I have a soundtrack up on my Heaven Piercer Bandcamp as well. But um, that was Robert's idea. And it was supposed to be a solution for... Because the problem was that, like, initially, when it's just, like, Act 1, like, when you get to Gluttony, and Gluttony is just two levels, but the players don't know beforehand that Gluttony is just going to be two levels. So a lot of people thought that um, Gabriel was just the mid-boss of Gluttony, when it's supposed to be, he's supposed to be the final boss. So it's supposed to sort of... The hell map is supposed to be, like, a thing that's constantly reminding you of, like, this is how far you are through the act. The, you know, this is how much you have left before the act ends and stuff. So, but then I didn't want I didn't want to add that to the prelude because that would spoil when. Because the whole thing here is that it's supposed to be a like when you finally get to one dash one like this, it's like whoa, and it's like a completely different visual style. And it's like a completely different theme, and the whole idea was that it's supposed to be a surprise, obviously, right? So. Um. So it's like if you had if you had the hell map that's showing that the that the previous level server is like zero five is the last level of the previous uh, previous layer, then that would spoil the fact that this is gonna be like a massive change in visual style. So I wanted I didn't want to include that in the prelude in order to keep this like wow moment like this surprise moment. So that sort of hell map was only introduced between one one and one two. Uh, will there ever be Steam achievements? And if so, can you make them like super difficult? Probably. Do both. Uh, we won't be doing achievements until the game's completely done. But though. Yeah. Oh, yeah and this music, um, A Thousand Greetings, it's called, is old, is an old, it's an old piece I made back in 2016. Uh, that was. I had a project called Red Herring, which was. Um, and that was back when I was switching, because I used to just write music in MIDI. And then I was switching to like real instruments and stuff. So Red Herring was a music project that was basically just for me to learn how to record and mix and stuff like real instruments. So I was basically just like trying a bunch of stuff out. And this is uh, one of the ambient tracks that I made with that project. And so, so you see, you hear like, um, you hear birds singing in the background. And that was in, it might be. That was around when I was at my previous school, um, previous game design school, uh, before the latest one. I was, I I was having I was having a night when I just couldn't sleep because I was like fucking sick or something. I don't know, and I went out at like 5 a.m. Like a bit before everyone starts going to work, so it was like completely no one around. It was just me, but the sun was already up and there were birds singing everywhere. I was just like, oh, I'll just fucking I'll record the birds singing and then. 
Uh, that's how you get this like background to this music is just this like a uh, whole bunch of birds singing in the background of this music and and you can also if you listen carefully to like a standalone version you can also hear by footsteps footsteps as I'm walking around yeah and obviously there's the speakers here um, that are also playing bird sounds because the whole idea is obviously that this whole place is supposed to be like fake because a bunch of people are, like misunderstand that this is and they think that this is just a, like a bad skybox that's that's supposed to be real, but it's bad because of like the graphics being emulated PS1. But it's it's supposed to be fake, and that's why it has like this screen overlay now that makes it more clear that it's actually a screen. And just like a v, uh, it does like a VCR hum when you get close to it. But I think I'm gonna. I think we should. Uh, at some point, I think we're gonna go back and like I'm gonna have one of the models make like better trees, because again, these are these are supposed to be fake trees, but they again just people people tend to assume that they're, they're just badly made trees, which is you know understandable. So I think me me and like dog or Sam or something, I'm gonna go back here and try to figure out how to make them more impressively, like uh, more. Uh, accurately fake or something i don't know i have a question from before and mm. maybe mm, why do you go under a different name for your music making it was heaven piercer right and also mm -hmm. red herring i guess so yeah, that's because the question um that's from just like in general i i like to I like to have my music of like different types of music. I, I like to have like under different band, like artist names, so that it's sort of so that when when I release a new Heaven Piercer album, people will have a general idea of what it's gonna sound like. Like even though it's gonna be varied and stuff, people are at least gonna be like, okay, cool. And then because because there's like a annoying thing about with a lot of artists where it's like. Uh, you might be like, oh, finally, my favorite metal band is releasing a new album, and it's then it's just like hard rock, and it's like, well, that's fucking lame. So it's just like I wanted to divide my different projects in a way where you can sort of know where, when there's like, uh, when I release something, then it's like under separate names, so you know, it's something blah blah blah. But that's why, that's why also why White Hill soundtrack is credited as Akira instead of Heaven Piercer, because Akira was. What, what is the name that I use for my music that was I was making back when um, I was just doing like MIDI music and White Hell's music is all MIDI and stuff. But the reason, but like one of the main reasons I ended up going with the Heaven Piercer name was that because I actually had a couple fans uh, for my like Heaven Piercer music, like just like, I don't know, 10, 15 or something, people who actually liked my Heaven Piercer music. So I was thinking that I could get a little bit of extra attention to the game through having Heaven Piercer fans. But it, <laughs> it's kind of funny in a way, because it ended up being the complete opposite, where Ultra Kill's like, popularity completely overshadowed, like, it, it, like the fucking tiny, tiny amount of audience I had gotten with my music, so it ended up being kind of the opposite. <clears throat> yeah, um... Yeah, basically that. I just I just like having different names for different kinds of music so that people know what to expect, at least have a general idea. But I think from now on I'm mostly just gonna use Heaven Piercer as the name. Uh, as long as I'm just making stuff by myself, because it's kind of it's kind of stuck by now. And I think it's a pretty cool name. <clears throat> okay, I gotta sip again. Ah, uh, there's little bushes that are, there's just like a fucking square ass bushes that have little. Yeah, but it's been, yeah, this was like one dash one was like the part where I started really. Originally, this was the first area where I really started to like pay attention to the decoration because I really wanted it to sort of pop out as like a, as not being like an industrial nightmare but being like a nice place. So I had to put all these. I had to put all these pillars and trees and stuff to make these places not just be like an empty room. So this is sort of where more the decoration started and then I, I went back to Prelude to update the levels to have a bit more decoration to them as well. But this is just, I just added the malicious face here because 
I needed some more decoration. I just wanted. Uh, I didn't really have any. I said, ah, fucking, I'll just put a malicious face. And the reason there's a Cerberus here is just because it's supposed to be another, just like a joke where it's like, ah, oh, do you fucking dare wake up, you motherfucker. Yeah, and uh, this is another one, just one of those situations where it's just like. Um. Because the prelude is very direct, it's just like a point A to point B, so with Limbo I was trying to sort of fuse that with the sort of key card back and forth that like actual retro FPSs have. But I, I didn't I didn't want to do actual retro FPS spacing because that's way too slow for like ultra kill. So instead it's just like this kind of fusion where you have these key card hunts but they're a lot simplified and they're still very linear and direct. But it's sort of emulating, it's sort of supposed to give you uh, sort of flashbacks or just like emulating the general vibe of that. And this panel's a bit off color, so you can tell it's a fake. <clears throat> and yeah. I think in general, it's because the skulls add a lot to the level design of being able to do cool stuff with them. Is there any lower explanation in the game to why Limbo exists? Because it's fucking hell. Like, why do why do you think hell exists? Because because sinners have to be punished. Limbo is just one of the layers of hell. And this is the introduction of the drones and last like the whole like first section is really like calm because I wanted to give players some downtime after so much intensity with the prelude and especially after a really tough boss fight so it was just like a really calm and nice section and then coming here like it takes a fucking while before the first enemies until this level even appear oh yeah look at that you can, here, here you can see in effect the whole like uh, fact that there's only two level two rooms active like there's this one and this one now but when i go to this doors range it activates the second room and it disables that one <clears throat> and yeah, um, a thousand greetings from 2016, but this remix thing... This is about the time where I was like, okay, the sort of standard metal thing is gonna get real fucking boring. Um, if I just keep doing that, so this was a point where I was like, I need to start experimenting with different styles of music. So I was sort of... I don't really listen to electronic music a whole lot, so I don't know if it's good electronic, but... It's sort of... I just wanted to try... A completely electronic approach of just like I'll just take bits and pieces from a thousand greetings and I'll use to draw just aim and break drums and cut them up a whole bunch and do a sine wave for the bass and then that's like just those are the only ingredients I'm allowed to use for the song. And I'm doing a sort a sort of semi similar approach for um, five dash one, uh, the first wrath levels music. Yeah, here's another spot you used to be able to just clip through before crouching existed. Oh yeah, and, uh, and uh, some people don't realize, but also this water is supposed to be fake as well. That's why it's sort of, uh, you get the hologram, like you get the CRT scan lines here uh, as well. And uh, that's why it sort of stops there instead of being like actually filling up the space. That's also why you can't uh, bounce on the, like, um, skip on them with the slide and stuff. And the reason for that is just because... I didn't have, um, I didn't have actually water in the game. Like I haven't had scripted water until two three, which is sheer heart attack. So all the, so the just like I was just putting in this in as decoration, but then I after, even after I added the water, I decided to keep it this way because it makes more sense for Limbo to have like when the walls are fake and the sky is fake and the birds are fake, and the water should be fake as well. Uh, this is a fucking goofy hallway because this is just like oh well it's just a square well it's, well, it's a bit boring if it's just a square i'll put inside indents with torches in them <sighs> and this uh this is one of my like this is some this is a room that i was just like really proud of at the time to, to have like these cool stained glass windows and the lighting and stuff we should probably me and francis should probably go back here and just like because these are just like a public domain creative commons uh, stained glass window photos that I just pixelated. slide it. So we, me and friends should probably go back and like make actual unique art for a stained glass window so that it would be a bit more like interesting instead of lore and stuff. So you can probably pick those apart a bit more like we did with um, 
we updated to painting in 2 2 to be a 2 2 to be a fucking Minos, King Minos painting, so probably just some stuff here as well. <coughs> yeah, uh, nail gun, we just got the nail gun. The model is kind of iffy because this was like, again, this was FD's model, it was just like. Um, He's, he's not like a professional modeler, so it's just like, you know, just like, I was just like, hey, can you, can you do this uh, Jericho's design? And it's like, well, I can try, and then he, he did, and I think it's functional, it's fine, it's a, it's an okay model, but uh, the art style has evolved since then, I think that's, that's why we, we're designing to like redo, redo the models to be a bit more accurate to the current aesthetic, which is why, you know, the shotgun looks a lot better than the nail gun and the revolver now. <clears throat> but the nail gun's been a fucking pain in the ass to balance. Like even, even way before, like fucking uh, the, the prelude came out, I was just like constantly having to redo. I was constantly having to redo like the variations and stuff because uh, I was having a hard time finding a secondary fire that would actually fit the game and would feel good. Because fully automatic weapons are really hard to make feel good in a game like this. It was just like constant uh, back and forth having to... Because the first version was that the overheat would slow you down, but it would make you fire faster with like right click. But then it's like, well, it can't slow you down because that would go against the game. And then it's just like uh, it's just back and forth and it's so, so much fucking min-maxing and stuff. But I think it's finally, finally after, like I don't know, two years, it's finally be gotten its like place in the arsenal. I think it's good now. I think it's a nice place in terms of balancing and like a ro has a unique role to it. <sighs> mm. Oh yeah, someone in the someone in the chat mentions that maybe they could be stained glass windows could be virtuous, which is uh, I think that could be cool. I'll have to, yeah, we'll have to figure that out when I get in touch with Francis. But Francis right now is on vacation because the he's he's from Taiwan and they celebrate New Year in at the start of February. Just like this was just like one of those where it's like. Yeah, the yeah, it's like the levels are starting to become less like a point A to point B, where it's just now, because because uh, now you're going like you're going one way and then you're coming back another way and just like circling around the level and stuff has changed and because <clears throat> I th yeah, it 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 helps add a bit more variety because if the game was just like direct uh, hallways and rooms like in um in Prelude, that would get tiring after a while. The prelude, this room used to have a third way, which is uh, just a malicious face, I think. Just a single malicious face at the center of the room. But that was never intended to be this level in the first place. And that was only that was only added to the demo because it felt really anticlimactic to have the last arena of the demo just be like a bunch of drones. And that's why we added the extra malicious face to have a kind of semi-boss fight. And also... Uh, the hideous mask that was added as a tease at the end of the demos was also never supposed to be in this level and was only only there because we wanted to have a tease at the end of the demo like a good old good old cliffhanger that would make you hopefully want to play buy the game instead of being satisfied with with just the demo and we, here we have this these uh secret limbo switches and yeah, this area isn't this area isn't properly marked as outdoors, so your revolver like your weapons, your V models are all black because the game thinks there's no lighting because there isn't a trigger here to tell the player that you're outdoors, which would change your layers in a way that would make the outdoor lights affect you. Because the way that works is um 
Ultra Kill doesn't actually have like have like a the like instead of just having like a instead of actually having to calculate which places the light can reach and which it can't, like the outdoor light, it's just manually set that like these four surfaces are outdoors, these surfaces are not outdoors, and then like light always applies to all outdoor textures regardless of where they are or which they which direction they're facing, which helps performance. And also just like makes things a lot simpler since there's no shadows and stuff in Ultra Kill. Is the demo going to be updated? Probably not. It's just at this point it's it's really not worth it to go back and try to make all the demo specific stuff work again. We might at like when we're mostly done with the game, but it's unlikely. Because I think it's already like the demo is already as the, as it is is already a pretty good representation of what the game currently is. So there you can see the hell map. That's um, that was Robert's idea, and I think it's great. I think it adds a lot and helps helps the uh, player keep track of the structure of the game. So you can just take the overheat here. <clears throat> Enemies. Oh yeah, and in this build, um, just recently, just last night actually, um, a V2 second encounter now has a separate enemy entry because he, a lot of people are having um, trouble with uh, V2 second encounter and there's no like specific tips to that because the problem is you can't just put the second encounter tips to the first encounter's enemy data entry because that would spoil the second encounter. So I just ended up uh, just last night. I added like a new, a new um, data entry for uh, V2 second encounter. Oh yeah, and if you did, if you somehow there was a big. Now don't worry, Peter's not asleep. It's just that I'm talking all the time, so he doesn't. Unless Peter is asleep. Yeah. No, no, I am... No, I'm not. Yeah. Yeah, mostly P Peter's mostly here for moral support and just to make sure there's chat messages and stuff that I don't miss or things that I forget to talk about. But, mm -hmm. um... Yeah, um, there, w there used to be a big problem where people would keep missing the nail gun in the previous level. So what happens is if you don't pick up the nail gun in the previous level, it actually appears here. So it's like it's really obvious, just like you walk in and it's like directly in front of you. So it's basically impossible to miss this time around. You technically can, which is good because there's people who die, like to do like weaponless runs. So it's good that you can technically skip all weapons, but it's just like making sure that people don't do that accidentally. And yeah, this is one of the... This is around when I started changing my way of doing level design. It's just like I, I decided I'm just gonna uh, with this room. I was just like I'm gonna make uh, like a cool um, complex arena, and just then I'm just gonna just figure out the enemies afterwards. So I was just like trying out different ways of doing arenas and stuff, so to make sure that the game games game wouldn't get repetitive by just having every arena be feel similar. And then the whole idea of just like you're supposed to platform around the entire entire room in order to get up to the up to the balcony here. <coughs> and some good old good old enemy rushy play, a prelude type encounter. Yeah, like at, the, at this point I was just like, I was starting to feel like players probably um, comfortable enough with the movement and stuff that I can start putting really cramped or like really tricky arenas in the game. So there's stuff like this where it's like really, there's, there's really not much this much space to like get around and run away from enemies unless you know how to like dash and stuff properly. Can you make the update models and old weapons be interchangeable? No, fuck you. Never. 
you have to, if, if you want if you want the old models to learn to how to fucking mod the game. <laughs> like I understand, I understand people don't want change, but it was a bit there was a bunch of people who were saying the same thing about the old filth models and stuff. And like as soon as we actually updated the game to include the new models, people stopped talking about the old models because they get used to the new models and realize they're obviously way better. Yeah, here's a. Yes, the here's a good old fun secret. Um, this one used to be different because so this is a bit of a. Actually, I'm just gonna I'm gonna not talk about it. Either. I'm just gonna because we have to circle around anyway. So I'm gonna do that the other way around instead of stopping here right now. But and here's a. Oh yeah, and these these are actually. Uh, because the li like this is about about the time where I was like, well, I have dynamic lights. I better actually get make use of them instead of uh, just basically using them as baked lights. So I was just like starting to make lights that actually have physics and stuff, so they're moving around to make the make the lights like like make use of them being dynamic and stuff. So it's actually like stuff. And at some point, I had the idea that you could make be shoot the lanterns down to like burn enemies, but. It wouldn't really be very effective, and I just ended up never getting around to it. And here's the music cuts out, and this is supposed to be like a build up to the street cleaners. But yeah, here's what Peter mentioned earlier. Here's the these are the old models, like the old models for the enemies. You can see there's, there's the old filth. There's this sort of brown orange zombie dude, and then the strays are pink skeleton. Zombie dudes and schisms are grey. Zombie dudes with a metal arm. And it's all they're all they're all basically just variations of this base model. Um this uh, base zombie model that Tony made. And uh yeah. Basically yeah, that was just basically the same, took the same model but just uh, extended the jaw and then squished the torso and stuff to make them a bit more unique. So it's it's not very good models, but obviously people like when we originally announced we were gonna update the models, some people were like, but I like the old models and it's like nah. Nah you nah nah. You're just gonna have to deal with them. But I just still wanted to leave them here because I think it's a fun easter egg to still have them in the game somewhere. Is it true that something wicked is another version of that model? Yes, it's. Um, I think it's also the some something wicked is the only enemy in the game anymore that uses an animation that wasn't made by me, because that was Tony's original um, animation, like walk animation for the zombies was the one that something wicked uses. Because uh, he was he was like he, he did some animations back then, but I've seen I've seen just like I was just like oh, fuck it I'll just do all the animations myself. Good old street cleaners. Is Jericho's design and honestly just one of the coolest designs ever. <laughs> uh, yeah, the idea was just like to kind of have like, like this World War Two flamethrower guy, but do him like as a as a robot. And origin one of the earlier iterations of the design he actually had like a security camera for a head which i thought was really cool but we ended up not going with that because this sort of a nuzzle thing worked uh, sort of better in terms of visual design i think ah oh. oh boy I hope this, I hope this, this, none of this stream is fucking disgusting. Anyway. Ah, uh, this one fucking... This is funny because the flames are just like upscaled uh, small flames. Because I, I was just like, I'm not gonna get a new flame animation just for this one section. So there's still like really goofy giant flames. It's like whatever, it gets the point across. So I think it's good enough. Oh yeah, and the music here. Um... I had to do a couple iterations on this as well, but this is just like... I always like doing really weird experimental stuff, so I was just really... I, uh, yeah, I, wa I wanted to sort of get... I wanted to get sort of ultra kill... Yeah, I wanted to sort of 
um, have also kill have a whole bunch of like really weird music like a whole bunch of variety with like experimental music and stuff to hopefully hopefully work as a sort of um, entry for like a gateway for a lot of people into these weird genres and stuff so there's a bunch of noise and weird dark ambient and stuff and such yeah and the, another cool detail is there's like little embers that are rising they're supposed, they're supposed to sort of get the feeling across that the like, actual place is actually burning us really hard and stuff. But if you look closely, these are actually really small parry flashes. Like the little flashes the enemy do, enemies do before a parryable attack. Because that's basically my go-to when I just need like little environmental particle effects. I usually just use really small particle, like the parry flashes. And this is a fun... It is a fun um, encounter because I had to I had to program that in a way where uh, because early on I, like at this point in limbo I was thinking like I wanted street cleaners to be like so that they don't actually teleport in at any point and they're always just like hiding in the level somewhere. But like uh, event, I, I have just some way into one three. I just gave up on that because I realized that, that what that would actually mean is just like having a breakable wall in every single arena to have street cleaners coming, which would just be really repetitive and boring. So I just decided it's not wor worth the work to have something that's boring. So I'll just have them teleport in. But this is sort of there's some leftovers of that original idea. So you can see the breakable walls that they will come through, and you can actually break them early. To make the street cleaner spawn early if you want. Yeah. And here's some reused um, for the for like, for like the sort of back rooms of the limbo. It's just reusing prelude textures because it's like, why make new metal textures when you already have decent ones, even though they're super fucking JPEG compressed. <laughs> And here as well, you can see the sort of back rooms of like the limbo. And here's one of my favorite tracks of the game. A complete another destruction of the senses. That's like a full on noise track. Just turn it up for a bit. Yeah, this is a. This is like, I wanted this to be a really fun surprise to be able to just like. Uh, get to fight the Cerberus early and like as a surprise because you can see there's a, there was a Cerberus there but then when you go back up it's, it has gotten up and it's no longer there and from here you can see the the little uh, aqueduct canal thing where very cancerous rodent is and you can already see the like the little gap like the little spot here from where the switch is the second limbo switch Did I change the volume or whatever? You could usually hear the music and it's loud enough. Yeah. This is probably the most hidden one of all the limbo switches because you have to like do this breakable wall that's in a tiny ass corner over here. And then you can see from here you can see the that spot and then you can see the switch from here. And then you get the CV CV dungeon thing. It's like uh, when I when I actually <laughs> Uh, you can cut out the music. Um, yeah, when I was just, I was just basically just doing this by eye. I was just like, in an afternoon, I was just like, hey, I'll, I'll just do the. I'll, I was just like, op I just opened up the CV dungeon intro and I just did like, just copied like a general. A general, uh, try to get look about right. So it's just like these these doors also don't have a collision. I don't remember why. Yeah, just like and these these are just black walls because I don't. I think they're just black walls in the actual intro. Yeah, after after I showed it to CV after it was done, it was just like I could have just given you the Doom map. For, so that you could copy it into into like Unity or something. I was just like, nah, but that would that would ruin the that would ruin the surprise for you. Like, oh my god! And my favorite thing about Cancer Rodin is just that that's fucking going nuts if you just stand still. 
And I think, yeah, he doesn't get hit by coins and just like, oh. My favorite is always seeing clips of like streamers who are like come here and then the door breaks and like, oh my god, what, what? And then they don't see it and it's like, what? Did it bug? And then they see like the tiny, tiny fucking rat just slowly moving towards them. I think it's fucking wonderful. And obviously these tubes are just way too fucking huge for it. And that's, it's always fun. Oh yeah, and this the very cancer rolling is funny because you can literally just stand in front of it and it'll kill itself. Like this. You don't take damage from it because of like uh, explosion, uh, ray cast, uh, calculations and stuff. So it takes a fucking while, but you can technically just stand still and have it kill itself. I'm not gonna do that because you can just and also it's weak to ground slams, so you can you can just stomp it out, which I think is funny. And obviously these chips are also way too fucking huge, but there's like one eyeball, two eyeball, three eyeball, four eyeball, five eyeball. So it was just like fucking, I was doing the most fucking ridiculous stuff that I could think of. I was just like, ah, do fucking five eyeballs for him just for fun. So that was like, that was like a really fun thing in like old Mortal Kombat games is used to be just like... Uh, dudes would just explode into like 17 rib cages and stuff. <sighs> so yeah, um, the music, complete other, another destruction of the senses, is um, this was sort of originally wasn't in the like in the in the original version of this level there wasn't any music here outside of just like the previous street cleaner music which is just like the omnia summoner and stuff but it felt really weird to have like a big arena like this with no actual music in it so i was just like okay well it's just gonna be music for like a single arena and it never used again so i was just like i just decided i could go like really out there with it so even even if people hate it, it'll only appear in like one room, so it's fine. So that's why that's why I really went as hard and weird with the with the song as I did, and I just wanted to go like I wanted to make it as intense as possible and just like really industrial and noisy and stuff. And it's kind of based on the idea that I got from like the Silent Hill games because something that I noticed is that Silent Hill is one of those games where people um, pe people often list Silent Hill as like one of their favorite game soundtracks, even though it's like music they would normally never listen to. But it works because like it it works for them because of the context that it's in. So it's like sort of coming to the idea that yeah, people are a lot more accepting of really weird music as long as it's not the focus for them. So. So it's sort of, that's why that's why I was like, okay, well I can go really weird with ultra calm music because they're not focusing on the music, they're focusing on the action, which then makes them more. I guess you could even go say you could even say that it makes them more susceptible to the weird music and makes them more accepting of it. Oh yeah, I forgot to talk about the fucking. I mean, restart the level real quick because I forgot to talk about the goofy ass secret. I'll just. Um teleport in and all. So, the thing about um, the secret, um, the one that you need to use, to use the rail cannon for, that's like, that's up here. If I just like spawn this area in, it's up here, uh, like it's right above, and then you come in here and you shoot the rail cannon and you get down here. So originally it was a bit of a different position, because it actually, instead of like a rail cannon secret, he was actually, there was a little gap here, and you could slide under it, which would take you here, and this is right above here. So if you, if you ever wondered why there's like a little alcove in here, that's that's why, because you used to be able to slide in here. But the problem was that that would cause... <coughs> problem was that that would cause people to accidentally uh, skip to the se uh, street cleaner se section. I didn't really want that to happen because I thought it was a really cool section. So then that's why I removed it from there. I removed this this like little bit and may instead made it so that uh, you have to be able to, you have to use the 
rail cannon in order to get be able to get through it so that you're at least forced to go through the level normally once yeah have we got any any questions Mm. I don't see anything interesting. Hmm. Let me check the ones that I've screenshotted. Uh, maybe this one? I have a screenshot of this one. How did you come up with the Marksman revolver? Maybe. Yeah, there's a... I did a... I think it was under, um, under the blue sky or something. That was... I did an interview where I explained the whole thing, but it's kind of... I guess I could do a long story short. Is uh, <clears throat> it's the early version, early version of the alternate revolver, like, well, not alternate, but the second variation of the revolver was that it would like bounce off wall. when you shot at the wall, it would like bounce off it, and uh, like in the direction that you shot at and stuff. So, um, no, that was kind of uh, that was really unwieldy. It was really awkward to use, but the idea of having ricochet was cool, but. Basically, just what what it ever ended up being it was just like if you have an enemy in front of you, you don't, instead of like doing some cool six shots, you would just like shoot at the ground in front of them so that it would bounce off the ground and immediately hit the enemy and stuff. So that yeah, that was just like not very good. <laughs> so instead, I instead I decided to just like I wanted to still keep the ricochet idea, and I was thinking of like. Uh, so it was, um, then I was just like thinking of like um, something else that I was thinking of at the time was um, in in Vanquish there's a thing where you can throw a grenade and then you can shoot it out the air and it like explodes out the air and I was just thinking you know there's there's something there like what if I could just like throw something and just shoot it and have something to happen with the revolver and then those sort of ideas came together that maybe you, sh you could throw something and shoot it and then it would ricochet and uh, like automatically aim at the enemy instead of having to actually like aim the ricochet because that's impossible to do on the fly. So then uh, I was just like okay well what's the thing gonna be and then I was like well the thing that people always use for in like cowboy movies and stuff what they used for like showing off how accurate they are with their gun is they shoot coins out of the, coins out of the air and then it's like well and there you go, it's like three uh, three things just like all coming in together at the same time. Basically. Oh yeah, this is this is like the uh one three, the music here, Castlevania. That, this is like where I actually finally figured out what direction I wanna go with ultra close music. Because I was like experimenting with different styles with like one 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 and one two and like prelude and stuff, and there's this was like I wanted to do a sort of Castlevania homage parody track, and then I was like, then I was like, oh, this is like a, it actually fits really well with this over-the-top action kind of stuff. And then I was, then I was sort of, as I went forward, I just kept sort of uh, trying to combine particularly um, Castlevania's music and like, uh, like or the original Rise of the Triads music and stuff like that so that has really like strong melodic momentum and focus and stuff and trying to sort of combine that with some sort of industrial and metal stuff that you, you usually get in like in uh, modern retro pieces and stuff. Yeah, you can you can still see like remnants of back when street cleaners used to not teleport in. Is they would like have little things here and there that would they would they would uh, like they would drop through these and every, in this level um, the blue route which is this route I had to make basically two versions of most of these rooms encounters so that they would make sense regardless of which direction you're going through so that like when when you're coming through here. The street cleaner drops there, and then the two schisms spawn there. But when you come in, in through here, the street cleaner drops in from there, and the two schisms are on the sides there. So it's sort of trying to having to make it, having to make two versions of rooms in order to make it so that they all flow naturally, regardless of which direction you're coming in from. <coughs> and yeah, obviously dusk soap. 
reference this to soap in dusk because it's funny and you insta kill anything by just throwing a soap at it. This actually is the same model and texture from dusk and this is the same like I don't, no, actually no it's not the same bubbles but it's a uh, it's dry it's a very similar kind of so that it's supposed to look the same. And this is another mm -hmm. Hmm? Maybe a question, but yeah, go for it. What is your favorite lever level that you have designed so far? Mm. I guess like two, three. I like two, three a lot. That's like a really fun, like constant. That's like that's like one of those levels where it actually really came together, where you're like constantly weaving in and out of previous passages and stuff. So even though it's kind of confusing for first-time players, I think it's really cool. But I also really just like because of how much variety there is in the levels and like both the visuals and sort of the structures they take. Uh, they're sort of uh, I think they're all like different enough that uh, I can enjoy all of them in a different way. Like, I really like um, the second and third levels of Wrath so far. Even though neither of them are, like, finished. <clears throat> oh. oh, yeah, I'm already exhausted from talking. <laughs> I, I wasn't why... talking that much and I'm ex exhausted as well. <laughs> I'm exhausted from listening to me talk. <laughs> so this is just like another room that I really like because it's like it used to be a bit more boring, but then I realized I could add these little like alcove things, and then it immediately spiced up the otherwise square room a lot. And again, you can just like if you look closely, you can see the embers rising up. They're just parry flashes, really small parry flashes. And again, this is another room where yeah. When you come in from this direction, the enemy spawn there, but when you come in from the other direction, the enemy spawn on the other side of the room to make sure it's always always feels natural. And this is one of those tricky rooms because people people who are trying to get P ranks often forget that they all about all these encounters, so they'll accidentally skip them and then Wonder why they never get S ranks for, this, for kills, so. I don't know, maybe there's like a. Maybe I should redesign them in some way. But whatever, it's not really that big a deal. And yeah, this is always. This is this was always a plan uh, for to have these sort of. Because this is a really long level, but I wanted to have speedrun so that they could just like. I thought it would be really cool to just let them like skip through almost the whole level by just coming in from like the start and then jumping in and then down this shaft getting the blow skull and then up and then immediately being able to fight the hideous mass boss fight. And this is, uh, I think this is around when I realized how much fun it is to have um, this encounter in particular was when I started to realize how much fun it is to have like multiple enemy types in like one fight because it's really fun to just have have like the Cerberus here and then have him completely crush all the filth that are running around with either like ground slam or the tackle because originally ultra kill was like I was planning to make ultra kill more of a so that, so that there's less enemies but they're more dangerous but then as I was sort of making ultra kill and I was Making all these levels and going through them, I was realizing that Ultra Kills are, is at its most fun, where it's really like chaotic with a ton of enemies and stuff. So then, uh, then I was just like leaning more into that. So the enemies are all like very simple and they're easy to keep track of and easy to take on in like in uh, in like a one-on-one -on -one thing. But they they sort of. Uh, so that they're sort of more dangerous in groups, and that so you can have a ton of them at the same time. Christ, I'm completely losing my train of thought already. Oh my god, I went a bit higher than I expected, but that's fine. Yeah. 
I guess we I guess it could do the um well the secret encounter as well. Someone is asking what's your cyber grind high score? I don't know. I don't really play cyber Good grind. Because you know there's there like there isn't really much drive to be playing uh, an endless survival mode for a game that you've already played for like thousands or dozens of hours. And it's like I already play a fucking shit ton of this game when I do like testing and stuff, so there really isn't. <clears throat> I really don't feel much reason to try to grind out the high score or something. Same for me as well. Yeah. Yeah, this is more like when I I was really figuring out how to do fun arenas in my opinion. What's all this like? There's a bunch of different elevations and there's a bunch of stuff to like dash and jump around. It's obviously it's not very good for the enemies since they can't like jump up or across the ledges yet. Hopefully after the enemy AI rework once we eventually get around to finishing that, but it's it's very difficult so far and it's, Mind out. It might, yeah, the enemy eye update might not actually be like done before Act 2, considering how difficult it's been. So we're probably... Um, spoilers for the next update, we're probably gonna ha hopefully have some time, either this month or next month, we're gonna have the update that's gonna include the... The, um, the uh, new alt weapon, as well as all the like... Uh, all the, um, the new... The, Fucking screwdriver tech, and it's gonna have all the controller support stuff and stuff like that. So that's gonna be probably separate from the enemy AI rework because that's it's gonna be in a huge issue to try to figure out a way to carry over my old code functions into a completely new code base kind of thing. Peter can complain about it more. See, this is why it's good to have a programmer who's better than me, so I can just make him do all the hard work. I'm, I'm still considering just ripping off, ripping off my CPU and never using, a, never using a computer again. Mm. <laughs> yeah. How's the controller support it going to be updated? Uh, basically just like uh, all the menus are usable with the controller, um, all the like tutorial messages and stuff, and everything that includes an input is also gonna be able to display controller inputs and stuff instead of just keyboard inputs. And we're also gonna wanna do um, input rebinding for controller, but that's not gonna be in the next update yet, because that's another huge fucking undertaking to make it actually work properly. And also, I wanted to, I want to I want to update the auto aim to actually be able to aim at like core reject grenades and coins, so that controller players can actually use those because they're just like really cool. And it's kind of a shame that even though even though it might actually make those tech kind of cheaper in a way, um, I think it's more important that people can actually have fun and feel cool than it is for that kind of tech tech for it to be like difficult to pull off. And this this pod, uh, this room is actually kind of fun because this is a. Uh, this was kind of two separate rooms that I just slammed together. Like this sort of. Um, you can see this whole area down here is kind of symmetrical, from like this side to about here, and then I just started making this up. Like I was like, oh, this is a very cool room, but I can probably make it bigger and more expansive in a way that would like fit the red skull path because the red skull path is all about open arenas, like big arenas. So, you know, then I just like start I continue just like expanding. So it kind of feels like it's two different rooms that I'll just like slam together. And then uh, people were originally not like uh, figuring out that you have to like walk back. You go 
the same route that you came in because it's very unintuitive. So that's why I just added like this little hole that you can go through to like go back to the school, uh, blue skull bath, uh, path. But it's like and obviously it doesn't make any sense geographically and geometrically. It's because it's just teleports. So it's kind of a cheat, but I think it's more important for it to be like fluid for um, gameplay than it is for it to actually make sense. And here you can see is a kind of um, leftover. As you can see, there's a blue light here and a red light here. Is uh, because the pedestals actually used to mm, they used to actually be different pedestals here for opening this door. Because this door didn't actually open. It, it wasn't a door originally. It was just like a illusory wall you could jump through, and then you'd have the pedestals here. But then I decided to just streamline it. By just having it so that the putting the skulls here actually opens this door and then this is unlocked so that you don't have to keep putting the skulls back and forth. Yeah, this is one of the one of the I think best secret encounters in the game right now. Just because it's fun it's fun to fight multiple source machines at the same time. And they have this they have this fun gimmick which is like uh, th this is from uh, the fucking 2018 God of War. Was I took this idea? I mean, I mean, the, obviously the fight is a fucking DMC Agni and Ruder reference, but like the idea that they have this sort of health system where you have to be uh, kill both of them uh, near near each other. Because if if you just focus on one of them, which is what you would normally do in a dual boss fight, if you just focus on one of them, then then it'll just heal back up to whatever health the other one has. So that was that was something that they did in God of War 2018, which is one of the rare things that's really popped out. It's like really cool in that game to me, and that's what I wanted to do in order to like have it so that you actually always have to fight the both of them instead of making the fight more boring for yourself. Because another different solution to the same problem was the Cerberus fight. It's like when you when you kill one of them, then other like originally the fight would get a lot more boring. Since there was only one of them left, which is why I added the enrage mode, so that when you kill one of them, the last one actually gets more dangerous, so that the tension of the fight stays high, even though you've already killed one of them. Can we uh, just... Uh, no, okay. And here's the in, um, hideous masses arms, like the arm blades, you can see it's the um, creation of Adam. There's Adam and there's God, and they're pointing, they're almost touching fingers, and then... The hideous mass rips them apart by pulling his arms aside. Because it's 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 symbolismic. It's symbolismatic. Yeah. And a lot of people have trouble with the hideous mass because of his harpoon and stuff, but I think like the hideous mass was always designed to be an easier boss fight, but I ended up not making it much easier because people have a lot of travel figuring out the whole weak point system. But it was supposed to be like a moment where you're like, oh, I'm finally good at the game. Like, I, I just beat, beat that boss, no problem. And then you go and then the next level is just beat you and you get your fucking ass handed to you. <sighs> and there's actually, fun fact is this level actually has two music start triggers. Um. Because <clears throat> um, when you when you open the door, there's I think it's five seconds until the music starts. Because because in case you let's up here and like whoa what like the atmosphere has completely changed and then it takes a bit for the music to start, so it's kind of a delayed impact. And <clears throat> but then um, in, for people who just like run through anyway, it felt really awkward to run through this room in silence so i added a second trigger like here where if you if you run past this spot before the music has started then it'll just start anyway one of the early while i was still making this level this spot actually had an enemy encounter where one of these servers would wake up and then a malicious face would spawn here which i thought was a cool encounter but obviously it just completely ruins like the mood of this level so I took it out like even very early in the level's development because it's just way way better just have the complete level be like completely peaceful and quiet <clears throat> yeah 
this whole thing is supposed to be like a huge change of pace to just like because the uh, like the like the issue was in, in just like you because uh, because uh, Hideous Mass didn't fit in one two, I had to put him in one three, which meant that you would have a boss, and then you would immediately have a second boss in a row, which I obviously don't want. So I <clears throat> so I decided to like. Um, uh, I wanted to have like a whole fairly long break between the two boss fights in, so that it doesn't get like exhausting and tiring to just have, like people would probably just stop playing if they just had to do two bosses in a row especially when V2 is so much harder so I wanted to have an extended break just like complete peace which is why this goes into like a like a peaceful um, just like a puzzle section where you just explore, explore and try to find the skulls and stuff well, it's just like Clay de Lune in the background. Um, I uh, I was originally I was thinking I was thinking in either Clay de Lune or Moonlight Sonata for uh, the first movement, but uh, Moonlight Sonata is more overused than Clay de Lune, and as, 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 like I think you can if you if you just go through this level and you go to like. You can imagine if you go in through here in silence and then you open this door and Moonlight Sonata starts playing. It would just be like a completely different atmosphere, which all would be also be really cool, but I think Clay de Lune ended up fitting the mood better. <clears throat> yeah, and here you have the book here. Because this is like the first like actual like text dump in the game, because this is supposed to be like at, this is supposed to be uh, sort of the moment where it starts to click in the place that Ultra Kill isn't just like shooty bang game, dumb uh, or blood, like dumb blood gore fest. It's supposed to like there's more going on than just like what meets more, more than meets the eye kind of thing. So they so you have this whole like uh, text that was this was written by Jacob Roy, and it sort of gives it sort of builds up Gabriel a bit. And it gives some hints to where the skulls are, where you have uh, amongst the furnishings, books, because there's a bookshelf behind, with the skull behind it, and the very foundation of the accursed place, which is the floor uh, floorboards in the diner. And here you have... There's actually four... The, yeah, I, uh, this level has four skulls. Because um, I want to make sure that players don't get stuck looking for the final skull, so that there's actually four skulls, so even though you only need three. And then, I remember if it was my idea, I think it was my idea, I was just like, hey, what if you could just put the fucking skull on the skeleton, it would be funny. And then we made that a Hank reference, because Hank, Hank is a QA guy at New Blood, and he really likes skeletons, so I wanted to just look like a reference for him. It doesn't, yeah, like, like it's like it says, it doesn't actually do anything. But like the whole like, um, does it? Does the message happen again? Yeah, nothing happens. Do you feel a strange satisfaction inside the enemy tank? Because it was sort of that's a sort of. And I think people just like sort of anthropomorphizing things that they create in a way where it's, and a sort of I don't know. Yeah, you can do this whole section, but obviously I wanted a way that people who replay don't need to do all the skull searching if they don't want to, so you can just shoot out the window and just skip the whole section and get to the boss quickly. But before we do that... Yeah, just little little small details, like the Cerberuses in this level have white balls instead of uh, orange balls, because the orange balls kind of stuck out in the color scheme of this level, so... I just switched them to white so that they fit the sort of, sort of blue, white, and cold color scheme of the level. And, and there's a whole bunch of like these small um, environmental storytelling so stuff like there's this little mirror that's been shattered and uh, there's some blood on it because Hank was obviously not, not in a very, very good place mentally when he was starting to realize that Gabriel was never coming to save him. And he has like it's really long table that only has like the one lay one, one one like plate and chair and work and knife for the like just just to show like how the punishment of limbo is basically just being like driven to insanity in isolation so this table being really long is supposed to emphasize how how he's completely alone yeah
Yeah. Roll fight time. And V2 is obviously like... Is supposed to be like a... Like people often complain that like V2 is a huge... Um, a difficulty spike and he's all he's completely like that's completely on purpose because it's supposed to be like a because the way way I see it is him being difficult makes him more makes him stand out makes him feel more important and stuff because I wanted this to be like a another like big moment of like memorable boss fight but then <laughs> then the issue ended up being that people because the funny thing is the uh, bow that he does at the start of so this was supposed to, like the whole V2, V2 never had anything to do with the story. He was always just completely purely for um, gameplay purposes. So, so like, uh, I just originally had him come in and he did like a thing where he landed and then he just rose up slowly. But um, as I think it was Sam or something, it was just like, it feels a bit lame. That he just rises up so slowly, so I made it so okay. So he rises up slowly, and I'll give him a bit of character by having him bow at you. And that is just like I had no idea it would be. It would be way too effective at making people like V2. So then suddenly V2 became like the most fan favorite character. And it's like oh no, people people are so attached to V2, even though he has like zero story importance. So <laughs> then I then I had to make it very clear. Like people were starting to like think like oh my god, V2. He's gonna come in at the end and he's gonna assist V1 to kill Gabriel and it's like no. It's like no, I, I, it's just gonna be an issue if people expect something like that. So then I was just I had to make it in um, 4 4. I had to make it very clear that V like it, it, V2, because V2 dies very very early on in the story that it's like a very obvious like he doesn't he's not it's not a story about him he's not relevant to the story. And it, and I had to make it very clear that he, he's fucking completely fucking dead and isn't gonna come back last second. Which st some people still are like, oh, there's still a... He, here's how V2 can still come back. It's like, nah, dude, he's fucking dead. He just he just became a fucking stain on the floor. Oh yeah, and fun fact, the um, ceiling in this arena is just the floor upside down. <laughs> because, yeah, I think it looks cool. It makes no sense, but whatever, it looks cool. <clears throat> yeah, um, is there anything else to talk about V2? Not really. I guess it's just that um, a lot of people don't realize the uh, wing colors are showing the movement pattern that he's using. Because red, red wings means that he's running to, he's gonna like advance towards the player. While a green wings mean that he's running away from the player, blue means he's circling around the player, while yellow means he's just like he picks a direction and just goes into it until he runs into something. So it's sort of just showing different behaviors so you can get a general idea of what he's up to. And yeah, and the general idea with the B2 is also the first enemy the first boss to have a secondary bar. Because he has the patience meter, which is um, if you stay away from B2, he'll run out of patience, he'll start moving faster and he'll start using revolver sh charge shots without having to wait for the cooldown between them and stuff like that. And that was basically just to stop people from playing like cowards. Because in like early builds that I sent to like some people, they were like, just like, they were chasing V2 by just like playing hide and seek like this and then taking pot shots and I thought that was really lame so I wanted to give him a way to just like make it so that people um, have reason to be more of a like a back and forth instead of a, just like always chasing or always on the run <clears throat> here we get the knock here you get the knuckle blaster which is um it's a reference to a manga called blaster knuckle hence the name but it's it was it's like a it was a uh, it was a dumbass manga that was um, created. I think it was completely just created to capitalize on Berserk's fame back in like the nineties. It was basically it has the most ridiculous fucking premise because it's a it's a black guy in like the Wild West fighting 
KKK werewolf vampires, and he has a he has an arm brace that's like that shoots shotgun brace shotgun shells when he punches people with them. And it's like it was cancelled after two volumes. It's just like a complete dead end story. It makes no sense, but it's just like oh, that was like the coolest fucking. It's like the coolest fucking idea. I have to put that in the game. So that's where I that's where I got the knuckle blasters idea. <sighs> oh boy, lost. I'm gonna dig a fucking sip. Jesus Christ. Is there any questions? Nothing interesting. I, I think so. We had multiple people asking before <laughs> if V1 and V2. Oh, is, is V1 a male or a female? Akita, answer. Ah, they're ne they don't know. they don't have gender. They're robots. No, but you you have to you know. You know. No, it's very much on purpose that but it's there are very few characters in Ultra Kill that have any defined gender because just because gender is such a human thing and this is such a story that's like completely unrelated to humans. Well, it's not completely unrelated, but it's like humans don't really pay a part of it, and I think it's lame when people take characters like robots and basically just make them humans that don't look like humans. So I wanted to emphasize more like the differences between actual robots and humans in a way where it's like, well, they don't have gender because that's just like they don't need they, There's really no need for machines to have gender. So even even in terms of like, even in terms of like mind flayers, which are like, even though they explicitly look female, that's just because they like that. That's more. That's more just because they like prefer that kind of aesthetic instead of just being like these are actual girls or these actual male or whatever. It's just like a personal preference of what kind of visual aesthetic they prefer for a body. Oh, yeah, there's one. Uh, did Hakira try to make the mind flayers hot? Yes, absolutely. Because the whole thing is they're supposed to be a kind of succubus equivalent. Because obviously, I don't just want to do an actual succubus because those are fucking lame. But the idea of just like because they're in the last layer, so I just wanted to like well we have a last layer obviously we have to have some kind of succubus so instead of just doing like a lame ass fucking hot demon girl I just wanted to like hey what if we make like a weird combination of like a uh, sort of sexualized female caricature but like make it all like weird and robot and kind of off putting and obviously just. People are so intensely horny that apparently V1 is hotter than Mind Flayer, which is fine. Whatever. I good, good, good on ya. <clears throat> and this is like a, this whole area of like last I was thinking like it was around the time where I was thinking like Ultra Kill has a lot of like these cool movement options, but there isn't really. A lot of platforming, which is obviously because uh, it's it's tough to co do combat and platforming at the same time. So I wanted to the bridge burn, especially. I wanted to have way more verticality, so I would have to do platforming and stuff more and engage with the wall jumps and the dashes and stuff. And the um, the um, music here. I'm just gonna turn up the volume a bit. Yeah, the music here is like this ambient droning, very faint kind of droning track, and that's actually a very stretched out version of um, yeah, what the fuck is it? So, uh, so real the real, or however it's however it's supposed to be pronounced. Like, I can't even speak fucking English. Do you think I can speak fucking French? But it's um, um, it's an old piece, another one of those public domain. Um, old, old style pieces, and it's uh, it's also used in two dash four. It's just different stretched out version of it in two dash four in the in the presence of the king, which is before um, the fight against uh, the corpse of uh, corpse of Minos, and also it's obviously used in the in, in its actual form. It's used in um, P one um, in the spinal staircase. Yeah, and this is like one of my favorite reveals in the game. It's just because like the whole like the, like these these interiors use 
on purpose these interiors just use um, prelude textures because it's supposed to be like uh, I didn't want to reveal my hand yet so it's just like completely interiors very monochromatic monochromatic again like very um, desaturated almost gray colors and then and then you come in here and just like a uh, jump pad and just a boom and it's a whoa suddenly get really vibrant pink and light blue so it's just like this because because it, it's like this is like the actual the first actual outdoor section of the game so I wanted to really pop and I wanted to introduction to because that's one of my that's something I always want is like having each theme have a really strong introduction so like uh, Limbo obviously has to like you go from like orange monochrome to really vibrant like blue sky and green grass and stuff and here you go from like a monochromatic grayish blue to like this vibrant pink and blue and then Glutton is just like a fucking punch in the face with the ominous music and, uh, and the uh, flesh and writhing flesh in the mouth and door and stuff and Greed has the big, big, big like pyramid with the choir kicking in and uh, and here's the here's the little trap trap door break thing and um, <coughs> uh, fucking and uh, Wrath has like the thing where you we're just going through quiet caves that are a bit claustrophobic and then suddenly you fall into like this big almost like a city underwater. With the like piano music and stuff, so hopefully I can keep making good introductions to levels. And some people are like, "Oh, that's a, that's such a goofy bug, is that the enemies get stuck on the um, jump pads?" But nah, I don't, I don't think I'm ever gonna fix that, just because I think it's really fun. And here's this secret. Yay. Oh yeah, and here's the first place where the game actually teaches you to dash jump, because it hasn't before. I was thinking it would probably be, good, be a good, good idea to actually teach people that that's a mechanic they can use to their advantage. These people usually eventually figure it out themselves, but you know, it's good to just have like a direct thing explaining it to people who haven't figured it out yet. Oh yeah, and here's the, um, depending on which ride you take, and the um, uh, stray spawns on that round. It's like if you go here, the stray spawns here, and then if you go here, the stray actually spawns here instead of over there. But it can't spawn in both, and that was specifically just because um, the level had, the level had, I think it was just like, the level had 70 enemies, and I was just like, oh, well I gotta take one of those out. I mean, it's, uh, you, you can't have a last level, you, can, you can't have the opener for the last layer just not have 69 kills. It's such an obvious joke. And again, this is like the second, both of these towers are just like very vertical, you're just climbing up a fairly small, very like tight space. Oh yeah, and a lot, of, a lot of people somehow completely miss uh, the corpse of King Minos in the background here. I guess it's just because they're like they get so like surprised by the sky and the city below and and the towers that they completely like forget to pay attention to the giant dude with the floodlight eyes. I'm gonna ask wait all the openers for the last levels have 69 enemies? No. I have no idea what you're fucking talking about. But last the last layer, obviously, first level of the last layer has to have 69 kills. But um this city, like the whole like um this like aerial shot, that's just like I think someone found out it was like New York or something. Manhattan or whatever. I just I just took like a aerial shot that I found on Google that was public domain and just used that. I don't care. Oh yeah, and uh, I can talk about the the corpse of King Minos is a design by Imp, and like that was that was something I wanted to base on a scene from 
I think it was 2018, 2019, um, the movie Lighthouse by Robert Deggers. There's a scene in that where Willem Dafoe, there's like a nightmare sequence in that where Willem Dafoe has like a floodlight eyes. And he's like a really dangly dude and that was based on like some old painting. And I was just like, oh, that, that's such a cool visual, so I wanted to like sort of uh, use that as well. So that's why Corp of King Minos has lights like floodlight eyes and also his arms are actually like tied up with barbed wire here but then when it came to actually do the boss when it came the time to actually do the boss fight uh, i couldn't figure out a way to do a cool fight against the corpse uh, with his arms still tied so i had to we had to untie them for the boss fight And here again, it's less like I wanted to do like little small vignettes of just like making people maybe wonder what kind of stuff is going on here. Like here's, here's like just like a one skeleton who's praying on a bed and there's like four chairs facing it. It's like what the hell's going on, on here? And then there's obviously lovers. <clears throat> Now with the soldiers, they what they do is they always um, they always shoot one projectile directly in the middle. It's like and they, and then a couple spread out. It's like I think it's three spread out on the standard and uh, five spread out on violent or something. But it's all, there's always supposed to be one directly in the middle to make sure that they, you can always parry them. When they're shooting at you, instead of having to like position yourself weirdly. Oh yeah, one of the one of the uh, fuse boxes used to be here, but it was too hard to find, so I moved it elsewhere. I remember which one of these was. Yeah, and this whole thing is just like I wanted to again. I wanted to try to change the um, level structure a bit, have something different than new. So instead of just having like a direct. A room to room a linear thing i wanted to have like a sort of these almost hub areas where you have like multiple things you have to find and obviously the most fun thing is to just break all the fuse boxes at the same time and fight all the enemies simultaneously Yeah, this this is supposed to be like a giant generator thing. That's like uh, this is like this is what's powering all the lights in this last in these last cities that um, King Minos got built during the last Renaissance. Because I don't I don't think it's gonna be. I think it's the the whole thing has been kind of um, lowered out already. So I don't think uh, there's any point in like making a new text for it. But the idea is that sort of. And the, you can see sort of these, these are like 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 these uh, cities are sort of they have like they are like up high and they have like these big walls around them. So the idea is that they're supposed to like these have, having these cities be like small, uh, walled off like ca kind of skyscrapers in a way, supposed to block them from like the uh, hostile winds of the last layer. So they build with that in mind, and then uh, there's like. Uh, there's like this shield around them as well uh, that you can see sort of this is the thing that's causing the shield around the city so that that's protecting the inhabitants from the winds which is why they were built in this way by by during the renaissance to protect them oh and yeah, this spiral stakers was a massive pain in the ass to actually do the collision for because it's just such an annoying thing to like do. I had to like actually manually like uh, map out ramps and stuff and try to make it so that there's no bumps in it, but it's still very buggy if you like slide on it and stuff. Yeah, and actually the sounds when you're in here, because there's a reverb effect, the sounds actually of all your weapons and stuff actually get quieter. They feel like. I can turn that up for a bit so you can compare when I exit this room. Uh, 
Never mind, that's weird. I guess maybe it's just an nail gun. Maybe it just broke it recently. There's a lot of broken stuff here. I I mentioned at the start of the stream, but this is an experimental build, so a lot of stuff might just be broken. Yeah, and here's the first reminder that hey, don't always use the, use the knuckle blaster because the knuckle blaster can't parry enemies. Oh yeah, there's a special thing um, with these projectiles, uh, these sort of burst projectiles that the soldiers use is that. If you parry one of them, the rest all the um, none of the rest will like. They have special instructions to not be able to hit the player to make sure that you don't. It's not just like that. You get hit by like you parry one of them and you still get hit by the rest. It's been especially made so that you can. At parrying one of them makes you immune to the rest. Getting pulled by magnets. Oh yeah, this is just like cool laser walls or something. I just wanted, to, I just wanted to have like a, a cool view of like the, so you can see down and you can see the, like the city and, and city below and stuff, and you can see the secret over there and stuff like that. Yeah, here's the rail cannon, and then it, as soon as you pick it up, there's a direct line of like five strays, so you can see all of them fucking get murked by a single shot. This room has, I think, all these little small decorations are just cool. And yeah, they they didn't used to actually be the the rail cannon meter on the HUD was like added later because it used to just be a sound cue, but then obviously that was a bad idea because. People were having. Um, people didn't notice that the sound played, so they had no idea when they had charge or not. So we added the rail cannon meter to the HUD. And this is another one. It's just like, just like dumb, pointless detail. It's like the water starts from here, it flows down, and then through this gap. Oh my God! I'm super bouncing. But yeah, then it flow, flows down here, and then through here, and into the sewer area, and then it finally like rests in this this area here. Completely superfluous detail that makes no sense anyway. Oh yeah, this again is just like there's a. If you destroy that, if you destroy this fuse box early, it'll spawn all the enemies instead of like using the trigger so that, because people would accidentally keep use keep missing out on like uh, the soldiers because they didn't step on the right uh, right roof to spawn them and stuff. And this big old thing here is it's a it's like a lighthouse. And you can see it's sort of rotating this. Um, light thing because they, because they used to be a lot actual light attached to each other you would like rotate and shine around the level but it kind of i couldn't do it in a way that made it look good because of how already vibrant and saturated the lighting is and um, there used to be another encounter here which was a bunch of schisms would spawn here which was kind of cool because you have like no space to jump so you actually have to avoid the waves of projectiles in a different way but I ended up cutting out it, cutting it out because there was already so many uh, different waves of enemies. Like here and yeah, and here's the updated um, painting. This is a painting of King Minos during the last Renaissance. That this is him, sort of what he looked like before he got uh, turned into a corpse and and then eventually into a prime soul. And then here's some extra lore about that. To sort of again, it's talking about Gabriel, and then combining that with the uh, Minos to sort of build them both up. And this actually, they used to be a uh, one of the fuse boxes used to be here, and then when he broke it, a bunch of street cleaners would spawn over there. And again, it was like there was just too mo too many encounters already. Because because the thing is, when you when you have this, like this one area. With a whole bunch of encounters, you can't really do checkpoints in an area like this. 
So it was like you would, if you did all the fierce boxes, but then died during the last one, you had to do all that over again. It was really annoying. So I cut down a bunch of the encounters to make it a bit, make it a bit, make it make a bit more sense. Here's another one of those like situations where it's like may, supposed to make you wonder about what might have happened. Here is there's a bloody skeleton on just lay, laid out on a table, and then if you go over here, you can actually see that in this room there's another. There's like a skeleton trapped inside this small room that's spraying, and it's this door that's leading there. Doesn't really doesn't really have any lore le relevance, but it's just kind of a to add, add spice to the level design and visuals a bit. Because it would be a bit weird to have like this uh, vibrant cities from the Renaissance and not even have a single corpse in it. So I was hoping to have. And these little things here and there that would sort of make it a bit clear that these actually did used to be vibrancies and not just empty. Yes, sheer heart attack, which is one of my favorites. Yeah. And this is the first level where I actually had to make the water, because there's small uh, underwater section this level. And also, Panic Betrayal is like one of the best songs on the soundtrack, just because it really, I think it's 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 a track where the like. Completely change, like constantly changing uh, time signatures really came together to like make it a really intense and dense track. And the reason this the reason this level is called Sheer Heart Attack is because this pool is heart shaped. There's really no, <laughs> nothing nothing more to it. And here I tried to do like a forced perspective thing. I don't I think it really works, but it's sort of. It's supposed to look like these are like infinitely high, so it's like uh, thinning, uh, like these little uh, buildings are like they're um, the pillars that they're on, are like thinning as they go down because they are so incredibly high up. Like that. This is just like a bit more interesting in terms of arenas than like prelude and stuff because I kept getting more and more used to like making what how I can make ultra kill arenas in a way that's a bit more dynamic than just a cube. So you have all these like different levels and then just little, little like alcoves and uh, uh, stuff like that. And then a tricky old crusher down there. Make you keep you on your toes, and just to make it so like there's a sense that like this is like a the water's flowing in through here and then going down there. So the idea is that just kind of like uh, the previous the previous level had like the big generator thing, and it's like well, how did they get their energies? This sheer heart attack is kind of supposed to be like a water like a hydroelectric plant kind of, so it's like using water to generate energy for the cities. Yeah, and the fun little detail that other people don't notice is that um, the like blood splatters in water stay a lot longer than uh, in on, like land or in the air, but you can but the, they heal for less because they sort of been diluted by the water that they're in. Now here's one of the most extreme arena designs I've done. It's just like almost complete nonsense with all the walkways and stuff. It's just kind of a 
It, it can also almost it can be almost too much in a way that like it can be hard to find some enemies like whether if, if, if there's still one alive it can be a bit difficult to find where they are I was really just like I just wanted to do like bigger big like extreme arenas where there's a lot of hazards and stuff so that the player really has to use their movement and stuff oh yeah there's a secret here and this is like no nobody uses this, this thing nobody needs this thing so it's like why is it even there just because it kind of looks cool and here's a, here's another like window where you can see like the pink sky and the city and stuff and you actually are kind of moving uh, lower towards the city as you're moving closer to the, the corpse of king minus as well And here we have the fan favorite, Mind Flayer. It's sort of, it was always, always of course designed to be a kind of, like, a, like a, an enemy that always makes you go like, oh, oh shit! Now everything, everything, like when one of these appears, you act, like the whole dynamic of the fight changes, and it's kind of sort of supposed to be kind of a, kind of like I was designing to be kind of like an arch file kind of enemy where it's like. Um, where it's sort of an enemy that you kind of love to hate in a way. But obviously with the whiplash and with all the new skills and stuff, they're a lot less dangerous than they originally were, but that's that's fine. I think they're still really really fun enemy to fight with all the teleports and varied moves and stuff. And this, this doesn't make like any sense at all that the water just like stops here, but obviously I can't make it go down here because then it's like it would have to go down the level exit bit and stuff, so yeah. Oh boy, then we have good old Court of the Corpse King. I can't afford bother them. I want to. I think. I want to do. It doesn't really matter. Because not, neither of them are really like particularly useful against the corpse of King Minos. And again, this is supposed to be the same kind of thing as um, 1 4, where it's like you just had a bunch of really intense levels in a row, so it's like. Now we have, have a bit of a quiet moment to calm down and have like uh, just just to make sure that like the boss has ample build up and there's ample reason to have a checkpoint before the boss fights and stuff like that. Okay, I really like this kind of atmospheric like section, so I think it's 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 really good that I've been able to put them in Ultra Kill as well in a way that where they don't feel really forced or anything. So. Yeah, some extra variety because you have fun little details like this flickering light because it's kind of busted because uh, this is supposed to be like a like a like, like this is supposed to be like a train like subway um, uh, track that sort of uh, co like co that's taking like from one sort of chunk of chunk of a city to another because because they're all like separate separate like. Uh, Separate towers, kind of the whole city is like built in a separate towers. So it's these these are sort of the pathways that connect all the all the like little chunks of city together in a way where people can traverse between them uh, without being uh, at the mercy of the winds outside. So it's very all like there's like thick blast doors and stuff. Oh, and this, um, this is actually Peter can talk about some uh, something finally. Is the fucking actually? I'll just do the boss fight real quick before that. Yeah, and uh, this the the hand of King Minos is like I I did consider doing like an actual um, boss like health bar for this health meter for this base, but I think it would 
take away from like the atmosphere of the fight and that's why it's also really dark and stuff but anyway yeah peter you did the tram system yeah yeah i did that and that was a pain in the ass it was yeah and then i i i think there was a bug or something and fixing that one was very 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 bad yeah uh, there was like i think it was the um it, oh yeah, I know you like. Yeah, you, you would flip it around. It turned the other way. Yeah, <laughs> and it if, just broke. Yeah, if you turned at a very specific point, you would flip the fucking tram inside out. Hey, look at this. <laughs> just like a little little detail that no one ever gets, but it's like bonk. Yeah, I think it's good now. I'm yeah. not looking at the code anymore, so. Yeah, we haven't had any have issues. Um, it works with checkpoints and stuff. Uh, and it has people to, uh, might use it for custom levels or something. Hopefully, yeah. at some point, because it's pretty—it's a pretty like big system. Yeah, and I—I I I've always wanted to use it more, but I just never really find a place for where it would fit. Like I wanted to do like a thing in Gluttony, but that was like I—I I had to already rush Gluttony in order to get it out in like September, because we were planning to get the early access out in September, so I was having to. Get Gluttony out done quick, so I didn't do anything with that, and then I kind of almost completely forgot about the tram system. But I should. Didn't you have a like a scrapped puzzle idea for this level? Yeah. Or um, maybe you can talk about that. Uh, yeah, for the blue skull, I was thinking of having like a. What's the game called? It's called like Traffic Jam or something, where it's like you have to move like things around. Um. In, in order to open a path so that you can get your car like out of the car park or something and and it was uh yeah i was i was thinking of having like a small puzzle before you get the blue skull in order to just extend the calm period but then i realized it was already fairly long and there was already a lot of like downtime so i was figured that like extending that even further would probably just be too much so i decided to scrap that idea and just have the blue skull be a thing you pick up I think I think you did all the systems to make it possible, right? I don't know. Yeah, I don't remember <laughs> I, either. I don't know. Oh yeah, and he has like this is the idea is just like you you go through the railroad, you stop here and then here you will he has like a doorway to another city chunk and then he would be able to climb up to the city chunk and then there would be more pathways uh, onward from there. There's like a little waiting zone, but it's been caved in by because of because of like lack of maintenance because of uh, the renaissance being ended by gabriel and the council Oh yeah, and there's the there's the snake parasites. They have a really awesome design, but it's like I'm gonna so you can see them better. It's like they have a really cool design where it's like three skulls forming one head, and like only one of the only two of the eyes are like lit up because it, they, it only has like two active eyes because it's supposed to be like a one consistent thing, and then has like big big like split jaw, and then just a tongue spitting like uh, spilling out from there. It's like. It's there's definitely a enemy design that I want to reuse by making them like some kind of normal enemy at, at some point, but I haven't really found the space or time for it. Yeah, this was a, this was just like uh, some people are like questioning like why why can't like. Why can't we have Corpse of King Minus come in the cybercrime? But the problem is that all his attack animations are specifically animated for this arena. Because I couldn't really do like rigid body stuff, so it's just like even if he was in the cyber grind, it wouldn't be it wouldn't he wouldn't function because it's completely just a boss designed entirely around the arena. And the whole point of having this boss here is just like Because the next boss is Gabriel and I wanted to I wanted to have it so that uh I wanted to have it so that like there would be a contrast of bosses because 
Like this is like a really big like set piece boss. It's really not much of a challenge either. It's mostly just like uh, like a set piece, like a visual like exciting thing. So it would sort of contrast with um, it would be like a big contrast with how Gabriel is basically uh, another like one on one duel kind of fight. Because if you have multiple of those in a row, they end up just cheapening each other. Because you can look at like Dark Souls Two and how Dark Souls Two was like. A, was like, oh, everyone liked Ornstein as Mo in Dark Souls 1, we'll just make every boss Ornstein as Mo. And then all the Dark Souls 2 bosses are forgettable because they're all the same. And that ends up making like the really cool ones like less exciting as a result. And yeah. Oh yeah, and the the um and the HUD icon for uh, the screwdriver has a Guran Lagan reference. Uh, when we added the um, unique icons for the rail cannons. Uh, why does Minos have a door and metal throat inside him? Because uh, hell, hell, the hell, like a space in hell is sort of. It's sort of. Um, there's like a. It's kind of dreamlike in a way where it's like things don't really connect physically, it's more like uh, general vague ideas of spaces and it's constantly sort of, like it's different for every person in a way, so like for an example, even if they were like the way way I see it is like it's sort of uh, it's sort of in a perpetual, like even, like for an example V1 can just like come in here like this, but then if anyone from the cotton layer would try to get out from this, uh, they, it would just wouldn't exist like this whole place wouldn't exist, it would just be like a perpetual trap in a way and sort of so you know the, the real like the real reason it just is because hell was sort of transforming in the way where the opening to the next layer ha had to come somewhere and the only way down was down Minos's throat so it's sort of like regardless of like for people who are going like down in the depths of hell or like regardless of what path you take you always end up going the right way to keep going down further. That's the sort of general gist of it. And that's also how... Like, I don't wanna... I don't... There, there's things that are, like, in the lore that are not really explained and stuff that might be explained eventually, so I don't wanna go too far into it, but there's, like, also the way that sort of perception um, interacts with spaces and things like that so there's a lot there's a sort of a lot of ideas that are just really hard to put into words that i don't know if they ever will be but they're definitely a part of the design and yeah gluttony is kind of, well gluttony is inside minos in a way that like um it's kind of inside minos but it's also kind of a separate space because the, it's like like, they're not really physical places. Hell is not really, like, uh, the layers aren't really physical places, which is why also they can have, like, open sky despite being, like, below another layer. It's more like they're, like, uh, I don't know, ideas. It's kind of, it's, a, it's very abstract, which is why it's hard to put into words, but it's kind of a, I think you get the, uh, like, idea of what I mean. And yeah, that's also why they ha you have like you have a mouth inside this, like this weird stomach cavity with an eye in it and a stone statue arm, and then you have like mouth that has a throat leading down to. Like it, it is not really a, it's not a place that actually makes sense. It's just like general things. Yeah, I won't go too deep into it in case I actually want to uh, include it in written form inside the game itself in some way. And this encounter is fun because it's like people are like, oh, the the reason the reason uh, there's only two Cerberus in zero five is because Cerberus in the Inferno is actually in Gluttony layer, and here is the actual Cerberus encounter with three Cerberuses. And it's like, nah. I, 
no it's it's just because <laughs> it's <laughs> I, w I wish i was that smart but no and i haven't actually even read inferno <laughs> i'm just taking inspiration from it in like general terms instead of actually basing anything on it so this is just because i wanted to have a encounter with three servers and zero fire was just two because um because there's uh, the three would have been too hard and yeah here's here's like a little cool like nonsense elaborate stair labyrinth and the music picks up because originally it was just gonna be um, the the dark uh, dark like grungy ass music the whole way through but then i started feeling like it would just sort of lose its effect after a while so instead i wanted to, to have so that um, after a while into the level it just like transforms into this like really hype thing like oh we're finally about to reach the end of we're about to reach the end of Act 1 and sort of hyping you up for the final encounter and stuff. And that's why it sort of changes moods abruptly. And also, as I mentioned earlier, this song Glory is just... The, like, the, the song that played earlier in this level is called Guts and that's um, just this song but slowed down 66.6%. And this is the uh, this is coming up this the, uh, popular piano section, the piano arpeggios here. Let me turn it up. That's like a, that was that was funny because when I was making this song, I, I did that piano section. I was like, "Isn't this too happy for Ultra Kill? This sounds like this sounds like it's from like fucking Final Fantasy or something." I was like, eh, "It sounds cool though, so whatever. People will fucking have to deal with it." But then it ended up, I think, uh, largely because of that contrast, it ended up being such a notable and popular and memorable moment because it's such a like, almost out of place in the in the game and especially in this kind kind of really grungy and dark area oh yeah and this is this is about this is about the point where i just start using malicious faces really often in the level design just because they're re they're really fun enemy to use as like a in terms of doing any counter design because of how versatile they are. So around from this point on, like every level has at least 10, 10 malicious faces or something. And this is like, again, it's a, there's two spines here. It's like, what? why is it even, what is this space? It's like, it doesn't really matter. It's just like general ideas of guts and gore and stuff. And you can bounce bounce on these. You can bounce into stomach acid. And it's uh, oh yeah, this is one of the rooms that I was like, cause um, when we were making progress on gluttony, I was just like, I was just like, I don't wanna, I don't wanna tease gluttony at all. I wanted to be like a complete surprise to all the fans as well, what gluttony even looks like. And Dave was like, Dave really wanted me to use this. As like a screenshot Saturday tease this room because it looks really cool, but I was just like I was very adamant that I just wanted to keep the visuals a complete secret to people. And here's the here's the bone palace. And this is actually fun because this room was actually it's a kind of a reversed from what it what the first version of it was. Because uh, original, actually, I'll just uh, I'll save that for um, after I'm done with the fight, so I don't have to talk while I'm fighting, and it's easier to show. Oh, jeez! Yeah. So originally, you actually came in from here, and the thing was, you the acid, the stomach acid started from down here. And as you like kept going through the fight, 
it would like start rising after every, every wave and stuff. So it would kind of a inverse version where the you started running out of a uh, space in the arena as you kept going, but it sort of ended up being not very fun because it's more fun to just be able to like run around this big arena and stuff instead of being restricted in it. And it's sort of uh, and also it was an issue in terms of enemies, because then obviously the enemies... If you, if you start fighting down here, so all the enemies would come down from up there, and as soon as, as it started rising, it would just kill them all automatically and stuff, so... It was better to just do it in verse, where you start from the top and you keep doing, going downwards instead. Oh, did I kill Mind Flayer with Acid? Oh yeah, yeah, I did. In the first room, it kind of accidentally, accidentally killed. Wow, so I was afraid I broke something again. Oh yeah, you you guys want to see you guys want to see a little sneak peek at something that'll be uh, this week's screenshot Saturday. Something that'll be in the next update as well. Oh. So, this is another one of those that's like, I just wanted to do like a, like this is like, a, I was, I didn't really have a lot of time before, like what we wanted, when we wanted to release early access. So this is just like big ass fucking square, square room of just flesh. And then it just, I just made like random blobs of meat that you jump up to get to the top. Just because I wanted to have a little bit of, again, vertical platforming when you have so much vertical mobility. Oh yeah, someone says he's coming to the cyber grind. No, he's not. Um, V2 is definitely not in the won't be in the cyber grind because it hasn't been programmed for an arena that isn't enclosed, so it would immediately just jump off the edge and immediately die. But yeah, and here we have Gianni, so I'm gonna I'm gonna raise the volume a bit so you guys can hear him. But something just before we get to that is just the music is like there's like this. A kind of almost throat singing at the start that's very decent and on purpose and then as soon as i as soon as you walk through the door um it fades out quickly and then you have silence and you have gianni say gabriel's first lines of like turn back now and then i i you know, I, I had to do a bunch of timing to make sure that i could do it in a way where uh, I, I could time the music so that it sort of kicks in at just the right moment in between the first couple of lines so that the player has like a moment to realize that oh shit someone's talking to me and then the music starts at the moment where they actually realize what's happening machine turn back now the layers of this palace are not for your kind turn back or you will be crossing the will of god yeah Gian is fucking great uh, someone asked, is it true that there's walls that are made of just like corpses? Um, yeah, you can see th this one is just like this. You can see there's a kind of a face there, there's an arm, there's a face there, there's some body and stuff. And here as well, you can see more clearly there's a face and a chest and two arms and stuff. So some of these are just like people flesh and some of them just like nondescript like veins and just like spread out stuff and he has just like weird gross minced meat i love how subtitles came out mm. and is there anything you might want to say about the this there, there aren't many moments where you get to talk here so it might be good to if you if there's something you want to say about the subtitles yes you made them just things that i work on aren't really there isn't much you can say i guess but mm. Mm. We were thinking of uh, doing more emphasis with like word colors and stuff. Oh yeah, I remember. I was yeah, I was trying to color some things or mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. But you've ended up. <laughs> yeah, it ended up. Uh, and for the better. Yeah, because the problem is that you we want to use we would have wanted to use the color text as for emphasis on some words, but the whole point of subtitles is uh, it's it's to make it easier to read so you can is to make it like easy to read so that you can know what the characters are saying and adding like colors and effects would make it harder to read quickly and easily 
And then also the problem is that it's already white on black, so any other color that would uh, be used for emphasis and stuff would end up being less contrasting than the original, which would make them, instead of being emphasis, they would more be more like a uh, sort of... Sort of, sort of hiding it in a way. Down, down the flesh pit. Your choice is made as the righteous hand of the father. I like that it sort of ended up being an accidental joke that this is he's as righteous hand of the father while you're walking on hands. Yeah, these hands are just straight up um, reused. Uh, the reused arms of uh, the corpse of King Minos. Because why model a new hand when you already have one? <clears throat> and also... Oh yeah, something I forgot to mention is... Uh, while we were doing... While me and Dave, Dave were doing like punching up the script to make sure it's a bit more impactful. Because some of these lines were a bit longer. And then they wanted to shorten them a bit to make them more impactful. Uh, one of the things that kind of ended, ended up getting lost in translation is... When he says um, the layers of the palace, the layers of this palace are not very kind. The full original line was the layers of this palace of torment are not very kind. So the idea was he's referring to hell as a whole instead of because some you know, some people are misunderstanding and going like, oh, why would why why is he calling Minos's corpse a palace? It's like no, it's he's supposed to be talking about the layers of hell. That's why he says layers. And he's like, hey, hey, machine, you're not, yeah, you're not supposed to be in hell. You're not dead. And that's why he interrupts you. And some people are like, hey, how, how, like, how did Gabriel know that you're going down here? Like, why, why, why is, Ga why is Gabriel inside the corpse of King Minos? It's like, well, he's not, he's not here yet. He teleports once you get into the arena. But the whole thing is like, Gabriel is like, as soon as any machine gets too far downwards he'll, he'll like interrupt them and kill, kill them so to him you're just one of like a hundred or thousand or whatever machines that he's he's encountered and tried to stop so so far and I've always of course successfully except for now because we once just a big Nikoji who will absolutely obliterate anything And obviously there's a the whole bunch of DMC references and stuff in this fight. And there, there, there's, that's a, there was a lot of difficulty in um, trying to balance this fight in a way where it would be... They're like, we would still keep this sort of really intense, like, constant teleporting and fast swings and stuff where it's super deadly. That it was hard to, hard to keep that kind of essence without making the fight too... Like we are making the fight too hard, so. But I think it found a good spot. And one of the key examples was just that, like, the spear drop he does. It used to be instant, but now it's like he has a really long hang time before he does it. Like, you see, he's he hangs up above, above you for a, quite a while before he actually drops down. And there's a there's a DMC three reference. Oh yeah, another fu fun detail: the eyes normally follow you. Like they look at you when you're walking around, but in this arena, it's actually looking at Gabriel because he's the real, he's the real like a point point of interest. Whoops. And uh, most of the taunts here were actually improvised by Gianni because we were just like we we're just like oh you can we can do some taunt, like some um, taunts for the fight and stuff, and it was just like. He just went into the booth and, like, we 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 traded a couple ideas with, like, oh, we should do a DMC3 reference with the foolishness machine and useless and uh, stuff like that. And he's like, he just went into the booth and he recorded a whole bunch of just ideas and stuff, and I picked out my favorites. What? How can this be? Best by this this thing? You insignificant. Yeah, that's a like the whole the whole idea with the like the like uh, originally when uh, I wrote the line like the 
you insignificant fuck. Uh, Dave was like, that's not very angel, like, you should probably do that, do something else. I was like, no, you don't understand. It is important that he says fuck. And it's like, that's like the, obviously I wasn't very good at explaining at the time, but the whole, that's like the whole idea is just like, it's very unangel like because it's sort of facade is just like completely crumbles and falls apart when he gets, when he gets beaten by a machine. Cause to him, that's like, the way I explained it, to, the way I explained it to Gianni when I was explaining like how I want the, how I want the, like what's the motive with the line? Yes, I was like explaining it in a way where it's like, like a to to an angel, like a human, a human beating an angel is like that's like impossible. It's it's like it can't even happen. So even something smaller than like a creation by a human, that's like. That's like physically impossible. They they don't believe it can it can even happen. Like even if it, like the only way a machine they believe that the only way that a machine can beat an angel is if the angel purposefully loses. Because it's it's kind of like if you would say, oh I was fucking I was I was just in a fight with an ant and an ant fucking wrecked me. And it's 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 and it's, it's it, that's that's why the that's why when Gabriel goes up to the council and he's like uh, machine beat me up and they're like you you're a fucking traitor you lost on purpose you let you're failing you're failing God's will and stuff. It's precisely because it's just like they they can't understand about it being a possibility and that's also why Gabriel when he's trying to understand what just happened after he's lost that's why it's sort of. Is sort of mulling over it in his mind, and he just can't can't imagine it happening, and he can't. It's it's kind of like just like this complete, completely going against everything he understands about the world, and that's why he's, he goes he gets so incredibly angry about it, and he just can't. He's so he's so mad about it, he can't even come up with an insult, and that's why he just said fuck. Mm. Yeah, these uh, these intermissions another. Um, that was mostly written by Jacob Roy. Uh, I was telling him about, about like what I wanted the text to have and then he wrote like a draft and then we kept going back and forth to try to get it to feel about right. And the artist Jericho, uh, he also did the splash art and stuff and it's really, it's such a fucking great painting style. Yeah, there's like all these kind of really cool wordings that I wouldn't be able to come up with myself that Jacob did with the like... The words resonated in Gabriel's limbs, coursing through as lightning upon fire, a searing hiss that would strike lessers deaf and blind. It's like he has a great sort of uh, eye for sort of poetic, poetic writing. And here it's like they say heresy multiple, like the different guys say each day, even say the same word because it's supposed to show about how like single minded the council is. That they're all, even though separate, even though they're separate angels, they all like think they almost the exact same, and that's why they keep saying the same word. And he has, oh yeah, there they used to be the the line here, the your treasure will not be tolerated. It used to be your failure will not be tolerated, but I but I didn't that I changed that because it's like that I think that's a part of why people misunderstood. Uh because it's very uh, poor wording in a way. It's kind of like like the whole idea that like the council doesn't believe that Ga Gabriel actually failed, like that he lost, it's just that he purposefully um, let the machine go instead of killing it. So that's why he gets considered a traitor and stuff and he gets cast out of heaven and ripped from the holy light. And this is this is such a this is the fun, the fun this is such a dumb line. Um, like it's it's an amazing line. But it's like if you think about it for a bit, it's it kind of falls apart. But I wanted to include it anyway just because it's such a cool line is the and with such fury, even metal will bleed. 
Which makes no sense because metal already bleeds in the Ultra Kill universe because robots are already filled with blood and they already bleed when you shoot at them. But don't worry about it, you know, it's just, it's cool. It sounds cool. Yeah, to be continued in Act 2, Imperfect Hatred. Act 2's title, I just came up on the spot. I was just like, ah, oh, fuck, I need to come up with a title. And uh, well, it's all, it's gonna be, you know, I'm not gonna spoil anything, but it's, I ended up coming with this pun that's like, uh, that I think is a perfect or imperfect fit for the chapter, but I think it fits perfectly after all. But Act 1 and Act 3 is titles I already had figured out from the start. Uh, someone's asking, how is Gabriel supposed to beat V1 with a divine light? You didn't even notice the fact that he didn't pull out his swords. He was only using, like, he w he didn't pull out his swords because the whole time he was so, he was so, so cocky, he was so sure that a machine could never actually beat an angel, that he never actually used his weapons. He was just using, like, these light constructs as weapons. So now that he's fucking pissed, he's gonna be coming at you with all his might. Uh, should we do greed? I think we're gonna do greed. Peter, are you tired? I am, yeah, but... it's There are still 230 people, so... Oh, oh might, I might, we might as well, yeah. Why not? Oh yeah, guys, guys. Oh yeah, here's the <coughs> obligatory persona, tired persona joke that everyone makes. Such a really, really fun visual. And I think I think greed is such a like. You look at you like you look at like the greed like geometry and the visuals and stuff, and then you go back to like Prelude and you're like, wow, this game really has gone far in terms of visuals. That's because I'm like getting more used to like the, using the tools and. How to make these kinds of cool uh, ideas come across properly. Yeah, virtues. Yeah, the virtues are obviously based on uh, bibl uh, biblically accurate angels, like the whole idea where they're, they're like abstract and stuff. And, the, and like the, the. You can see it's sort of like a. It's like a broken cr crown with broken chains and stuff. And that was like a. That was something I wanted to like get across yeah yeah and greed sort of balancing greed sort of uh, combining this sort of inter dark interiors with like really bright exteriors and again I was just trying to train trying to find a way where um, trying to find a balance where the navigation is like both the navigation and the fighting is like found in the same area so you have like these are fairly simple like very blocky very orthogonal pathways that are very wide but they're also like you get to do all kinds of jumping and dashing and stuff around them which makes them more fun oh yeah and this room actually had a really fun um, original version that i really liked but it was too hard which was um it was the same room, except the trick was that there was a... Instead of two virtues, what spawned was there was a malicious face here. And then one virtue here and one virtue here. So they would like... Have the virtues would hide hide behind the pillars. So it would be like you had to... You had to sort of uh, do this arena in a way where... Uh, if you were in the center open space, you would have to avoid malicious faces, projectiles and beam. But if you went to the side, you would have very little space to actually dodge the virtues like light beam attacks. So you had to kind of balance your positioning and stuff, but that was just like way too much of a challenge to suddenly throw at the player who've only just been introduced to the enemy, so I ended up just making it two virtues instead. <clears throat> Is blood supposed to be symbolic of life? Yes. Pretty much anything that anything that moves or is alive in Ultra Kill has blood, basically. It's kind of a 
running theme in a way it's a motif and that's why you know that's why that's why machines need blood to blood as fuel is because it's a it's basically the source of all life in a way And the music here is fun because it's like um, with the with the greed music. I was sort of trying to be like a because I was just thinking when I was making greed. I was thinking about like you know how how far the game's geometry has gone in, since Prelude. So uh, with the greed music, I was just trying to do like a kind of like a revisit of uh, Prelude's Prelude's more like riff focused metal uh, like uh, emphasize like a. Uh, more metal music and it's like I, I was just thinking like I could I can probably like uh, revisit that style but do it in a more interesting and more ultra kill kind of way so this is kind of that's why it's doing eternal is like heavy on the riffs and stuff then also there's some like there's way more layers of instrumentation and stuff than in prelude and there's like melodies and stuff on like prelude And obviously has the dual wheel power up which is a whole other can of worms in terms of bugs and stuff but this was um, this was because I was doing um, there was like a I don't remember the exact context but we had like a thing with ultra kill I know like before I got picked up by Dave I think maybe a bit afterwards I got picked up by new blood um, we had like a Twitter interaction thing where I ended up doing like a video of like what what it would look like if you had like a billion fucking nail guns at the same time. It was just like complete noise and stuff. So I, that's where I had the idea for like doing the dual wield as a power up because it's like it's really cool to just have like basically just copy and paste the same gun again but mirror it. And because that's basically how it works, it was a lot simpler to get functioning than. Um, in the initially I expected but then again then I had to keep doing like different ways to have them like because for an example they have to like the second gun has to have a delay compared to the first one and so on so it's like they were I, I ended up having to do so much again anyway I'm making fixing all the kinds of bugs and stuff and it's like ended up being its own own mess entirely uh, yeah and just the, just the whole thing with the dual which is basically just like having a double damage power up but just in a way that's not boring because like uh, quad damage as cool as quad damage is it's still just like it just raises a number so i wanted to do like what if what if i basically did double damage but in like a way that's not just increasing a number so that's why i did like you have dual wield instead because it's functionally still double damage And the first time you pick up the double damage, which is in this level, it's actually the timer is extended two minutes. Normally it's 30 seconds, which in some cases there's a minute long timer, but um, in, at the first time you pick it up, it's two minutes, uh, precisely just because it's the first time you've had it, so it, it would like it would be really lame for you to suddenly run out of it during a big encounter. So I wanted to just like give the player enough space and time to be able to just comp just fuck around with it and play around with the mechanic and the power up and stuff oh uh, yeah and uh, this is the whole uh, the whole thing with 42 uh, this level is that i was sort of uh, trying to figure out ways to sort of contrast cuz uh, most of ultra kills levels are very closed in they're almost all interior so i was thinking of ways to of how to make open levels in a way that's still completely linear and stuff so even though basically this whole like open section is just a hallway it's done in a way where it feels like it's open because there's still no like walls and stuff even though you only have like one direction it still feels way more open and i added the um there's the statue of liberty there's the big ben and the eiffel tower because the idea with it is like the greed is like I think I, I think I mentioned it in uh, one of the enemy entries, but the 
thing with greed is like it's supposed to be the punishment is not just that because like the punishment in inferno is that you're supposed to like you're forced to carry away like um, up a mountain forever so instead it's like in ultra kill it's that you're you're forced to uh, like you're forced to um, carry like uh, weights uh, like boulders up the the monuments of mankind's greed, so that the more greedy mankind is, the harder the punishment is for everyone in greed. I'm supposed to keep kind of that kind of thing. And there's the little, this little fun easter egg back here. With the, the stalker making the sand castle. And yeah, there's just like, I, I just did this as a fun, um, on the, based on the comic that Finn did, where, um, Stalker uh, makes a sandcastle and stuff. I just wanted to do this as a fun reference, and then I was like, "Well, why not go an extra step and just make it breakable and stuff?" And it's like, "Why well, don't you break it?" And it makes a super fucking giant explosion that covers the entire level and instantly kills anything it touches. Which is funny because that actually. Uh, the, the, a, lot of, a lot of people before they figured out the, um, how to kill the insurrectionists with the glass floor, that was like a go-to way to kill the insurrectionists for a lot of people, was just like luring him all the way over there and, and killing him with the nuke. Oh yeah, and this, um, this level with the, the tutorial tip, the, this tutorial tip, um, enemies covered in sand do not play it, that was like... It's not actually what's happening, because the whole point is that um, it, 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 the stalkers turn enemies' blood into sand, and that's why you can't heal from them. But we had to, uh, we had it's, it wouldn't be clear if we put that into like enemies whose blood has turned to sand can't be healed from. It's like that's a really awkward tutorial tip. So they were just said to put it in the like you know the enemies covered in sand will not bleed even though they're technically not covered in sand but that's so much more intuitive for people to understand as a gameplay mechanic so the lore says that their blood is turned to sand which is actually happening but just the tutorial depth says, says they're covered in sand Virtues are usually like I, th I think virtues are my favorite enemy in terms of mechanics right now. They're just like not just not just because they're pretty fun to fight in my opinion, but they're also really fun to like design arenas with because it's like you can hide them in places and then player will have to look for them and stuff. And I just think it's really fun in a way where they're really good at like making the player have to consider their movement more than just like running around like a headless chicken. Here's a display of how the sand sand works because I didn't want to just have like a tutorial pop up the pop up box explaining how stalk stalkers turn enemies' blood into sand. So you just have a demonstration. And they actually the stalker timer was at some point uh, I changed it. It used to be three seconds, but I changed it to five seconds because uh, three seconds was too little in the cyber grind. But then this this cutscene, well, this demonstration was like it took like five seconds. It was just like really long. You just had to wait for it. So this is a special special moment where like this is the only stalker in the game whose timer is still three seconds instead of five. And this is another one room that I was just like, I made a really cool room and I was just like, originally I was thinking like maybe I could do a, maybe I could do a mind flayer fight here or something, but then the way the level sort of flows just like ends up making that not really work. And then this is like a really cool room that just has no real purpose. Oh yeah, and this is, um, uh, this is another, this, this one is a bit more interesting um, than in terms of like behind the scenes, uh, this text passage, I can't scroll it because it's broken in this build, but um, this one was. Um, oh, hold on. Fucking Dave's sending me messages. I don't know, whatever. Um, like, the, this one was kind of a back and forth with Jacob in a way where it's like, this is actually half written by me and half written by Jacob. So it's like. Mm, 
Uh, oh yeah, like the whole like, uh, I think the whole second half of the. Uh, it's kind of like it's kind of almost like every other sentence is mine. Every other sentence is Jacob's. So we were originally worried that like it would kind of make it feel like a mess in terms of writing style, but I think it, I think it flows fine. But it was just like Jacob was very good at like doing like the flowery prose, but then wasn't really, he wasn't really getting like the um, emphasis and the power of like what I wanted to get across with the text. I think so that's why it was we we were sort of going back and forth and. I think it ended up good. Uh, uh, what else was there? Oh yeah, and the, the the whole thing was like the whole thing's written in present tense, but it's like happening. It's supposed to kind of seem like it's happening at the moment, but then the last sentence kind of twists around, and then it goes like, "If only we knew what would befall us next." I think was the sentence. I was like, "Jacob's like that's incorrect. You have you can't." Like the whole thing has to be in past tense and I know and I'm just like, no, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. It's just, it, it might not make technical sense, but it's like yeah, that it has to be wrong in order to get the correct feeling across. And also this is like uh, the first circular, this is the first reusable checkpoint in the game. Because it's like you have to go back and forth through this uh, room many times. So I wanted to make a checkpoint where people can use it every time uh, and save their progress every time they feel it, like come back through here but you wouldn't have to keep redoing these fights over and over and there's uh, some people have have um, there's been some complaints about greed being too hard compared to like previous layers and I understand why because you know they, these these encounters are way more intense and way more like uh, just like busy because because of the dual with power up meaning that there's need to be way more enemies and way more dangerous enemies in order to make the make the encounters make any actual sense in terms of challenge but it's like I understand but I'm I don't really I, I'm probably just gonna keep it this way anyway And we get to get we get to use this to skip back to the back over here instead of having to do platforming. And then I also just like added these extra paths leading from over there to over there and over here to over here, just so you can use those instead of having to come through the middle room every time if you don't want to. Yeah, some good old stalker encounters. <clears throat> and yeah, you get this room as well, it's just like there's a lot of really, I think, in my opinion, this is kind of a cool visual to have this sort of garden inside the building and it's sort of like this glass uh, solarium kind of thing. And you have these little um, Jericho's uh, little uh, hieroglyphic paintings of like demons and husks and stuff. I think there's like, yeah. Yeah, um, for, uh, we did Soul Survivor, um, before we did greed probably like there was a there was a really awkward period um the insurrectionist was kind of like a huge issue issue well actually this level entirely was like a huge issue in terms of development because what happened is um like the stalker design like i make levels uh, chronologically so like so i just do like four one four two four three four four and like what ended up happening is uh Jericho was busy and stuff, so uh, the stalker design took a lot longer than we expected. So I had to, I, ha I had to put this level on pause and start making four three, and then when we got the stalker in, and then 
like uh, we had then we had to put in the boss and then it was like that was like a whole fucking uh the season three insurrections was like a massive fucking pain in the ass to actually make it get working i think peter can say more about that it was pretty awful yeah and it <laughs> And didn't like, I think like three people total worked on the boss code wise. Yeah. Me, Zombie, and you. Yeah. So that was a. Uh... It was just a huge night. And people are like, oh, it's like a, it's like a funny bug that they, they left in intentionally. It's like, no, this was a, this was a huge issue to get working the way I wanted it to. Oh yeah, and and like the mo by far the best thing about the insurrections is that the fact that he can. He's by far the most dynamic enemy in the game right now, so he can function in any... He can easily chase you around the map and he can function in any, any of the rooms, so you can... If you want, you can just take the boss fight into any other arena in the fight. Well, I mean in the level. You can just like go here if you want to do the fight here. And, or you can fight him outside in a, one of the previous arenas or whatever. Yeah. Oh yeah, and the, um, what I was gonna say is we did the Soul Survivor update before we did Greed. And uh, for Soul Survivor I had uh, a friend of a friend, Quetzaltirado is her name, and she plays uh, soprano saxophone and bass clarinet. I had her record a couple bits for uh, the song Chaos, uh, which is Flesh Prison's theme. And uh, I was also just like, oh yeah, can you just like, can you just like record a, like a long E note, like low E note, so that I can just like use that for whatever in case I find use for it. And she was like, yeah, you sure, I guess. And then that's what ended up being the like horn sound uh, that they always calls this. The uh, mean direction is over. Is uh, that's actually a bass clarinet played low and then modulated a bit with like layers and stuff. Yeah, I can do I can do the secret levels after we're done with the normal levels. Yeah. I'm not gonna I'm gonna I'm not gonna read like the enemy entries just because it would take too long and stuff. Yeah. Shot in the dark is just like a, I really like this level just because it's like a huge change of pace and usually dark levels are kind of bad, but because uh, because of how many things in Ultra Kill actually like. Uh, emit light it's way easier here to actually like see enemies and fight enemies and stuff because you can just see them from the lights they emit and stuff like that from the projectiles and such and the music here in the first because there's three phases of music in this level and the first phase that's playing right now is uh it's kind of a parody of steve reich the american minimalist composer he did uh he did a song called Clapping Music, which is basically just like two uh, repeating, well, one repeating patterns for two clappers, and every eight repetitions, one of them delays the um, rhythm by one eighth note, so it sort of gets displaced, and then it suddenly starts creating completely new rhythms by their interactions together. So that's what's happening in the first, first like section, see, section here with the music. Is there's two marimbas that are playing like the same. Rhythm, but they're constantly getting offset by short. Um, they're constantly getting offset by like short pauses every couple of loops. And also, I picked the marimba because that's like something that Steve Reich used constantly in his compositions. Was like he really loves the sort of marimba sound. And also just in general I really like how like how it even though it's very repetitive this first like phase of the music, I really like how it has a sort of solitude to it, like a calm peaceful solitude. Kind of sadness even that's like completely different from all the music so far. That, like it's not fully ambient, but it's also not very melodic, it's kind of like a somewhere in between. There he is. Mm. 
this is another one just to like this is where I wanted to sort of revisit the idea of the two to um two dash two fuse boxes of like being able to control the being able to control how many enemies you want to fight at the same time in one arena. So you can just light all the torches and fight every enemy at the same time if you want and you'll get through faster and it'll be more of a chaotic and difficult fight. Yes, has the trader hallway just like... Emphasize the point that, you know, Gabriel's been cast out because no one can understand that he actually lost to a machine. I can, we can do the fucking, uh, we can do the mysterious druid night fight. Who put the word traitor there? Uh, probably either, uh, probably, probably some husk that's still like, that was still like sentient, like uh, was powerful enough to be sentient and like because there's husks that can like communicate and form civilizations like in the dust in the last layer. Or maybe it was an angel, I don't know. It was no one uh, basically just it was no one in particular, but it's just supposed to show the general opinion of Gabriel. Basically. Yeah, here's the stream, streamer room, the Tomb of Kings. This is for streamers and reviewers who are just like helping out, like helping out giving the game exposure back when it was like really obscure and stuff. So I get, I get, got a lot of uh, respect for them, and obviously they helped a ton in, the, in terms of getting the game to where it is right now. So here's G Man, the YouTube reviewer. Uh, here's Icarus Lives. Uh, here's a uh, Patton Woolly. Um, here's Vine Sauce. Here's Markiplier. Here's Mad Mac Muscles. And he has a blue skull, which means you can use it to activate the boss. Finally, our waiting puzzle is over. Yeah, the whole joke with this boss fight is it's a really it's a really stupid boss fight, but it, it still has the by far the most health bars out of the entire game. Oh my god, Fuller Auto is broken. Look at that. Oh yeah, because I was fixing that. Yeah, I'll have to. I have to do with that. But anyway, uh, originally it was just like I was using sound clips from uh, Mandy's. Uh, I was just using the full order and full order sound clip sound clips from Mandy's eyes eye review, or eye divine cybermancy. But then, it's me, uh, me and me and Avery started like chatting and stuff. We're pals now. But um, then, it, then I showed it to him, and I was like, "Oh, um, I'm going over to Mandy's place at going over to Mandy's place at some point, so we can just like record completely new lines for you." And I was like, "Oh, that would be awesome!" So they ended up just like improvising stuff together, and just like having um, just just like coming up with jokes and whatever they they could use it on the spot, and then I picked out my favorites and just put them in. Those guys just have a ama naturally amazing chemistry that they just again they can basically just make anything fun when they're uh, just uh, shooting shit together. And there's a really funny line that's in the game files but isn't used anywhere anywhere where it's just like I I just still there's no like context to it. It's just Mandy saying it's it's just fucking Mandy saying League of Legends and then the both of both of them just bursting out laughing. Yeah, just a really fucking fun fight, and that was because I mentioned it at one point. But Mandy hasn't done like a review or anything of the game, but I wanted to give him like a shout on the Tomb of Kings as well, because he was like early on development. Uh, when I first released like the first version of the demo, I was just like, he did a he did a review of Dusk that I saw, and he mentioned he mentioned in it he mentioned like what he considers the pitfalls of retro FPS to usually be and I was like it, like he mentioned that the dusk avoids the pit, the usual pitfalls and but just he mentioned that dusk avoids the usual pitfalls and I was just like 
I messaged him on Twitter asking like, hey, could you could you maybe elaborate what you mean by the usual pit post so that I can I can avoid them as well because I'm making a kind of retro FPS game and then he gave, he gave like a long and a very helpful answer and stuff and I was just like, hey, uh, maybe if you want to try, you can just try out this demo I just put out with the game and it's like sure and he, he, even though I was fucking I was just a complete nobody at the time, he was just like. He, he not only played through the demo, but like gave really good feedback based on it as well. He was just like super helpful, even though I had like no pull at the time and stuff. So I really wanna wanted to wanted to give him special thanks for being so helpful. But that's why he's a he's a boss here as well. Yeah, Mandy's like absurdly awesome as a person, like super nice. And Avery is Avery. Oh yeah, here's a here's a here's a dumb little quirk of the level design is if you stand up here, the street cleaners can't get get to you and the soldiers can't get to you. There's kind of Hold on, let me Let me get rid of the drone first. Oh, never mind, I'll re the street cleaners. But yeah, the, if, if you just stand here, you're completely safe from the street cleaners. That's gonna be something that we're probably gonna do eventually, like fix eventually, but that's that would be part of the AI rework, and that's like... You know... That's an issue in and of itself. Yeah, again, just more vir virtues here being used, because they're just really fucking... Fun not only to fight but also the design encounters with because of how much they change the flow of combat. Oh yeah, and there's the here's the thing is the fucking skulls can light torches because I just put in like the flammable uh attribute to your skull punches way back when I first added the skulls just for fun, but I just I just sort of left it in. I, it doesn't really make any sense, but it's whatever. And here's the big, big arena. Like the, again, this was. Well, it doesn't really show it here since uh, when you put in the, when you put in the blue skull instead of the torch, it, the level is a lot more lit up. But the arena is a lot more li lit up, so you can see it more, a lot more clearly. But this was another one of those where it's like the whole arena's point was just to make it so. Um, I could I could take more advantage of the fact that ultra kills lights are all dynamic instead of baked in. Is that something I wanna I wanna be able to use to my advantage? Yeah, and this is this like the music the third phase here yeah i had a lot of difficulties getting it to feel right because it was like i always wanted to wanted it to be like a big uh, church organ thing but trying to get the right feel and atmosphere and stuff for it was really difficult i had to keep starting over and over to finally get it to this kind of decent place <clears throat> and then again we have this this is sort of a uh, I think with this it's sort of the, like the whole greed is you're going like you start from above ground like first level is above ground second level is on ground third level is underground so this is like this sort of this is even deeper underground. This starts with like super deep underground, and then you bounce super high up. And now you're on ground level because you can see like the there's like the sand from outside leaking in, and the sunlight you can see. There's the secret room. Uh, I'm just gonna do, but I'm just gonna I can show this like this the dreamed hieroglyph, and here's the florp. Just because we wanted to just put in a little easter egg for the fans and stuff. 
Yeah, yeah the, uh, the, again, the sun, sunlight hits the gold dust here, so this damages as well. Some people have uh, difficulties telling what's sand and what's ground, so I might have to change some textures around here, but... And in general, I just really like the aesthetic of these rooms again. It's just like, even though this is a square room, it's just like has this weird corner thing and completely changes how you have to navigate around the room. And you have the Tampura drone in the background that sort of gives it a very Egypt vibe. And these dust particles are again just small parry flashes. Um, here, here's here's the base bass guitar uh, riff version of Versus and it's actually not a bass guitar it's just the original like a clean guitar um, intro riff but it's just played at half speed so it sounds like a bass guitar because I, I don't really feel like any need to like re-record it on a bass just for this one bit so it's just like played at half speed and again you can see like the skull door because this is a boss arena I'm going to leave you for now. All right. I mean, not for now, forever. Okay, <laughs> goodbye. Bye. Yeah, we don't really have much left, so we can... Yeah, for some reason this... For some PCs this room really kills frame rate. It's because of the, like, the layer transparency and stuff, but I don't... I don't know why it's so selective about which PCs can't handle it. Yeah, yeah, Peter's Peter's going away because the stream is really fucking long and exhausting. But we can, uh, I'll I'll still do like the end of this level and I'll do the secret levels and stuff. So we can we can handle it probably. Yeah, here's the cool uh, Dracula pose. That's that's kind of I based it on like Dracula from Castlevania, like how he sits all like aloof and bored and stuff, and then. He sits up, but this time it's no longer it's no longer fun and games. Now it's business, and that's why he doesn't even that's why he doesn't even bow anymore. And this is uh, considerably harder as a boss fight because not just like because the room is a lot more like open, so he has a lot more room to maneuver around, but also because. Both, both because of his nail gun and also because of him being able to shoot coins. That's not tough if you know how to fight him. Oh yeah, the 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 text here, the you're not getting away this time thing is um that's a sort of like the uh, like the. When I originally did the thing, this this whole like encounter, I, there was an issue where people weren't really like it wasn't very clear what was happening. Because the idea is that like V2 tries to run away again, and then you're like, nah, -uh, not this time. And then that's why you chase after him. But it wasn't very clear what that was what was happening, so I had to add like the little tutorial message thing that says, you know, you're not getting away this time. So you can if you you can you can decide for yourself if that's. V1's voice or something else. And obviously this set piece. I was like, uh, like when I came up with the idea, I was like, oh, I had to make this like a thing. Because it's, uh, I just thought it was such a cool idea even. Even though it was like a really kind of a technical nightmare again. But I think it got, I think I got it working all right. It's there's some jank to it still, but I think it's, it does its, does its job. And then V2 dies as as hard as anyone could possibly die to make sure that people understand he's fucking dead and it's not coming back. The original, very original plan was for V2 to have three fights, but like I came to realize pretty soon, not just that um, there was an issue with V2's role in the story, but also just the fact that there really isn't enough you can do with a third V2 fight that wouldn't make it feel superfluous. In them, because the because the, the first the second fight is already very similar to the first, other than a couple new abilities. So adding a third one would just be like repeating too much. Would make would make it too repetitive, and then like because that was an issue in like DMC five is what's his even name? I forget the fucking names like uh, Urian or whatever. 
But there's like the big demon guy who's sitting on the throne and... You fight him like five times in the whole game and it's fucking ridiculous. And it's just like completely... It really kills like the desire for replays because of how often you have to fight him. And someone asked, did you think on making Vito use the grappling hook against you? Yeah, but the same reason that he doesn't use the knuckle blaster is just that uh, it would be... It would just be too, like... It is already so much to keep track of in the fight that having getting even more attacks would just make it overkill. There we go. No layer 5 peak for you guys, because you've already seen what I would just show anyway. Um, I'm gonna take a little uh, quick bathroom break and then we'll do the secret levels. So I'll be right back. Hello, I'm back, and I got I got some chocolate with me to give give me some extra energy to get through the rest of the stream. Mm. Okay, let's see. Start with zero S, so we have to go back to zero two. Now, no, no need to use the teleport cheat. I can just fucking get through there quick. And obviously, it's fun to go back to old levels with like new weapons and just fucking shit up. Almost. Coin punching was one of those things that I just added in as like a... It's like, oh, it, it'd be cool. Like, I don't... It's probably not gonna be very useful, but... I just wanted to add it in because it's because it's really cool, but then it's like... Kind of ended up... Ended up actually being really useful, in, especially for like speedrunners and stuff, since you can use it to build up damage and stuff. And because you, you can like stack damage very easily. What was the particular reason for the sandbox map literally just being GM construct? Because I fucking love garage mode and it's it's a very uh, it was very important for game for me growing up and just I think that's like to me at least that's like the quintessential sandbox 
map. Like that that to me is when I when I think sandbox I think of GM construct. And what we actually did fun thing about the is the sandbox is that we actually uh like uh, Originally, Peter, because Peter did this whole sandbox mode, he also made the uh, a reconstruction of the map. Um, what he like? Ori his, originally, he started by making like the latest version of construct, and but then I was like, that's not like he started making the latest like G mod, fucking thirteen or fifteen or whatever version we're up to now. It's like he started making that construct, and I was like, no, that's not that's not the construct. We're talking about the construct, you know. It's the new versions like it's it's still construct, but it's not the one everyone knows. So. So what we ended up doing was um, doing like a kind of a combination of different versions to sort of find find the perfect ground where it's recognizably nostalgic for like Gmod 9. Because Gmod 9 is still like the fucking classic one, 9.0.4, 9.0.4, that's the one everyone always remembers. And then... We did. We took some updates from like the earliest versions of GMod 10 version and some geometry from like different versions in order to combine it together into like the into like the general uh, construct of like as a fusion construct of like this is this is like what construct is in my memory. We tried to find sort of that. Oh yeah, first secret level zero S. Good old horror level, because the whole the whole thing with Zero S was just like I was thinking about how technically easy it is to make a sort of um, slender like uh, indie horror game, because there's like there's like a fuck ton of those. Because in essence, it's just you run around, you avoid a thing that walks around, and you try to get all the things, and it's like. Well, I can I can probably do that inside Ultra Kill, and I was just like, you know, I think that could be fun, like in a in a way where it's like your because it's a game where you're always like in Ultra Kill, you're like the predator hunting the prey, and this in this level you suddenly become the prey hunting the predator. Oh, uh, Lord says. Uh, it's gonna be the boulevard. It's gonna be the channel, but yeah, sure. Um, edit, edit, edit down like a short version if you want. It's well, most of this is fucking dead air anyway. But this is mostly just for you know people who want the full thing. And yeah, something weird this way comes is that's an old um, that's an old sentence. Like that's just from fucking Macbeth or something, I think. But then it was used as a book title that's more popular um, than the original line is, and then then it's used in a whole bunch of different songs. And I was just like, I I think it was Imp was um, told me about um, Imp told me about a band called or was trying to introduce me to a band called Fields of Nephilim, I think, and they had a song called. Um, something will get this way comes, and that's where I took it from. Yeah, very simple, very simple secret level in terms of like execution, but I think it's really fun in how it changes the, in how it changes the dynamic. And this is like a little goofy thing. It's just like you know the exit is right next to the start, but it's just being blocked by rubble, so you can't you can just get directly to it. And like. It's actually a pretty small, like, labyrinth. There is li isn't really a whole lot to it, but it just feels so much more immense because it's completely black and it's difficult to navigate and remember where you've been and stuff. But I tried to put, like, weird things like this little border pool and this thing and then, like, all these kinds of uh, areas where you're like, oh, this is, a, this is an area I can recognize, hopefully, but for some people it just doesn't work, really. Maybe they're not like just like recognizable enough. 
Yeah. And then we have the test first testament. Um, most of the secret levels have a testament at the end because it's supposed to be sort of they're supposed to be sort of a uh, kind of explaining some backstory to Ultra Kill of like what happened way before everything. So this is this is like uh, they're not they don't make much they're like they don't give you much information just by themselves, but in combination once you put them all together, you I think you you'll hopefully have a sort of understandable story that'll uh, that'll uh, well obviously it'll still leave like room for interpretation but hopefully it'll have an understandable story that uh, that'll help explain some context that's not necessary in any way but it should help understand why some things are as they are yeah, that was zero s um it actually yeah I didn't even mention but like the way um and the way something we get works I'm just gonna blind him, so I think I'm gonna see if I can just like. Oh, he actually sees you even if you're if you if he's blinded. But what he actually way he works is uh, he has a bunch of patrol points in the level. So, <clears throat> like he starts over here always, and then he picks a random point from somewhere else in the level of the patrol points I've given to him. Like the, uh, there's. Some there's like one here and and like one here and stuff like that and it, he just picks a random point and he starts running towards it and when he reaches it he picks another random point and he just runs around trying to look for you when he gets line of sight he starts running after you uh, if you if he hasn't seen you for a while then he'll forget about you and start patrolling again and when you shoot him he picks the he picks the patrol point that's fur furthest from your current location and then he respawns there immediately. You know, very, sim very simple in terms of AI and stuff, but it works because of the context. Why is Zero S different in demo compared to the full game? I don't know. Is there a difference? I guess, I think the only thing I can really think of is there's some version of the demo where the ceiling doesn't exist. But that was always just an accident. The ceiling was always supposed to be there. I would just disable it sometimes in order to, in order to edit the level, in order to be able to see it from above. Yeah, here's the obvious, uh, probably the best secret. <laughs> My favorite secret in the game is just because. This is one of those things where it's like you would you wouldn't really think of it, like it you wouldn't really think of it, but it's like it kind of makes sense once you actually figure it out. But that be, but because it's so like out there and so like outside the box, that's why the game has the that's why the level has the challenge of like beat the level in ten seconds, because that's supposed to be like an obvious message of like there's some there's something here that you're missing in the early sections. The only difference between Demo Zero S and Early Access Zero S is that you can bring in the alternate revolver into it. The demo doesn't even have the alternate revolver though. Unless you like take it back from the full version, but like that's just why would you do that? Outside of just curiosity, but that's just that's still just like uh that's not my <laughs> that's not my fucking problem, <laughs> basically. Yeah. Good old witness uh Witness parody, well, more of a love letter than a parody, really. I remember all these puzzles just like... Because I, I had to do this so many fucking times when I was testing and I was like doing all this, so I can basically just do it out of memory. This is just like, this was just like, because I was thinking of like more ideas of like how to, how to use the game's mechanics in an interesting way and... Like all the mechanics, I reuse all the mechanics in a new way, and this was just like you. All well, you can use the shop screen by clicking on it, so maybe I can make a secret level around that idea. And it's like, well, there's a, I fucking love the witness. It's like my favorite puzzle game ever, and it's like, and that's that. The game is entirely just about clicking on screens, so that then that, that ended up becoming a sort of obvious one-to-one -one connection of what I wanted to do.
And the music here again is just multi. It's a it's a uh, it's a couple of drones that sort of fade in fade out of each other as as you as you get through the level. And this is again just like old 2016 old music from 2016. That's actually from the same album as uh, a thousand greetings. I just clipped a couple of drones from this track and uh, made them into like a collage. And this is by far the best puzzle in the fucking level. This one's so fucking hard for most people. It's like my favorite, easily. Because I'm not really much of a puzzle designer. You can tell most of these are kind of just nothing or like busy work or crap. But I think it's a, still a, like a... There's a couple gold gold nuggets in there. Uh, someone says, uh, I was so scared something weird was gonna come smack me if I messed up there. And I did originally, because one of the earlier versions, because I did already have an idea of doing like puzzles as a secret mission. One of the earlier versions was using like skulls and the trick would be at some point the game would like pretend to have spawned something wicked and then just go like, you know, and you hear him closing in and then there's just nothing. And then I ended up just not doing that because I prefer the chill vibe of the witness level and then I just ended up using the joke in 4-3 um, instead. And then people are all like, oh you should put the something wicked in the in GM, uh, fucking, uh, GM construct darkroom, it's just like... A... You can't just keep using the same joke and expect it to actually like stay fresh, like you have to fucking pace yourself a bit. But <clears throat> otherwise it just becomes a tired, predictable thing, so I, I really doubt something wicked will reappear in any form uh, in this game anymore. Because he's had, he's had his original appearance and then there's been the callback and I think that's enough. Fun fact, you can spawn the, um, no wait, you can open the doors, and I think you can sp Can you spawn the street cleaners early? No, you can just, but you can open the doors early and by bringing the windows, because thing is, if you could, if the doors didn't open when you broke the windows, then you could, you would be completely safe from all the, like, filth and stuff by just jumping in here, so if you break the glass, then, uh, actually, if you break the glass and you jump in here, then the doors open so that the husks can still reach you. I keep look. I keep trying to play while also trying to read the chat, because Peter's not here anymore to read the chat for me. There we go. Luckily, we don't have to do this arena. Oh yeah, here's a here's a fun thing. Is the um. Every, every, cause, cause this is a hydro plant, all the energy turns off once, once that water gets turned off, so all the crossers and stuff are now safe to walk on because they're not spinning anymore. Oh yeah, I was um, over here. <clears throat> As I mentioned earlier in the stream, this was basically like the, the whole fucking... This whole thing I wrote in like two days or something, just like two sittings, I just went in and fucking wrote the whole thing with barely any edits afterwards. And like the whole joke here, like with the opening monologue, is it's supposed to kind of evoke a sort of dark, um, dark dystopian kind of future, 
nightmare scenario, but then the whole thing is like the whole the whole time it's actually just describing the anime cliche of like running with toast in your mouth and bumping into a random person while you're lost uh, or you're late for school. Yeah, no, there's only like there's only like one choice in the whole thing that actually matters. Uh, which is, you know... Oh yeah, and if you didn't see it, there was a Florp in the background. Uh, there's a poster for Florp. And there's also a poster for Dreamed behind the text box right now. And so at one point, there was also like a filth businessman in the background, but that was like too distracting, so I had to... Uh, we had to cut that out. And But all the art here is by Jericho, and it's really fucking good. And we... Originally, there was a different design for Mirage, but... Where she had like a blue and yellow uh, school uniform. But then, as we actually started trying it out, we realized that it was way too like singular in its color and was like really. Re looked really kind of stiff and lame. So instead, we redesigned the whole schoolgirl uniform to be like this kind of delinquent black and red kind of thing. And yeah, the whole thing with this is just like... Because this was after people started memeing about how much they... How much they wanna fuck V1, so the whole point is just like... It starts off as like a parody of like... Visual novels because, you know... And then the reason Mirage looks like V1 is just because people were so fucking horny for him. And that's why we did the whole thing as a joke, but then I was just like... But then I was thinking about it, I was just like... Lust is such a like, like yeah, obviously Lust is like it, that's such an obvious joke is to make a visual novel thing for Lust, like a dating thing thing for Lust, and it was just like such an obvious joke that I was thinking that if that if that's all there is to it, then then like that's gonna be a really lame secret mission because then people who enter it are just like oh yeah yeah I was expecting it to be that and then it just doesn't do anything else, so that's why I decided to be like okay well I should add, add like a second twist second twist to it and I'm just gonna skip to the text but uh, I, I figured out a second twist so I was thinking like oh it starts like as a joke like a parody thing but then it actually starts going into like it slowly transforms into an actual like philosophical debate on the meaninglessness of life and stuff because I was also thinking about how like a lot of people are struggling in terms of finding meaning in life and how how is sort of coming to coming to coming face to face with the sort of lack of a sort of uh, universal meaning in a way? So I wanted to sort of, as as someone who's uh, had a lot of trouble with existential dread in the past, I wanted to sort of give give my thoughts on how I deal with it, and hopefully that might help some other people um, deal with it as well. So the Mirage's whole viewpoint here is based on. Uh, essay or short story whichever you want to call it called the last messiah and all her talking points are basically um based on that and then it's which is it's it's an antinatalist sort of philosophical thing and it's uh and i was sort of uh, so i wanted to use that as a basis because the way i see it is if you want to reach people with like about dark things like this you really have to like first you have to actually like be able to put what they're actually feeling into words, because it's just like, if you just, uh, if you just do like some hand wave, like, oh, I'm just like, I'm feeling existential dread because nothing matters, then it's just like, people won't connect to that, and then they won't, because they haven't connected with the character, they won't like actually be able to emotionally con connect with also the response or rebuttal to it. So... I was thinking that in order to like actually properly reach people with what I'm trying to say, I figured it would be most important to also like actually go into like the nitty gritty of the darkness and the hopelessness and the nihilism of it, and then actually hopefully reach people so that I can so they can take and connect to the text, and then hopefully uh, they will also connect to the response to it. And sort of actually I won't say anymore. <laughs> I don't wanna I don't wanna I don't wanna say too much.
yeah um oh yeah and uh, i was i was doing a bunch of like small things there um uh, with like when when it starts to go into like the nihilistic section um the action like the, the game starts at like the level starts at four by three aspect ratio when it gets to the nihilistic section it actually starts to slowly close in into a one by one aspect ratio and the background starts to slowly turn um uh, black and white so it's sort of ramping up the tension by turning it darker and the music cuts out obviously into like a really dark droning sound and then when you finally then when you start rebuilding it the the dark ambience like stops so it's like it's you have complete silence and then when it finally when it finally like uh ends it's like you finally quote unquote get free from it you sort of get this like big like the aspect ratio completely opens up and the light comes back in and the happy music is a reprieve of the original theme that started the level and yeah there's a there's a peter sign in the far left and also another dreamed cat under it and yeah this is all just like uh, again this is just all written by me and just like I just fucking went hard in the paint. <laughs> it's just like I I just fucking went in for it, and I was just like fucking in, do it all in one go, and so I was actually finally in the mood for it. All in two goes technically, but still. And yeah, all in perfect love song. That's a walls and girlfriend song name. <clears throat> uh, let's see. Then we have. We'll do P1 last. And before that we'll do... Um, we'll do Clash of the Brandicoot. Vroom, vroom. And also all the, all the like, uh, all the like blocks and stuff that you platform on were specifically based uh, like pl placed in a way that you could easily like race through the whole first half of the le level if you wanted to because the original idea for the levels challenge was to uh, reach this building in like whatever uh, limit of time so it's like uh, so it's like I had to place everything in a way where you can easily get get inside as fast as possible and that also is a good that's also good in terms of like stuff like this where you just have to have to do something quick to like test things out or something oh, there we go and then we just Hop on over back to the start. And this is another like the whole idea with the the whole idea with making this go night time is because again I was just like well I have dynamic lights so why not make a use of them by changing the time of day and I was just like oh I can make it a secret and it would be like like a really impressive and cool secret to suddenly turn the whole thing into night time. And then when I actually did it. And I actually did like the whole like thing where I turned everything dark and stuff and you could barely see anything outside of like occasional lights and this. This is actually what gave me the idea for 4-3 being a dark level. Because I thought it was a really cool dynamic. There we go. Uh, maybe I should like plug in a controller. Uh... Yeah, let me try that. I can do this with like keyboard as well because the whole time when I was testing it I did it with keyboard but I think it's more fun to do it uh, in the classic style by using a controller. It is actually fucking connects to it though. Nah it doesn't actually connect. Oh well I'll just do I don't want to restart the game so I'll just do keyboard then. Oh yeah, something people don't really, most people don't really notice is this um, level has four different, like the song has like four different phases in this level as well. I guess I can do fucking all the crates. The last one might take a couple attempts, but yeah. Yeah, 
Yeah, yeah, this was just like... I was thinking of like what I want to do with greed. And again, I just didn't want to do... I didn't just want to do what everyone expected. Which was probably like just like a slot game or like a parody of microtransactions or something. So I wanted to do something else. And I was just thinking... I was thinking of like uh, how much I like like the Crash Bandicoot 3, like the Egypt levels. And then I was thinking like, well... It's like... Um, it's like how you collect, uh, like uh, you collect um, crates and uh, wombo fruit in Crash Bandicoot. So I was thinking, what if, what if it's like that? But instead of coins and coins, it was like, I mean, instead of uh, wombo fruit, you were collecting coins because you know greed. So then, and also it's just like, I, I like how needlessly cruel Crash level design can get. Because like normally it's. Normally, crash level design is just like fine, but when you actually start to get all the crates, it's, it's when it becomes really fucking. Oh, there was one more. It starts to become really fucking cruel, and I always always thought that was really funny how they can easily like change the difficulty of the game without actually changing any of the levels, just by making so you when you have to break all the crates, it's it's just like they're placed in tricky ways and stuff. Yeah, once you once you enter this interior section, you can notice um, if you if you really listen to it, you can notice the music change to a different uh, version of the song. That's I think this is why like three, four, six, eight or something. But it's like a completely different uh, time signature and everything. Which, because uh, the thing was like having to, having, because or just cutting from one song to another, like these songs don't match to each other, which is why I can't just fade like I can with combat version and calm version. But like, just having it smash cut to another song was really, was really abrupt, sounded really bad. So what I had to do was I had to do like, uh, a, like a complete system for tracking um, beats and stuff. Uh, so the, to keep track with the tempo and the measures and beats, so to make sure that the, it, it'll, uh, the music will only change on like equal, or like even, um, even measures to make it so that it sort of fluidly changes between songs. So that became a fucking issue when I decided I was a smart man and I started using time signature changes in this song. So you have to, like th this one has like at least one section that's in like two by four or something. Like that that moment right there. This is like a way shorter bit. So I so then I had to like do the beat tracker. I had to like add in fucking custom time signature changes and even tempo changes and stuff. And it's like, like uh, why did I do this to myself for this one detail that almost no one will actually notice? Still, I think it's nice. It's nice to be able to flex music in a different way than normal. And I keep forgetting to upload this song. I should probably upload it to YouTube at some point. But I keep forgetting to. Here's the, here's the Maurice chase. Oh my god. Because obviously you can't have a fucking Crash Bandicoot parody without having a boulder chase. Because that's like one of the most iconic aspects of the, of the games. And this is like, this is like a, this is kind of like a weird, like that would normally be a Oh shit, I <laughs> it's death perception because I was talking. But um that seems like it would be a tough section because of all, all the moving platforms. Like you, you can basically just jump in the middle and um you will always land. Oh, well now I didn't follow my own advice. But yeah, like I said, this might uh, the last room might take a couple attempts. Which is fine, cause yeah, the whole day, the whole thing I was thinking was like, 
you know, this this not only not only is this a secret level, but it's also like a bonus challenge inside the secret level. So yeah, I can make this as fucking cruel as I want. And obviously, cause crash crash games are like a big part of them is how how cruel they can be in terms of level design. Yay. Yeah, we did it. Yeah, here's Testament 3. Um, I, w I had, yeah, some people have been asking, like, why doesn't, why doesn't um, 2S have a, why doesn't 2S have a terminal at the end with Testament? It's just because I was just like thinking, like, you know, the whole secret level is already reading, so having the reward for reading be more reading just felt like absurd, like really dumb. I just decided not to. And now I'm gonna switch to my other save so we can do P1. Because I think, yeah, I have Prime Sanctum. We're all good. Yeah. You know, the whole thing with P1 was um when I was playing I was playing like the Devil May Cry games for well not not quite the first time, but like I was really actually properly getting into them and one of the things I learned about the games is that they're actually way more fun when you try to get when you actually go in and try to get like high ranks. Because for for DMC4 I went through the whole game in every difficulty. Got, a, got S ranks in every single level on every difficulty and that was like by far the most fun I had had with the whole game so I was just like I just felt I was just feeling like man why does the game like why does the game push more people to try to do this because this is by far the most fun the game is and then I decided you know I'm gonna I, I wanna I wanna give a reward for people who do it so that, that um, I wanna give a reward for people who do it so that more people will be driven to try it out. Because, like, it's it's actually not really hard to... It's not really hard to actually P-rank, like, every level. It's just, like, it seems way harder than it actually is. I was just thinking, you know, I wanted to give people at least a reason to try. And I think that worked out because a lot of people have been, like... Have been saying that, you know, uh, they wouldn't have otherwise tried, but once they actually did try to go for P ranks, they realized how much more there is to the game than just running and shooting and stuff. And the thing about the music in this final staircase is, uh, like I mentioned earlier, it's Sorry to Avril, but um, uh, like the whole like, like uh, there was at one point I was thinking of making like a small VR side game that I ended up never making just because I like. I just want to focus on like Ultra Kill completely instead of doing like some small side projects at the same time. And for that, I would I just did some, like some sound experiments and stuff to like uh, try out different vibes and atmospheres because it was going to be a horror game. So one of the things I did was just like take this one song, this Sorry Dia Veril, and uh, oh, don't worry, I was just I'm just not moving because I wanted to talk before the music ended. So. Uh, um, so, so one of the things was I was just trying how to how I could corrupt the music in an interesting way. So this is all like this was just like the, um, clips from that from what I was doing with the music there. I uh, reused here since I never ended up making that game at all. Yeah, I haven't unlocked V two second in the in this save because it's it's after that. But yeah. Yeah, I think, yeah. Oh, let's just fucking go for it. But yeah, um, this whole secret encounter thing is loosely based on Castlevania Curse of Darkness, because there's a secret boss fight there, which is kind of like this, where it's um, first you fight like a big metal clump, I mean, not a big meat clump, like boss, and then 
And then once you beat that, there's a secret secret second boss fight that's like against that glowing white dude and it's like way harder than anything else in the whole game. So I wanted to do a sort of... I wanted to sort of combine the ideas of having a secret, like a reward for getting the highest ranks. And also like... Uh, doing a reference to one of my favorite games. So, this was sort of the thing. Yeah, it was Legion and Nucleus are, are the boss fights. Oh, that's weird. It's broken. Uh, that's what I get for using an experimental build. Yeah. Uh, bu -bu -bu what should I do? I can just... I can just talk about the fucking... Yeah, I mean, I can skip it, but I can just talk about the, like, the monologue and stuff before I skip it. So let me think. Uh, what would I want to say? Yeah, the monologue was... Uh, the monologue, again, was just completely written by me trying to sort of copy Jacob's um, flowery language and stuff, so... We got that to um, Stefan Wade because we yeah uh, we were doing both Gloomwood and Algical lines in this like the same sitting, so we just decided to do both of them in one go. And I guess there isn't really much to say about it. He's just he's, he's a great actor. It was still very easy to just like get it, get the vibe across to him and having having do it properly and in a good way and then. Really, uh, we did have to do some editing to like combine different takes here and there. And like, yeah. But yeah, it was really, really, really great. Cause like early on, early on, like when I was making Ultra Kill, I was like talking about classmates. I'm like, oh, I, if I can, I want to get uh, Stefan Wade to do like a, do like a role for the game. And then we ended up having him do we ended up having him do like the secret boss fight, which is really cool. And I think it's good because Minos you know, is like an old king, so him having a like an older voice is a perfect fit. But with Minos Prime, the whole like, um, I wanted to sort of expand on the idea that I was doing with Gabriel's boss fight already, which is like having having him have. Uh, like a sandbox of moves rather and combos rather than like a set pattern or something. But obviously just like hypercharge, he has way more moves and way more dangerous moves and with a lot of these it was just like usually with ultra kill it's like um, I design attacks in a way where it's like here's what you can't do to avoid them. Uh, but with um, Minos Prime was specifically instead planning because you know that that kind of planning gives more um, room for creativity and different kinds of play style but with Minos Prime it was more like planning like okay here's yeah, you, how you have to dodge this move which is why he has stuff like this attack where you have to dodge and jump in order to avoid it obviously it's still not the only way to do it but it's all that's just the number one like the main primary way of doing it and then like um, he has the the die dive kick. That's uh, he does a common writer pose in that because I can't avoid doing references to things. And he has the snake uh, projectile stuff and the, all the snake theming because of um, Minos in the Divine Comedy having the snakes that coil um, around him. <coughs> uh, what else should I mention? Oh yeah, a bunch of the a bunch of the lines are just a bunch of the like attack lines that he does are just straight up taken from Urien from Street Fighter Third Strike because I just I just like the way he talks and I think this is a cool and fitting. I have failed to bring you salvation from this cold, dark world. Yeah, I think there's something I'm forgetting to mention with him. Yeah, he does have a stamina system, um, basically just like 
uh, you know, in order to have have like a couple breaks here and there in his fight, he has like a stamina system that he uses to decide what moves he can use at any point. Uh, so that he like after he, after he uses a certain amount of moves, he'll have to like wait for a couple seconds before he move, move uses more of them. Yeah, but also like I was thinking, uh, oh yeah, what I wanted to mention is the fact that the uh, I'll just do that again. Um, what he does is if you're in the air, he almost always goes for like the uppercuts and stuff. Because the whole idea was just like, in most of the game, you're always, always, always in the air because it's safer to be in the air. Mo most melee enemies can reach you. So I wanted to make a melee enemy that actually has like, where actually being in the air is a bad idea because he's so much more dangerous in the air. So you actually have to dodge with like dodges and slides and movement instead of jumping. Useless. Oh, man. I'm, I'm really glad with how Minos Prime turned out, because I was just like... With Minos Prime I was just like, oh I finally get to fucking let loose and make some fucking in absolute insanity in terms of intensity. And I don't have to worry about like a difficulty curve or anything. I get to just add all the moves that I think are cool and just keep stacking them however I want. Oh wow. Oh yeah, and uh, uh, I was sort of alongside like the pre-made combos. I was also doing like um, having him having some attacks that would sometimes if you if you do certain things he would um, he would uh, so if you do certain things he would always like respond in the same way. Uh, in, in, like if you get hit by, I think it was if you get if you get hit by the uppercut. I'll see if I can get him to do it. Got jump here and nope, he missed. Try to get him to do it again. There we go. Then he double jumps and he does a slam. He he does like an overhead swing. He does he does like an air hike in order to get above you. Then he does an overhead swing to hit you down and then he does a slam at the end to finish you off if you if you haven't dodged out of the combo. And that was just like just like making making these separate moves that can work together in an interesting way, and obviously not having to hold back and worry about it being too difficult or hard to follow because that's the whole point. And yeah, God, doing this fucking uh, doing the music for this level was just like um, this is actually the whole like main theme, which is like uh, the intro and stuff. And the first section of the song is, uh, that was another one of sort of failed themes for Gabriel that I ended up, I was like, even when I was making it, I was like, oh, this is a bit too sad. Maybe this will, this would be a good uh, fit for like Minos. So I ended up saving it for this. And then I had the, I had the idea of reusing the um, Requiem theme as a sort of climax reprieve for this. And that was a, that was like that was just like an idea I had, and then I started working on it. It was just like oh my god! It was just like like I as 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 it started getting created in like the as uh, like as I was starting to get it together, just like doing the final lead by itself of the song, it was just like fucking amazing, like the most amazing fucking in the zone feeling. As I was just building it, and it was really hitting me at the same time as well, and I was just like. Adding the little flares with the violin and stuff, and it was just all, all just coming together just perfectly, and it was the most amazing feeling, and I think that translates pretty well as well, and at least from what I've seen of people, yeah, people how I've seen people react to it, and there was actually a lot of trouble with the song because the, um, the finality at Requiem. Um, Reprie is actually in a different key than the Minos theme, like the Minos Prime theme that I that starts the song. So I ha there's a there's a section where I have to actually like I have to do like a key change. But I think I originally it was super clunky, but after I reworked it, I reworked it like 
uh, a bit, then I finally made it into a way where it feels natural, the key change, I think. And yeah. I can probably just talk more about like the music in like commentaries and stuff if I do text commentary those later. But I think that's everything we we would be doing. Uh, oh, I guess I can. Yeah, I can. I already teased it a bit, but I can show off. Um... Oh yeah, I guess we can do cyber grind as well. We haven't done cyber grind. I don't know if there's much to talk about with cyber grind, but we can custom. Now let's just do dark theme and pattern, custom patterns, and there's the wave system. Yeah, um, the whole <laughs> it's kind of funny the whole cyber crime thing because I'm I've never really been a I've never been a fan of uh, endless modes in games because al almost always they just I just don't like them they get boring pretty quick. But with Ultra Kill it was like um, we got in touch with uh, Mega Echo. Uh, because uh, Imp is a fan of his music, I hadn't heard it before, but Imp is a fan of his music and he noticed that Meganeko was following um, the Ultra Kill Twitter account and I was, we were like, oh, we can we can try out, um, we, we can ask him if he's interested in like, doing some collaboration or something and it was like, then it was like, yeah, sure, sounds cool and then, it, then um, I was just like, oh yeah, we can do, I can have you do like a a uh, song for like the one of the last levels in the game or something, and but I don't have any specific ideas yet. And then I was then was like, okay, I'll just uh, I'll already just start doing like uh, doing some sort of th theme. Like uh, basically, he was just trying to uh, do like a sketch, like mood board of what kind of sounds he could use and stuff. So basically, just like a test track. And it was <laughs> and that was the start of the start of the cybercrime. I was like, oh, this sounds really cool. This would actually be great in like an endless mode or something this would be a perfect fit for an endless mode and i was just like well fuck now i gotta make an endless mode so we can use this song <laughs> so the whole reason for the cyber grind is just because yeah mega was making a cool song i was like oh we gotta we gotta do an endless mode to make this song fit in and then obviously i was just like oh yeah uh, we can actually you can actually see some of this um early enemy AI stuff where they can actually move across, like they can jump up like stuff. Because that was a recent, that's a, that's a thing we're doing for the enemy AI rework, so you can already see some of that happening. So that's gonna make cyber grind a bit more dangerous with melee enemies, since otherwise it's really dangerous, really easy to just jump away from them. <coughs> but yeah, and then, then there was just like a whole bunch of, uh, we did a whole bunch of work just like back and forth with the cybercrime. I think it took like two months or something to finish the song. There were a bunch of like sections and stuff that were cut out because they didn't quite fit in and then... I did ask Mechanico at one point if, he, if we could like release some of the some of the earlier versions as like an alternate sound version for the, like, the soundtrack or something but he didn't, he didn't want it because he like prefers just having these finished work be public. Like public. Yeah, the whole um, the whole cybercrime arena system it's all programmed by Peter, obviously, because he's considerably better than at the, at programming than I am, and I'm, I wouldn't be able to pull all this off, especially with all this, all the like custom patterns and stuff. That was all him as well. And like, yeah, the whole, like uh, like uh, as soon as I, as soon as we started working on an endless mode, I was like already knew that I wanted to do like a. Because the main th main problem with endless modes is that the because the environment stays the same, it gets really lame and repetitive. Just fighting in the same arena, so I wanted to do like a thing where the arena changes shapes between each wave. Because I was thinking like that would probably help uh, keep an endless mode fresh enough for me to enjoy it as well. So that's why we went with this whole thing, and I think it came out really well, and I think it kind of speaks for itself that. How much people actually play this, even though it's kind of a, even though it's kind of an afterthought, but well, or at least was an afterthought back when we made made it originally. It's kind of a lot of people have been getting into it and making like unique tech, finding unique tech for this mode and doing like all kinds of cool strategies and stuff. And I think it just really speaks to 
more than anything, because uh, like people are like uh, people are like uh, talking about how like ultra kills combat is like all the enemies work together really well, but it's it's less about the fact that the enemies work really well, and it's more about I think the fact that the player has so so many options at all times that all enemies can flow flawlessly into he, like. Regardless of what you throw at the player, the player can always take it on by using all these tools because they have like a million tools in terms of weapons and movement and uh, and things like that at any given point. So I think it's more than more than more than for the enemies it speaks for the benefits of having giving the player really big arts and all of the things and tools to use. Did you ever expect anyone to get above wave 200 in the Sabin Grind? No. No, I didn't expect people to get... I mean, I always knew that people would obviously blow my fucking original estimates out of the water, but yeah, it's been going absurdly high. And it's just like, I always... I mean, it's it's gonna get harder to get that high uh, the, the further the game goes, because enemies are obviously gonna get harder, and they, like there's gonna be harder enemies and more of them and as, the, as the game gets guess further in. Oh yeah, some people don't know, but the grid in the grid glow in the arena changes color depending on how far you are. So um, I think it's uh, it's blue at first, then it turns to yellow at 15. Or is it that I don't remember? I think it turns I think it turns to green at 10, then yellow at 15. Then orange, no, then red at 20, and then rainbow at 25, and then it says rainbow for the rest of the run. Just because I, well, yeah, I was thinking just like the, that would be a good way of like, not only sort of giving players a sort of idea of what constitutes a good cyber grind run, because that's something... Uh, that's kind of an issue with uh, game modes that are completely reliant on leaderboards. It's, it's really hard to tell what kind of a run is a good run when you have to compete with other people who are always getting constantly better. Which is honestly why I personally prefer ranks usually, and that's why ultra kill levels have ranks instead of leaderboards or something. Because that gives like a good consistency um, to what constitutes as a good run, like a goal that you want to reach. But yeah, the colors is just like, like I added the colors because not just because it adds a bit more visual variety as well, but because I, I think it would be it's a good like it's a good like goal to try to reach the next color, and then when you get the rainbow, it's like okay, you 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 kind of beat the cyber grind in a way, where this is like yeah, if you like if this is re if you completion is all you're after, then twenty five is like the sort of. You did good. You've uh, you've get, gotten the gist of what the cyber grind is, and you've shown that you can handle yourself. That's a sort of semi end. So then that's why that's why the colors stop there. I'm probably gonna do like an, uh, once we do achievements. I'm almost certainly gonna do like an achievement for getting to wave 25 in the cyber grind and have that be like. So that people can consider, like people will at least try the cyber grind, but then won't feel, uh, won't feel like they'll have to like compete with pro players or something. And that's also why, that's also why um, uh, the end screen leaderboard emphasizes. Um, that's why the end, uh, end screen uh, like rank thing emphasizes player leaderboards instead of. Uh, like, I mean friend leaderboards instead of global leaderboards. Because I just think global leaderboards are just like... For most people they're irrelevant really. So I think it's more... It's better to... Uh, get people to... Engage with each other instead of... Like people they... It's better to engage people with... The other people they know instead of... Uh, trying to ma make them... Compete with like the best in the world. Because that way you can still have like a number one, number you can still be number one in some way without having to be like the actual best cyber grind player.
Yeah, I'm gonna get to 25 and then I'm gonna quit there, unless I die before that, I guess. Oh yeah, but uh, pretty often with like design, it's kind of a it's kind of a daredevil game that I play with design, which is often, pretty often I'll think of like, I'll think of like things that games do badly, and then I'll go, oh, I can, I bet I can do that better. I can, I bet I can make water levels good. I bet I can make teleporting enemies in an FPS good, stuff like that. So, a lot of uh, mind players design. Oh boy. A lot of mind flayers design is like it's just like things that people would consider annoying and then me trying to figure out how to make them not annoying. So that they will be like a like cool. Which obviously I can't always win, so it's kind of a dangerous <laughs> dangerous thing to go for, but I think it's fun. Fun to kind of do that. But it's a good thing, it's a good thing all the, all the like coincidence ended up happening that made it so that I made a, made like a survival endless mode because it is the ultra kills easily much better for it and it really shows in how I hear you can see the rainbow colors but it really shows in how like how much it helps the game's longevity just, the, just having this one mode because of you know just people playing like fucking Hundreds of hours of Ultra Kill, even though the campaign is like two and a half hours long, currently. And most of that is thanks, not just thanks to replayability, but also thanks to this endless mode. Oh yeah, by the way, the Virtues, um, they're the only enemy right now that have an actual attack token system. Meaning that they take turns attacking instead of everyone attacking at once. Because everyone attacking at once just makes like an annoying huge wall of noise and light. So they take turns actually. When they Yeah, when they when there's more than one they always take turns instead of uh, in terms of like who can attack and at which point. And also they can't uh, virtues can't enrage um, if there's virtues can't enrage if there's uh, more than two active at the same time. So because that again would just make things into an incomprehensible mess. Because with, mo with most ultra kill enemies I don't need to do like an attack to token system. Since the attacks are simple enough that you can avoid them even if there's like a hundred of them coming. But something with something like a virtue you have to like actually work around that. Yeah I think it's enough. Enough cyber grind. Ah, and there we go, there's some people. Yeah. <clears throat> and then I can just... Just a little show off of the sandbox, I guess. There isn't really... I I actually... It's a, it's a shame I didn't realize we could have done sandbox while Peter was still here, because Peter has way more to talk about here than I do, because all I did was basically just like some finishing touches, like... Uh, decorations like this sort of light shafts and improving the lighting and changing like the doing the skybox and stuff to make it uh, make it look a bit nicer 
things like that. But most of, like the whole geometry and everything was just completely done by Peter and all the programming for the sandbox was also by him. And there's uh and of course if you haven't seen it behind this behind this fake wall is a is the message from Gary that says uh like the message that's about him giving us permission to use GM construct. Yeah. Yeah, as I already um teased earlier, um the next update's gonna make it so that you can actually use um you can actually spawn some boss enemies with a spawner arm now. So you can actually practice against Gabriel and you can do fights and stuff. You defy the light. If you want the ends. And they, and they function more or less the same. There's some differences it's because like V2 um, depends on his arena for the second fi second phase, so he doesn't have a second phase when he's sandbox and stuff like that. And they have different death animations so that they don't do the full monologue and stuff. Like Gabriel, once he dies, he just teleports away like that. And V2 just explodes into blood, and Minos has like a shortened version of his of his death animation. But if you want, you can just like fight two Gabriels at once. Oh my god, they're talking. Oh, there we go. <clears throat> I mean, you can just fucking, if you want, you can just fucking. There we go. I think I think um, I think that's about it. Unless I've forgotten anything. <laughs> yeah, you can only spawn enemies that you've already beaten. Uh, ba -ba -ba. Yeah. If there's any if there's any questions before before we end, end the stream, I can answer them now. I think. Anything on hard? Not really. Uh, again, we're not really planning on doing that until Act Two is done, and um, the hardest, the hardest mo difficulty mode, Ultra Kill Must Die, won't probably be until like the whole game's done, basically. Is there gonna be more split doors like in one three? I was considering one for five three, but I don't know if I'm actually gonna do it. I don't know, this, the thing with split doors is while they're really fun from like a player perspective, it's basically, you're be, like as a level designer, it's basically doubling the amount of work you have to do, so that's why they're super rare and why it's entirely possible that that's the only one in the game. But I don't know, we'll see. Can we at some point have alt keybinds? Probably eventually. Uh... <clears throat> Oh, it's it's eighty HP without um, without a phase transition, basically. Is there gonna be DLC for UK? The game's not even done. Why are you talking about DLC yet? Anything interesting about how Ultra Kill's popularity has affected your personal life? Well, I don't have to worry about money, and that's a good thing. It's a very good thing, especially because I didn't really have any idea what I actually wanted to. What I was actually gonna do once I was done with like education and stuff, because yeah, I only really planned planned as far as actually going to game design school and stuff. <clears throat> so it's very good to be able to just like do do my passion hobby thing as a job. Oh yeah, here's another thing that um, I recently changed is that. Um, Sliding on water and in the air um, don't re reduce your momentum anymore. Because I wanted this uh, slide, uh, skipping on water to actually be useful. 
Four four secret is where the new alt gun is, yeah. <coughs> Stuff like pre-fight minos looking like the blood is all ours together. V expander is it just like self expander. Now I think it's pretty obvious what what like minos and the soul orb like stuff is. I think you can just tell and extrapolate from that just by looking at it. Also, listening to you talk about game dev is interesting. Have you ever considered a podcast or streaming more consistently? Not really. Uh, like I, I'll do podcast interviews and stuff, but just like. I, I might do occasional streams, but very rarely because I'm just mostly not very much of a people person. It's very uh, kind of a classic case of introversion in that it's kind of exhausting to like just be in a social situation. So I need a lot of time to recharge in between doing things like this. And I personally just prefer usually to just stream to like a smaller um, group of people in like voice chat or something instead of doing like a full public stream. Uh, will the VOD be saved for the stream? Yeah, we should be ha getting... Once it's done, I should be able to put it on YouTube as well. And Locked said he might be doing like an edited, cut-down version of it as well. I don't know if it's spoilers, but will Heresy end in a Gabri Gabriel rematch? Yes, it will. How's Tevi Fumo doing? She's alright, she's kind of been partially neglected ever since I got Akita Fumo and... Uh, Plush machine, but she's still she's she, she's still hanging on. As the game is out, will you ever consider vinyl release? Probably. I mean, I would like to do one, but that's like a whole other can of worms. Instead of in terms of like having to remaster it, all the music in a way that like actually works on vinyl, and then also like like the sequence is pretty easy because it's short tracks, but like you actually have to like completely master the album around. Uh, the limitations of vinyl in, in terms of like audio frequencies you can use and intensity you can use and bass and stuff like that that's like that's its whole uh, own can of worms and like dynamic range because like most of the music in like all the all, like actually all the rec recordings in Ultra Kill are kind of low quality because I just do like USB direct input stuff so you wouldn't get really anything out of uh, in term out of it in terms of sound quality, so it would just be re really a collector's item unless I end up like re uh, re recording a whole bunch or I get like an actually super skilled master uh, mixer or something. Will Ultra Kill have a console port? Probably after it's done. We're not really considering ports while the game's still in development, but if the control support is good and all that, then yeah, I, I would definitely like to have it on consoles if possible. Uh, is it a possibility for more UK merch to come in the future, such as action figures? Probably not action figures, because uh, I remember we actually talked about some figures and stuff, then that's like, uh, that's that's really not worth it in terms of like, like it's it, it, it only becomes profitable if you if you sell way too many of them, so it's really unlikely that we'll ever do figures. But there's more merch coming out, yeah, we already have plans for some stuff that hopefully will will be ready to be bought sooner than later. The existing cosmetic options are really great, so I'm curious, can have you considered adding any cosmetic unlocks? Well, you can't really do much because guns already have to use, have to look the way they do, uh, your arms already have to look the way they do in, to know which arm you're using. You can't see your character, so there's no like way you could do uh, like custom skins for your character or anything, so it's kind of... You could do some stuff, but it's not really... It's not really something I... I'm worrying much about. Can you spawn a bunch of leather? Yeah, sure, I can flesh prison it up here. Just heal up first. Uh, 
Well, that's a lot of flesh prisoning. I'm sure someone can actually fight this fight this fight and come out on top or something. There will be achievements to full game, yeah, I've said that a couple of times already. Um, who would win, Minas Prime or Gabe? If it's just Gabe by himself, then Minas Prime would win, but if Gabe had, like, an army of angels, then that would be more of a toss-up. Because the whole point is that angels are actually... Even, even, some, some, even people as cocky as the angels are, like, actually afraid of uh, uh, prime souls because of how dangerous they are, so... Yeah, Gabe just by himself wouldn't stand a chance, but with an army there would there would be more of a fight. Would there be any sort of icon display on levels which are no weapons or no damage clears? Probably not. Um, no damage is more like a fun bonus thing, but making that into like... Because some people have suggested doing like a special rank for no damage and it's like... Actually going for no damage usually would end up in the player playing the wrong way because the whole thing about Dolce Kill is trying to play it as stylishly and risky as possible and just doing cool and fun stuff and... Actually trying for no damage would mo for most people just mean playing really lame and trying really safe. So I don't, I don't think I really want to support that beyond giving the point bonus. Workshop support for custom levels, yep. We're doing that. We have like, uh, Peter's been working on custom level stuff. There's a couple people who have beta access, but... Uh, that's not going to be publicly accessible until either near the game's done or after the game's done. What's your favorite movement tech? Uh, ultra boosting. That's because it's so fucking absurd to be able to launch yourself so far and so fast. A shotgun look like on a search machine hand. Uh, about the same. Really not all that noticeable, I don't think. Uh, it's still using the shows. It's still using the old model. But yeah. Shouldn't be too noticeable, I don't think. A lot of people are just asking like questions that are like about the future of the story, like... I'm not gonna spoil the fucking story for you. What are you fucking dumb? Do you really think I'm gonna... I'm gonna tell you about like what characters are gonna be bosses in the future or what, what's gonna happen at like the end of the story or something? Like, no. Why would you wanna ruin the story for yourself? What's your favorite Swans reference you made so far? Obviously Filth, because they both have the name that fits and also they look like the album cover. Goddamn the Sun is obviously great too though. What's your least favorite enemy? Uh, uh, let me think. Uh, I don't know. I don't really have least favorites. I 
the drones aren't very exciting, but they're not really aren't really supposed to be. Out of the weapon refresh models, what's your favorite? Well, the only one that exists is a shotgun, so I can't say anything about the other ones yet. What in the game has given you the most trouble to get working in a way you were happy with? Obviously, um, 4S, because that was a lot of work trying to get the fucking... Trying to get 3D platforming to work interchangeably like this with uh, first-person gaming, because obviously the enemies all have to work uh, fairly similarly, d despite which version of the character you're using and then having to fix all the bugs and stuff related to that and just make just making the platform like actually function properly instead of just being a complete jank fest that's not even fun to use uh when is the, when is the sick super secret in 4.4 gonna be ready it's in the next update it's already currently done outside of the alt alt weapons uh, model well, actually, that was recently. That was just finished like yesterday. So I'll have to do the animations. But outside of that, yeah, it's uh, it's gonna be in the next update. Will Ultra Kill have a replay mode? Uh, unlikely, because the game hasn't been built for that for the ground up. Because Replays are something that has to be like the whole game has to be built around the functionality of being completely deterministic And that's like uh, we're already having a lot of trouble just reworking enemy base code and stuff, so That seems very unlikely What was your favorite secret level to work on? Uh Hmm. I guess 1S. Puzzles were a nice change of pace to design. 0S was barely anything, like in terms of being made. Uh, 2S was also barely anything in terms of being made, and 4S was a pain in the ass to make. Favorite DMC, obviously three. Uh, three is my favorite, then one, uh, then five, then four, and then two. And reboot goes a bit above two. How do you determine the secret level themes? I'm just like, I just think of something that would I think would either be fun to make or would fit or something that's like doing a twist of predetermined um, uh, functions in the in the base game already. Who's your favorite character lore-wise? <laughs> Depends, are we counting lore that's already in the game or are we counting future lore as well? Because if we're just talking about what's in the game then Minos obviously because he's like the only character currently who has like very well defined lore already in the game. While uh, if we're talking also about future then Gabriel Can you give me your cleanest self reserve deletion with coins? I can try. I haven't really practiced like rail coining. I usually just do two. I don't think two is enough. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Ah, yeah, no, I can't do more than two. I would have to like actually practice. And do you know about the infinite overheat tech? Yeah, uh, we, le we left it on purpose. It's just like...
this. Idle animations for the weapons, not really. I don't think there's. I mean, I understand the like. I understand why people would want them and stuff, but it's just sort of because I'm, because I'm also just like making everything with the game. I think taking the time to make idle animations that no one's gonna see if they're playing the game properly is just like <coughs> waste of development time. Can you, can you spawn a ton of Minos Primes? I already did that. Or at least that a bit more above the shotgun. Oh yeah, I probably should. I keep forgetting to. And I don't remember if the... Yeah, okay, the revolver animation does loop. Because there was a point where it didn't loop. But yeah, all the other ones have a little little view bulb thing, but I keep forgetting to do one for the shotgun. Has there been any feedback or mechanic suggestions that you've actually implemented? Uh, probably some. And this ultra jump. Uh, can't think of any right now. Outside of like um, a zombies idea was uh, it was zombies idea to do the um, uh, the fact that the malicious faces like when they die they actually do a ground wave to launch enemies and stuff. And then also it was zombies idea to have it so that when enemies fall from really high up they splatter and die on the ground. A UI course might have been a community suggestion, yeah. Are the improved weapons models coming in the next update later? The shotgun's gonna be in the next update, but I don't know about the rest. We'll see when they get done. Does V1 breathe? I don't see why a robot would have animations in its hands that make it look like it's breathing. Because it looks really fucking boring if your weapons are just standing still and it's a video game. <clears throat> what do you think about dead coin? Do you think it's too strong with the amount of effort? Nah. But it's like fucking weird. I don't fucking know how to even do it. So yeah, nah. I don't think there's an issue in it because the whole issue with the coin punching is that it was way too easy to just like skip difficult bosses for people but like and dead coining is like something you really it's something you actually have to train to do what defines fresh blood well not a corpse and that's about it has to be from a living thing, or at least a thing that hasn't been dead for longer than a second. Also, can we see a cyber grind run? Just did one.
it was easy on more of the new screwdriver texture. Uh, <clears throat> I can do something. Yeah. And also a really fun thing about the screwdriver tech is um, is that uh, ba -ba -ba, let me actually I'm just gonna blind the enemies to make this a bit easier to show off. Is that you can still use uh, corpses, but really the only there's so only corpses that actually will like um. When an enemy dies, when the uh, screwdrivers attach them, it only stays on their corpse for like a full second. So like, you can see if I shoot a schism, he dies, and then the screwdriver breaks. So, uh, there's a couple of exceptions, which is the, uh, I don't know if Mind Flayer is an exception, but the malicious face is an exception where the screwdriver will stay on the corpse as long as it still has juice left in it. So. Because I think it's funny to be able to use uh, fucking malicious faces as like pin cushions for drills. Where does the name Hakira come from? Uh, there was back in elementary school, there was a short lived fad where some of the guys came up with uh, Japanese sounding names and I don't even know where it came from, but I think it was just some weeb shit. And mine was Akira, and then I used that for a custom character in um, WWE vs. Raw on like the PS1 or something. And then I was just like, I just started using it because it's just short. It's a short name that's easy to remember. It's unique, so it's kind of stuck with me. How many screw uh, screwdrivers can be active at a time? However you want, I guess. I don't think there's a limit. Can your screwdriver hit the same enemy if it's launched straight up? Nope. And because... There's no gravity. And even if you did manage to somehow hit the same enemy twice, the screwdriver's programmed to ignore the same enemy, so you can't just keep hitting the same enemy over and over. You actually have to do a different different target every time. But you can hit once you've hit another enemy, then we'll forget about the previous enemy, you can hit it back to that afterwards. What are some of your favorite games? Uh, what, are some of, what are some of your other favorite games apart from ones that inspire Ultra Kill? Uh, I guess it depends on like how much we're talking with inspiration. Now I think I think pretty much every game I really love is just like even just like a small bits and pieces of them you can find in Ultra Kill. Any bounce punch screwdrivers of bounce pads? I don't think so. But I can try. After done. Uh, screwdriver projectile drop, it only gets removed once you've punched a screwdriver. Like when you just shoot one out of the blue and it'll still have drop. Like here it still drops at a distance. There he go. Just 
Uh. Oh. More abstract question, do you see Ultra Kill as like a magnum opus or just another step, a sort of step in the journey? Uh, I think regardless of what I make next, Ultra Kill is going to overshadow everything I do in the future. So, in a way, it's a magnum opus by default, and I really think it's going to be difficult to top it, considering it's already like a combination of everything I think is fun in video games. Can you show us some more of the new enemies? I don't think there's really much to show. Oh, I did recently make a whole bunch of uh, balance changes to this entry, so I can show that. Because I made it so that they no longer, once they're like dug in like that, they no longer have to get launched by explosions like they used to. So you either have to use the knuckle blaster punch or use the ground slam wave or shoot the antenna. Or, you know, just go out of the range, I guess. But yeah, because because it started, it was impossible to actually design arenas with them, because there's so many things that cause explosions that like um, made it so that even even if you had a virtue in the same fight as a sentry, then the virtue by dying would completely obsolete, make the sentries completely obsolete by interrupting them. <clears throat> is the game done ideas wise uh, kinda mostly yeah but um, there's still like in terms of variations and stuff there's still there's some ideation that needs to be done uh, da -da. what's your opinion on titanfall i haven't played the first one but i love the second one obviously one of the rare uh, multiplayer shooters that i actually uh, enjoy playing for longer than two hours. Is there an idea or ideas so the gold variations? Uh, well, yeah, there's not going to be gold variations because I decided to cut it down from four variations to three variations per weapon because four would be overkill and there would be too much overlap or obsolescence with the weapons. So it's going to be three per weapon and it's also going to be way easier to scroll through them uh, than doing four. Will the upcoming third variants be out purchasable by default? I don't know. Probably, but maybe not. Is the fourth slot going to be used for anything? I mentioned at the start of the stream, but we're probably gonna do like a... Uh, it's probably gonna just be like a more info tab that's gonna, gonna show like... Um, tips and tech with the weapon and maybe some lore information. Or the weapons. Hmm. 
<clears throat> I think um, actually I can probably mention because we decided to cut it, but we did consider making a sixth weapon as well. And Francis actually already designed that. But we decided to cut it because yeah, it's already the game's already fucking uh, absurdly overkill with stars and all because I was already having a lot of trouble making the um, alt weapon that's gonna be in the next update. I will tell, we'll say what it is once. And uh, probably after, like, we properly reveal the la last weapon, then we'll probably reveal the cut weapon at some point. But I, it was a, it was a good enough idea that I think um, if if I ever do like a sequel or an expansion pack or something, then I'll probably add that weapon there as like a bonus thing. Because if I ever do decide to do a sequel, then it would have like a completely different weapon arsenal. But that it would be probably be there, but I don't really have any plans of doing a sequel. Because the game's not even done yet, so what's the fucking point? Gold arm is still coming, yeah. The rest of the alternate weapons be acquired in similar manner to the slab revolver. They're all gonna be secrets, yeah. But I mean, they're not gonna. Oh no, they're not gonna be like button sequences. You gotta push. You can, you can already find where the fucking next alt weapon is gonna be. You just can't take it yet because it's it's blocked off. Just like people continuously asking what's the first last slot gonna be used for, how many times do I have to explain it? Also, are you aware of how much pain you caused with level 4S and does that fuel further development of bullshit? I mean, it was already always planned to be a pain in the ass, the uh, 4S, because Crash Bandicoot games are a massive pain in the ass if you try to get all the crates. But yeah, it is definitely by design masochistic. Or sadistic, whichever way you want to look at it. Any plans to rework some effects in the far future? Why? I don't see any reason. Just do want a reference to the Muted Man song in the Magruder Grind album. I think the I think it's Magruder Grind's song as well. But I mean, I don't really. I just uh, I don't really decide which. So I guess whichever you want. And now that the people wondering, um, it's unlikely any of the future secret levels are going to be anywhere near as in-depth as 4S because 4S was already such a pain in the ass to get it working and just like uh, took way longer than I wanted it to. So it's probably that the secret, lesser secret levels are going to be simpler in terms of something more along the lines to the previous secret levels instead of trying to over like outdo for us.
Could build a bridge. Okay. Good. Nice. There we go. That's a bridge. Will there be a grass, flat grass map for sandbox mode? What do you think this is? Look at all this. Look at all this grass that's quite extensively flat and large. Another theme did you enjoy making the most order? Obviously, Minos Prime's boss fight. I was talking about it earlier when we did that, that level. It was just like the way it already started coming together. It was just uh, such a joy to actually write. And did you add the nose to the cheats enabled effect? Uh, I think when Peter added it, when he when we read it, uh, when he did read it, uh, all the that cheats menu. One last question: What do you do to pass the time and relax? Uh, I sure as hell don't want to play games if I spend most of my time making one. Sometimes I watch movies. Usually I just sit and watch fucking YouTube or something because I end up being too lazy to actually do anything on my time off. That's like actually enriching or interesting. You already have the themes for the layers thought out. Uh, pretty much. I got the gist of the rest of them. Has Peter thought about sandbox snapping increments? Doubt it. I think sandbox is pretty much done as is. How do you keep motivation? Uh, knowing that there's not much else for me to do. I mean, I mean, I think it's obviously I think it's fun to uh, to, to do this stuff and be able to show it off to people, having people who are actually like uh, invested in the game and like actually passionate about it and all the like the fan art and like all the. It's always very fun to be able to just like. When we we reveal something new, it's always fun to be able to see all the fan art and all like the people excited and gushing about it and stuff. If you shoot the core eject with Malak, can does it explode more? Yes, it's like a normal, and this is a uh, way bigger. Again, people asking about possible future bosses and stories, like, I'm not gonna answer you, you know that. I'm not gonna tell you about what the fucking uh, future of the game is gonna be like that. Have you experienced burnout? And if so, how do you, how do you cope? Uh, yeah, I get burned out all the time. Uh, I usually just, like, 
uh, I take some time off and if that, if that doesn't help then I just either force myself to continue like get progress done because what really the best the best solution to burnout is just being able to get meaningful progress done So it's like if, if if that doesn't like work, like I can't just force myself to work on the thing. Then I just I'll just put that thing on pause and work on a different aspect. Like I'll work on like if if I'm burning out on mapping, then I'll work on code. If I'm burning out on code, I'll work on mapping stuff like that. How do you go about thinking of sound effects? I don't know. I just see them in my mind's eye and I try to. Get a close approximate by using uh, Creative Commons and public domain sound effects. Alright, we've been here seven hours, so I think we can we can end the stream soon, but I'll take a couple more. Also, where did you get the screen for the falling guys? Uh, or it's just in a pack, pack of free sound effects. I think it's probably the GDC sound effect packs, because that's where I get most of my sounds. When mapping tools come out, will there all be tools for using the tram system? Yeah, you can basically, once mapping tools come out, you can basically do everything that um, I can do, except you can't make custom scripts at the moment because of security reasons. Damn questions, how's your day going? It's okay, I woke up at 5pm because I went to sleep at 11am and then I ate something and then we started the stream. And now it's been seven hours of me streaming. That's an amazing sleep schedule, I know, but the thing is, it gets work done. Because you know what I did last night? Thanks to my bad sleep schedule, I got all of this working. I got Gabriel working, and Flesh Prison, and Minos Prime, and V2. All that shit's working. And you can also, once you've beaten uh, V2 second again, you can also spawn him separately. There's a spot for him, but I haven't beaten him again on this saved. I, can, I guess I can move over to the previous save real quick to show that off. So, Was there be something we haven't seen here? From nope. The Saturday is just gonna be the boss spawns. Yeah, here you can see this number two. And this is the green arm version. There we go. He did. Also, he has a he has his own data entry. Oh my god, what does the lore say? It's fucking dead. Any wrath teaser for the end of the stream? Nope. What do you think of people constantly saying V3 when? They're fucking dumb. 
so yeah i think i think we're done here um we had a good seven hour stream and i don't think there's really anything else to show or talk about or commentate anymore at this point so yeah i think we can stop here thanks everyone for coming uh thanks peter for helping me out when he was still here uh and this is video is gonna be up on youtube soon maybe tomorrow i don't know i don't know how long it takes for twitch to put it on youtube but it's gonna be up on youtube eventually and lord says he might want to do a edited like shortened version for people who don't want to sit through seven hours of me rambling yeah thanks everyone for coming happy fourth a uh, happy fourth uh, birthday of sorts to ultra kill because four years ago today is when the game started development please fix your sleep schedule why the fuck would i do that this is how i get work done i don't need to be up when the sun is up all right bye bye